fly like an eagle. Our club has always been about the people. And the impact we have. We create opportunities. We dare to dream. About what we can achieve together. We aim to entertain. And we deliver results. Our teams inspire our community. And our community inspires us. Hopefully complete this first over. He's in now. And Jennings again on the work, walk. Works that one away to square. There's a good diving, tumbling stop out there before it runs beyond the fielder. And there is no run. Tidy enough from Porter into Wells. And Wells on the drive and drives very nicely. Stands and admires the shot, but then probably realises I probably ought to run, really, because the outfield is relatively slow, but it does. Full delivery. And that is a beautifully pick-up shot from Wells out to the... Mid deep mid wicket boundary and indeed over the deep mid wicket boundary. Bowls and. Oh, what a magnificent catch that is at the gully. Absolute. Critchley takes a blinder. Bowls and he goes for the big hit. He's struck on the pad and up goes the finger. And the batter doesn't look very happy with that. Um, Wells. Bowls and he's edging and brilliantly caught that slip. A one-handed catch there. It would not have been difficult. It would not have been easy for him to see because that catch has been taken there by Dean Elgar, and it went really past the keeper. He would have seen it late. And bowls and Bruce drives down the ground, and that should go for four. It's pulling up. The race is on. I think the field is going to lose the chase. He does lose the chase, and a lovely shot there by Bruce over pitch delivery. Cooks into to Bowles and always oh, encouraging him to drive, which he does. Looking to drive, and in the end, it's flashed away up and, up and above third slip and down towards the boundary. And Bowles to Bruce, and that's beautifully played down to the fine leg boundary at 4 4. Misdirected delivery there by Snetta on the pads and just flicked away. But movement away from Bowles and cries a catch. He's got the edge this time. Taken by Pepper. Uh, Snater bowls and he tries, gets a thick outside edge, it goes flying past the right of the first leg. Pepper standing up again with the helmet on and that's driven very, very pleasantly and Bell holds the pose as he drives straight back past the bowler and he's off the mark with a glorious drive for four runs. And in and Bruce whips that one away behind square and will pick up four runs for that one as well taken off his stumps which is why Pepper has his head in his hands but a nice strike from Bruce and he picks up four runs Cook is in and Hurst well he's played at that one and he's taken by Pepper and he's gone he wasn't entirely sure where that had gone Hurst he just tentatively pushed forward at that and Pepper's taken a very good low catch right in front of him and if Surrey weren't in trouble before they're right in it now. Data in the sunshine in chance for Bowles run away down to third man that'll be four played nicely away by uh, Tom Bailey just a little bit of width there from Snater away from us and bowling and Bailey driving nicely that'll be four through cover lovely shot by Tom Bailey second boundary in the over in and bowling to Bruce. Bruce on the walk has hit that in the air up to mid on and it should be a comfortable catch and it is and I'm rather afraid from a Lancashire perspective that that is a gimme from Tom Bruce. He's got a leading edge on that. Fame in, balls back of a length and that's uh, helped to way down towards deep backward point for, for four runs. A fraction short and wide by Noah Thame. Thame bowls again. Edged, gone. First wicket for Noah Thame in just his third ball in first-class cricket. Waiting for Porter in and bowls. And that's 
nicely played through the leg side by Williams. <coughs> Might have timed that well enough for four. He has <coughs> lovely timing with the balls. Yeah, lovely Le balls, and that's a lovely shot by Bailey as he flicks it down towards the fine leg boundary for four. That's a pleasant shot, misdirected delivery. Porter to, to Williams. He drives. It's a little streak. It's down through third man. Will it reach the boundary down below us? Williams turns and wants to run three places this delivery is smashed back over the head of the bowl it's running up towards the boundary it should have the legs to get there and a surprise shot there by Blatherick pulls it in and bowls down the pitch Williams comes and hammers it back <laughs> over the bowler's head <laughs> and uh, all the way for six <laughs> for Essex into Williams down the pitch he comes again goes back <laughs> over the bowler's head and uh, bouncing out towards the, the boundary at wide long off not quite six this time for Will Williams, but he gets four more. Bowls and Blatherick's down the wicket, and he's hit that one. Where is it gone? And it's gone for four. He's trying to hit that one on the onside, but it ends up down at long on. And with that, he goes to 18, Hammer Bowls. And he's this, I think this one, he should be out here. Yeah. And he's caught. To Lyon on the forward press, drives expansively, straight to Shane Snater at backward point. Lyon goes for a duck. That's the end of the Lancashire innings, 146 all out. Bowling two for Rose Cushy, and Cushy <laughs> drives, gets a massive outside edge, it loops over the top of the slips and comes down to deep third for four runs. Well, I mentioned in the previous game, he left his first ball alone. Alistair Cook in and bowls, and that's driven firmly down the onside. It's running up towards the boundary. It should have the legs to get there. The fielder is giving up the chase. And Elgar gets his first boundary when the slips are out, balls. And this one has been thrashed down the ground by Kushi. He's not hanging around. Over pitch delivery. And he's given it the treatment down the ground. I think losing his footing. Handsome looking drive for four runs. It's a fine looking shot by Kushi. Drilled away through extra cover. Oh, any loss? as this delivery <laughs> is, that's okay. like a T20 um, shot, as he's lifted it <laughs> over the wicked <laughs> area. As this delivery, <laughs> where's that one going? Another T20 shot, and it's gonna go for four. Over mid wicket, just <laughs> to Kushi and Bowles. And he's running this one down to third man, and it's racing up towards the boundary. There's a dive, but I don't think he got, can stop that one there. Still reached the rope. Blatherick again, no balls. And this one is whipped away down to final A for four. <laughs> Misdirected delivery to 50 up for Essex. Cushy in and balls. And this one is, that's a lovely shot. That's the best shot he's played today. That is a authentic shot off the back foot, just short of a length. Not giving Bradford much to ball at as this delivery is pulling. He gets a top edge and he's going to get four. He goes down to fine leg and he's got his 50. Facing Will Williams, Keaton Jennings, the Lancashire captain, is uh, searching for some control and he's got one here because uh, Cushy's gone. Bolderson does strike and a little bit of relief for Lancashire. As, um, that is caught at and slip. He's Bolson to Cook. And that's played uh, calmly away for no run by Sam Cook. So he's done his, his job. He's faced 11 deliveries at the end of the, the day's play. He'll be there on two. It's nice, a really good bowling performance from you today. Where I think you'd have to say ahead of the eight ball at the end of day one against Lancashire. What's your reflection on what we've seen today? Yeah, for sure. I think a good, good all round effort from the boys in the field. And nice to have bowled him out for, I think, under 150. Um, and then obviously Faroz and Dean put on a good partnership, followed up by uh, Sam Cook. So yeah, I think we're in a good position leading into tomorrow. And they're a really good team, you know, you look at their squad, it, this is a good achievement to be where we are. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've struggled here in the, in the past against them. Um, so yeah, it's nice to be where we're at. And your bowling performance in, in particular, four wickets for yourself, obviously it was against Lancashire where you took five for six, you seemed to quite enjoy playing against them. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, I uh, felt really good leading into the whole season. So, yeah, it's nice to get a few rewards. But, uh, yeah, just be just happy to be putting in some performances for the team. And you credit the other members of the ball in the tackle because the wicket will share around. Yeah, for sure. I think everyone played their part. And, uh, yeah, obviously Noah Thane getting his first championship wicket. So, yeah, no, so for him and, yeah, just uh, happy to be out there. You mentioned Noah Dane, obviously proud moment for him, proud for you to kind of be bowling alongside him, another member of the Essex Academy coming through. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, I spent some time with him out in Melbourne. So, yeah, it was really good to see him get his rewards. And, yeah, he's well, he's been working really hard. So, yeah, it's really nice to see that. The technical aspect of it, obviously, we're back using the Duke for like a couple of rounds of the cooker ball. Yeah. How have you found that? And are there any adaptations you have to make? Or is it good? No, nah, not necessarily. I think pretty similar. Like, we've got a pretty standard plan as to what we're trying to do when we're out there. So... No matter what the ball is, it's just, it's all the same, really. And one other thing you had to overcome as well, there were quite a few range of things, certainly early on. Is that difficult when you're trying to get into a rhythm when you're bowling, or is that difficult? Uh, not necessarily. I think it's actually harder for the batting team, so I think we're in a good place. I mean, the on and off, on and off disrupts like a batter more so than it will the bowlers. So, yeah, I mean, I, I felt all right with it, so yeah, all good. And then finally, we're in a strong position now. It's important to capitalise that into the rest of the game. Yeah, for sure. I think tomorrow is a big day for us. Hopefully we can get a, a good, good lead and uh, see where we're at after tomorrow.
both batters just taking their guards. Welcome to listeners on BBC Five Live Sports Extra. Joining us here on BBC Essex and BBC Radio Lancashire for the second day of this county championship match and the opening session. Tom Bailey is going to open up from this Sir Alistair Cook end and he is in and bowling to Dean Elgar around the wicket and Elgar just pushes up to mid on and there is no run, 68 for one, so 78 runs behind and good morning to Scott Reed. Morning Glenn, good morning everybody. Yeah, um, it's uh, uh, thankfully a, a start on time today after yesterday's um, rain affected first um, first hour or so and we had a bit of rain after lunch yesterday. I think the forecast, the local weather forecast is good today, we might get a full day in. Bailey's in again to uh, Elgar, who works that down to long leg. And the first run of the day is on the board, and it ticks over to 69 for one. We're in the 13th over of this Essex innings. Yes, didn't get underway till quarter past 12 yesterday. Short 45-minute session up to lunch, and then not back underway again until 25 past three in the afternoon due to, due to heavy rain. But as you say, Scott, the weather looks OK today. I'll be updating BBC Essex listeners into the 11 o'clock news and Scott, I assume you've got to do likewise at some point. And in fact, he does because he's going to skedaddle off. He'll be back with us in a couple of moments. Bailey over the wicket now to the right-handed night watchman, Sam Cook, who is dropped. Dropped at third slip and Essex have a let off immediately, albeit it is the night watchman, Sam Cook, and they scamper through for a single. George Bell, the man who's put it down at third slip, and the score moves up to 74 1. Not what Lancashire wanted. They would have wanted to see the back of the night watchman very early, because Sam Cook's done a, a good job on a couple of occasions already this season as night watchman for Essex, coming in after Feroz Kushi was out for a very rapid half century yesterday. Four slips go down for the left-handed Elgar now. As Bailey comes around the wicket and Elgar shoulders arms and it's through to Matty Hurst standing behind the stumps for Lancashire. It's a big outside edge of Cook's bat and it, it looked from here quite a regulation slip catch. Slightly low just in front of the fielder but George Bell would have expected to have been taking that one so Essex get an early let off here and they now trail by just 76 runs on first innings. Bailey turns, running away from us, into Elgar, who just works that one through gully, and they'll pick up at least two here. Outfield is not lightning quick as yet, still suffering slightly from the heavy rain we had yesterday, and they do come through for a couple, and the Essex score goes up to 72-4-1. Lots of county championship action today. You can follow it via the BBC Sport website just go to the live pages there where all the live text feed is and there's a tab there which says watch and listen and you can choose your commentary so if the weather does close in anywhere you can just click on another one instead here we are about to update the bbc essex listeners then as bailey comes into elgar once again and that's allowed to go through to hurst And we've just had the first over of the morning at a sunny but chilly Chelmsford County ground this morning. And Essex have moved on to 72 for one. Dean Elgar uh, is there. He's on 13. And the night watchman Sam Cook is still there, albeit Cook has already been dropped this morning, put down by George Bell at third slip. But Essex 72 for one here, and they trail on first innings by just 74 runs. So that's the end of the first innings then. 72 for one is the score. And we are going to see George Balderson, who's going to open yes, up like from the solid. Graham Gooch end this morning. He took the wicket to fall yesterday of Kushi, and he's in and bowling to Sam Cook. And Cook on the drive, but it comes off the inner part of the face of the bat and is stopped by the man at square leg and there'll be no run there either Elgar feverishly scratching his mark at the non-striker's end as well still those four slips in for Lancashire relatively close though particularly at this end certainly standing closer than the Essex slip fielders did yesterday as Balderson turns in towards us now and bowling to Cook and Cook just on the walk pushes that one up to mid on and there'll be no run 
once again. Yes, yeah, so you've got the live text feed via the BBC Sport website as well this morning. The guys working really hard on that to bring you all the news from around the country. Wickets and incidents as they occur. A few pictures in there as well so you can get an idea of what's going on and what the weather's like all around the county. As here is Balderson once again. Right arm over, four slips go down for Cook and Cook works that one down to long leg. There's probably a chance of a couple here because long leg's quite wide and they do come through for two runs and the score moves up to 74 for one. And welcome back, Scott. Yeah, like I should need a, need a good day today, don't they? It was um, a pretty outstanding first day for the home side. I think pretty much everything went, went according to plan, didn't it? And they won the toss. They, it was always a bowl first type of day and then they bowled really well. And then they came out and had a fantastic little spell with the bat late on last night and, and quickly got up to 60-odd. To, to Balderson in again and on the drive this time, Cook, but it's fielded by Luke Wells, who's just there at backward point and there's no run again. So, yes, Lancashire, I guess, have to, have to start again. And there's every chance that they, they will be um, behind on first innings and face a, a pretty strong test when they come out to bat a little bit later on but first things first they're on the attack here they've got four slips in place and they'll be hoping that they can uh, wrestle back a bit of control with some wickets in this first hour or so into cook once again who thinks about playing to that one and then just takes the bat out of the way so there is no run obviously they would have wanted to get rid of the night watchman yes, as quickly as possible yeah. so so far from ideal that that it was it was i guess it was low in front of the fielder but george bell would have expected to have been taking that yeah I'm a, i was a, a little bit um unsighted with it really because i was in between just nipping to do the update next door um so I, and i'm not seeing a replay of it but he's a good slip catcher um and if it went to him cleanly, yeah, he'd have backed himself to take that. Balderson in again to Cook, just covers up defensively on the crease and there's no run. As it's fielded by the man coming round from extra cover, who is Josh Bahannon, and that is the end of the second over in the morning. And Lancashire are 74 for one. Our stream is currently frozen on the screen, so the ah. IT guys are, are scrambling as we speak. Mm. So come and sort that out for us. We sort of think the IT are scrambling, coming around. They're coming down like the, the <laughs> fireman's pole, you know, and the, the alarms have gone off in action. Sometimes, I mean, is it... Uh, my, the extent of my technical knowledge would be to switch it off and switch it back on again. Yes, yeah. Or, or as, as our engineering department used to say, have you tried a system reset? <laughs> it's like, what, what, when I first joined, what was that? We're turning it off and turning it on again. <laughs> it's Tom Bailey. Four slips are in place. As he bowls around the wickets, off the back foot, and worked away by uh, Dean Elgar out towards uh, extra cover, and there is uh, no uh, run. Uh, the score remains on 74 uh, for one. As we um, see Elgar, who batted nicely, it's a very different contrast to the way to, to what <laughs> Kishi batted yesterday. I mean, he just came out and walloped it, didn't he? It all felt a bit frenetic, didn't it, whenever he was on strike? Yes, it, was, it was almost like panic stations, where's this one going? It was a bit brutal, but it was highly effective for 50-odd runs. It's driven away by Elgar again. It's a very good stop by Luke Wells um, at uh, Backwell Point. And super bit of fielding, actually, because he hit that pretty firmly, did Dean Elgar. And he's probably thinking not just maybe a couple, he's potentially thinking four out towards that boundary in front of the of the pavilion, but it's a good stop. Yeah, it was a good stop. I spoke to Shane Snater at the close of play yesterday and sort of getting his view on, on the pitch. He said it's not a snake pit. He said, but, the, you know, there, there is a bit more carry and a bit more movement out there than, than they had on the previous pitch against Kent. And he said, and obviously, the ball has helped as well. Three slips in a gully, Bailey to... Elgar gets forward and defends. And uh, it bounces up towards Josh Bahannon. There's no run. That bumblebee's back with us again. Mm. He's come in. He's come indoors this time as well, so I may have to gently remove him at, at some point. Ooh, good luck with that. Yeah, he, he doesn't look well, if I'm honest with you. Oh, dear. Maybe it's the cold weather that he's, he's come indoors for. Well, Butch has put the heating on. Has he? <laughs> so that's, that maybe it, it's, it's been attracted to the heating that's, that's on. It's nice and cosy in here now. He wants to uh, he wants to stay indoors. I don't blame him. Here is uh, Bailey again to Elgar. Oh, well, that's come off the inside edge of the bar. He's, he, he frantically spun round to see where the ball was disappearing to. He gets a single, but he wasn't sure exactly um, where that was going. Takes one and moves on to to 15. So it's 75 for one. The B has seen enough as well. He's got. He's got. <laughs> he's got. And we've got a slightly extended day today, haven't we? 
I think 104 overs today. Mm -hmm. Lunch is slightly later, I think. It'll be 10 past one lunch then, right. We can make up time that we lost yesterday through this uh, second day. Back to four slips for the night watchman, Sam Cook. And Bailey balls over the wicket to him and that flashes past the edge of the bat and into the gloves of Matty Hurst. We have our monitor back working with us, which is good. And follow the commentary in plenty of different ways across five sports extra, I think until Kevin said two o'clock. Um, and then every ball of every game via the BBC Sport website and app. And you can listen to our commentary and follow it on the, the pictures on the live stream as well. As Cook waits for Bailey. And uh, again, that uh, beats Bailey, uh, beats Cook and through to the keeper. And there's no run. It's the end of the over. Just a single off it. 75 for one. Elgar on 15 and Cook on five. Yes, three or four plays and misses from Sam Cook this morning. And then obviously the outside edge, which, which Bell, unfortunately, from Lancashire's point of view, put down as well. So Essex have progressed on 75 for one. So they trail by 71 runs now as well. Dean Elgar won't, won't change his approach, despite what was going on at the other end last night with Farouz Kushi seeming to want to put bat to ball to every delivery and that express 50 that got them off to that great start and Elgar won't change the way he goes about things and um, I guess the message from the Essex dressing room is load of time to bat, load of time in the game. Let's just see how far we can get. But certainly, certainly no concerns about the weather at the moment as Balderson in from the Graham Gooch end, round the wicket to the left-handed Elgar and there's no run as he pushes up to extra cover. Elgar, who's on 15, 5 to Sam Cook. It's also at the start of the Rachel Hayo Flint Trophy today. So the, 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 the team, this should be a lot clearer from next season because they'll have proper names, won't yeah. they? But it's, it's Sunrisers that's associated with Essex, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it is. Um, but they don't play very often here. As this next one is met defensively and there's a shout for LBW quite vociferously as well from Balderson. And then the slips joined in, but nothing doing. And 75 for one is the score. Yeah, they, they, they sort of dot around and, and play games here, there and everywhere. And I'm, and I'm like you. If, you. if you're sort of dipping in and out, I, I think when you've got teams like the Blaze and Sunrisers and things, and things like that, you, and you've got to go looking to see where they play, who they're associated with, I, I, I don't think that helps anybody. As Balderson round the wicket to Elgar. And Elgar on the pull, pulls that one away to the mid-wicket boundary and that's the first four of the morning 79 for one today's rachel hayo flint trophy games involve central sparks and the blaze northern diamonds against thunder thunder is the, the lancashire side uh, southeast stars against the southern vipers and the west storm against the sunrisers so the western storm are batting first 29 for one and thunder are up against the northern diamonds so that's a bit of a lancashire yorkshire kind of contest there and this game is taking place at chesterly street and uh, Thunder batting first. I've lost two wickets. Then 40 for two in the uh, the tenth over. So Balderson has the ball back in his hand, having just been fetched to the mid-wicket boundary by Elgar, who guides this one past the right hand of the man at third slip and picks up four runs. No danger. He was riding that one. It was all the way along the ground, and it races away. And the score goes to 83 for one. And everybody else has started in the Championship in Division One and Division Two. No rain delays around the country if we just see a replay of that little shot which is squeezed away down towards the third man boundary for four but obviously that will all change next year with the tier one teams announced and the counties getting their women's professional teams Essex being one of them there's his Balderson two boundaries he's been hit for and his comeback is very good as he goes past the outside edge of Elgar's defensive shot and through to Hurst for no run Thunder's first home match takes place this coming uh, Wednesday at uh, Emirates Old Trafford and uh, we'll be uh, bringing you commentary of that on the BBC Sport website and app as well as on uh, Lancashire's uh, live stream as well. 10.30 start against the Sunrisers on Wednesday. Balderson into Elgar, just plays awkwardly defensively, takes his bottom hand off the bat but 
There's no run at the end of that over. Good one for Essex. 83 for one is the score. Elgar's gone to 23. Still five to Sam Cook. And you know it's cold when the 12th man comes on to hand someone a towel and he's got a massive overcoat on. <laughs> and <laughs> you can, because Lancashire are based in the, it's sort of one of the marquees just to the right of the, of the pavilion as we look at it here. I can't imagine that's overly warm in there either. You like one of those football manager's coats bit, he's got on. Yeah. Arsene Wenger used to wear like one, that like a sleeping bag, didn't he? Well, the, well, the, well, is that the one he used to have trouble zipping, zipping up? Zipping up, yeah. <laughs> it's like an Arsene Wenger sleeping bag coat. I don't know who that was. Maybe it was Tom Aspinwall who was the 12th man there, but either way, it's hard to tell he was so wrapped up. <laughs> it's chilly. It's not freezing, but it, it's certainly chilly. And we've got one of our windows open in the, in the commentary box as well. Here's Bailey, sets off again with uh, a night watchman on strike. He takes a single down towards uh, fine leg. Just uh, able to guide the ball away off his hip. And he's down there. George Balderson's down there fielding. And so uh, Cook moves on to uh, to six. And it's now 84 for one to bring Dean Elgar back on strike. So trail by 62 runs on first innings. Essex winning the toss yesterday. But it did take a change of bowling, Shane Snater, to make mm. a couple of quick breakthroughs to get rid of both the Lancashire openers because Luke Wells was putting back to ball and, and looking in, in supreme form. Early ball around the wicket to, uh, to Elgar, who leaves it through to, uh, to Hurst, who just takes it leaning a pace or two to his uh, right-hand side. There's no run. It wasn't quite Cushy-esque from Wells, but it felt like he was gearing up to... Do to play, well, and did play a couple of big shots. It wasn't quite the brutal force that we saw from Cushy later on last night, but yeah, it, that was quite a dangerous little period, that wasn't it, yesterday for Essex, because Wells was, was looking in pretty good touch. Yeah, and that one big six that he hit that had Simon Harmer bunking over the fence to try to get the ball back. But yeah, they managed to wheedle him out, and that was the sort of start of, of Essex's domination on day one. Cushy's first delivery swiped out and Edge, thick edge over the top of the slips and from that point onwards he started to find the middle of the bat. It was a show of intent, wasn't it? Bailey to Elgar from around the wicket to the left-hander. Again, he's left and uh, through to Hurst, just kind of probing away just outside Elgar's off stump, bringing the ball into him and then just trying to take it away from the South African. He was, showed some good stubborn batting and resistance through the course of last night and very early on this morning, he's 23 from 44. He's 84 for one. Bailey for Lancashire, past the umpire again, and Elgar gets bat on ball this time, just takes a half step forward and smothers the ball away into the offside. And, uh, Williams that comes up from gully to field. And there's no run. Lancashire starting with the two that ended last night. Uh, Balderson. Actually, Balderson was one of them, Bladdock was the other, so they've gone with Bailey and Balderson as the bowlers to get things going this morning, which is quite an interesting uh, decision. It would almost exclusively have been Bailey and Williams it, to, to start things off on, on, the, on each day for, for Lancashire. The ball's still pretty new. And that's left by Elgar, or the theatrical leave, just going to jolt his right knee forward and pulls the bat out bat out the way to the gloves of Hurst and there's no run but Balderson bowled nice and tidily last night he actually got Lancashire a little bit of control they struggled with the onslaught from uh, Cushy and Balderson sent down four uh, has sent down four overs one for 11 yeah just trying to rein back a little bit of control weren't they yeah and he's, he's done a good job in fairness to him so Bailey, final ball of the 17th over of the Essex first innings. Oh, Ooh, and that snaps through into the gloves of uh, Hurst. That's a very fine delivery from Bailey from around the wicket. A little extra bounds through to Hurst as well. Lovely shape away from Elgar. It's a fine piece of bowling from Tom Bailey. Watching this back on the replay into uh, to Elgar. Turns him round and goes past the edge of the bat. That's a nice way to end the over. That's the classic delivery, isn't it? Round the wicket into the into the left-hander and then it straightens and goes past the outside edge and Elgar on the walk, just thankful that he didn't get anything on it. As you say, fantastic piece of bowling, but no reward and Essex continue. 84 for one, trailing by 62. Decent-ish crowd in today. People still coming in through the entrances, but there's a few bobble hats and a few overcoats in evidence. 
because the cloud cover has come in now, so the sun at the moment is not breaking through. Balderson to continue from the Graham Gooch end is in and Cook just very calmly and coolly defensively plays out to extra cover and there's no run there. It's become the, the night watchman for Essex, Sam Cook. It, it, it used to be the very much the territory of Jamie Porter, but Cook has taken over, it would seem, from that mantle. Well, I would, I'm, I'm guessing because he wants to. It's not, it's not the kind of job I get. I guess you go, well, you do it. No, I don't want to. Well, you're doing it. Here's Balderson. Four slips go down and Cook again. Just standing on the crease, just plays defensively and sends his batting partner, Dean Elgar, back. That wasn't a single there. As the fielding was done by Josh Bahannon. Bahannon, the leading championship run scorer last season. He, he was the Division One leading run scorer, yeah. I think Alex Lee's got more runs than he did in, in Division Two for Durham. But yeah, he was a top scorer in, in Division One. A good year for him. She'll be looking to build on. At the moment, he's got his hands thrust in his pockets trying to keep warm. Balderson in once again and Cook goes for the big drive and it's through to Hurst. There's nothing on that. There was no foot movement from Cook there. <laughs> in a way, all this kind of uh, works in the, in the favour of Essex, doesn't it? He's, uh, he's lived a little bit of a fortuitous kind of 15, 20 minutes here, Sam Cook, but that's all right. That's just going to irritate Lancashire exactly. even more, isn't it? Unfortunately for Lancashire. Just looking at that slip cordon for Lancashire. Jennings is at first slip. Bruce at Second slip, Bell at third as Balderson's in once again and Cook just plays defensively out and there'll be no run there. And it's Will Williams who's there at fourth slip for Lancashire. Top yeah. scorer in the Lancashire innings. Yeah, on the attack, aren't they? Lancashire got kind of they need wickets. I mean they desperately need to, to get some wickets in this morning session, just try and see if they can kind of readdress the balance of the game, which is uh, at the minute tipping rather strongly in favour of the home side. But still trailed by 62. This next one from uh, Balderson has Cook just propping forward defensively. No run again. Good over this, nice and accurate. It's gone past the outside edge as well. Just yeah. feeling for that first wicket. Sorry, Glenn. Yeah, yeah. this is um, good stuff from Balderson. He's a very, very handy bowler for Lancashire. I think he picked up, certainly got north of 20 wickets last season. and upwards of 600 runs, so it's a, a, a very fine effort for a young all-rounder last season. And, uh, yeah, he's become a very, very handy uh, bowler for Lancashire. Turns at the end of his run, coming in towards us now, into Cook, and that almost gets under the bat, and Cook just gets enough on it, and the end of an over. Nice, accurate one, that from George Balderson, but no reward, and Essex 84 for one now. Yeah, that's what he'll give you. He kind of wicket to wicket. Um, He's not particularly quick, and I know that's something which he wants to try, try and work on and improve. Um, just try and see if he can squeeze a little extra pace out. Um, it's interesting listening to what uh, Simon Hughes last week, he was at uh, Hampshire with us, um, was saying about how potentially he could try and generate just a little extra pace with the way he, with his action, if he was to try and just kind of extend his, mm. his his right arm and his shoulder a little bit and be a little bit more slingy was what Simon was saying last week but he does want to try and add a little bit of pace but okay, nagging nagging away medium pacer is Balderson it's off the back foot and flicked out into the onside by Dean Elgar as Bailey continues from around the wicket and there's uh, no run Somerset have lost a wicket, 126 for one, replying to Nottinghamshire, 193. And it's Sean Dixon who's gone out for 72. Nottinghamshire needed that. Warwickshire, 350 for four against Hampshire. Still going along nicely. Ring of field day. The batters at the start of the season for Warwickshire, as we mentioned yesterday. Yeah. Bailey sets off again. Three slips in the gully. Bowls to uh, Elgar. Mm -hmm. Looks to try and drive. The ball squirts away off the edge of the bat, bouncing down into the gully region. And there's no run. And we are playing everywhere in Division 1. Kent 125 for 4 against Surrey. And Worcestershire squabbling a little bit. 94 for 4, replying to Durham's 244 all-out. Reminder, you can get all the scores and you get the live text feed and you can listen to any of those games if you want to on the cricket pages on the BBC Sport website and app. There's Bailey for Lancashire into uh, to Elgar. Just going back and across and defending. 
Going the ball away to the offside, no run. All the games in motion in Division 2 as well. Leicestershire 184 for 3 against Derbyshire. Uh, Middlesex only trail Yorkshire by 49 now, they're 110 for 3. Glamorgan still going against Northamptonshire, 224 for 7, as are Gloucestershire, who had a really late finish yesterday, 355 for 8 down at Hove against Sussex. And there's those Rachel Hayho Flint trophy matches as well. Good to see players started in all of those matches this morning too. 84 for one, they'll go eight, Bailey balls. It's driven up towards Nathan Lyon, who's not yet had a ball, but I don't think he'd be a million miles away. And there is uh, no run. Just look at those trophy matches then. Central Sparks 50 for two against the Blaze. Thunder batting 53 for three against Northern Diamonds. Southern Vipers going well, 60 without loss against the South East Stars. And the Western Storm batting against the Sunrisers at 34 for three. Follow it all on the BBC Sport website app. Two balls left for Bailey. In again to, to Elgar. That's uh, clipped away down towards fine leg for a single. And the score. Um, Digs along to, uh, sorry, 85 for one. So it all change. And last week against Kent, the, one of the umpires gave up quite quickly on switching from side to side when the left and right handers were together but it's chilly out there so the umpires want to move around as much as possible so they're, they're going to they're elect to come across the square leg for the right-handed night watchman Sam Cook. Yes, Alex Wolfe and James Middlebrook are two umpires in this game. Final ball of the over, Cook back on strike so Burley reverts back to over the wicket, four steps awaiting and uh, Cook has a little flirt with it outside the off stump and the ball goes through into the gloves of Matty Hurst and uh, that's the end of the over just a single off it 85 for one Elgar on 24 Cook on six and uh, had a pretty quiet first 25 minutes we've got Butch in the box shall I make way and bring Butch in for a bit well I was going to make way to no, be perfectly right. honest I'll with I'll you uh, after, after, the, after this over we'll, right. get, we'll get Butch in because he's, he's been limbering up in the background he's very keen to get to get on so we'll, we'll do this over and we'll switch so around about half past 11 be good to keep you with him Scott the Lancashire chasing wickets well I say chasing they're, they're attacking but there's nothing sort of you know around the bat as it were it's just the four slips so they obviously have containment in mind as well as Balderson continues from the Graham Gooch end around the wicket to Elgar just squirts that one out where it's stopped by the man at fourth slip and there is no run Elgar playing very well keeping the ball down a couple of times we've seen him ride the bounce and on one occasion picking up a four as well man of so much experience seen it all done it all in his career and Really good signing for Essex. Once Sir Alastair Cook had announced he was going, the, the hunt was on for someone to come in, an experienced head at the top of the order. And he's here for a while as well, that's a couple of years. Balderson is in once again and working that one behind square on the onside this time is Elgar and he'll pick up a couple of runs and the score moves up to 87 for one. So this deficit now under 60. See blue sky around. There's a there's a very small, and I do mean small, window of blue sky just coming over the top of the boundary as the clouds move across. It was the odd spot of rain on my windscreen as I made my way down the A12 this morning. As here is Balderson into Elgar and drives off the back foot and may well pick up four runs for this one indeed the man at mid on has given it up lovely shot from Elgar off the back foot and just with pure timing works it back past the bowler four runs 91 for one that was a good shot wasn't it it's Nathan Lyon there who's uh, at uh, mid on went to his right hand side but lovely back foot punch by uh, Elgar and there wasn't any great follow through with the shot either so maybe the outfield is just beginning to to pick up a little bit Balderson around the wicket to Elgar once again who <laughs> rather extravagantly leaves the ball alone while squatting on the crease line as well I've not seen that leave before strong thighs isn't he <laughs> he's there to hold that pose I think I'd be asking someone behind the wicket you couldn't just help me up could you <laughs> after that <laughs> well, it's a, it's a tremendous looking squat 
And he has a impressive, and then he, so he sort of squatted back down again, as if as if to prove that, yeah, look, look at my upper thigh power that I've got in there. As Balderson is into Elgar, just plays cautiously, defensively, out to the offside, and there's no run again. I should apologise if you can hear my phone pinging in the background. My my youngest is off for her practice. Duke of Edinburgh expedition this weekend. Oh, right, where's that at? Um, that's that's up in Suffolk. She's going. Okay. This weekend, it's a it's a practice, and um, we were just deliberating exactly how many blankets to pack for tonight because it, it apparently it's to be about one degree. Oh, so it's full on kind of camping. Oh, full on camping oh, right. outdoors. Oh, yes. Okay, nice. Yeah, so good luck with that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's Balderson into Elgar. Elgar on the drive. There's a there's a kind of half stop by Bahannon on the edge of the square, which prevents it going for four, and they pick up a couple of runs, and the score moves on to 93-4-1. That is the end of the over, so I'll leave you in the hands of Scott, and Butch will come in alongside him for the first time this morning. I can't imagine Roland Butcher being a keen camper, but we'll see. I'll ask him when he comes in. 93-4-1. So half an hour gone, and it's been pretty solid, hasn't it, so far, by, uh, by Essex. A couple of player misses, the ball... Continues just to move around a little. It's 20 overs old, this ball for, for, for Lancashire. But they're still searching for their first breakthrough of the day. Dean Elgar, who's been in runs already this season. That's at 32. Sam Cook is on six. Roland Butcher's alongside me. And uh, Tom Bailey's going to set off from the Sir Alistair Cook. End of the ground, the river end of the ground, to ball over the wicket to Sam Cook. Nice shot, four runs through extra cover. And Cook moves into double figures with that, and Essex edging towards 100. Yeah, lovely shot, and Scott, good morning to good you. Good morning, Butch. over pitch delivery there by Bailey, and Cook, who had a bit of luck early on in the day when he was dropped at slip, made no mistake in cashing in on that half volley. Timed it sweetly through the offside for four. He did, yeah. Nice shot. The trail by 49 now, 97 for one. That's Bailey's response to the night watchman balls again. Oh, that's a little <laughs> streaky. If the last one was a lovely shot, that's a streaky single down towards fine leg. He's going to play forward, and the ball comes off the inside edge of the bat and disappears down to Balderson at fine leg for one. Well, I suppose that's the look of the look of the night watchman, isn't it? You come out and play a couple of decent shots and maybe just get a, a bit of good fortune with an inside edge as well. Yes, he's, as I said earlier, he had that good fortune of being dropped. But since then, he's looked quite secure after that. Elgar, on the other hand, has been very watchful, very, you can see the concentration. Not playing anything extravagant, just staying within his zone waiting for anything loose but generally watching the ball intently leaving well yeah it, it, which is something he did really well last night wasn't it Elgar towards the close of play but he comes back over the wicket to Elgar and they've been bowled around the wicket to the left hander for most of this morning forward in defence worked out towards Nathan Lyon we're going to see Lyon ball soon I'm sure doesn't feel like it's a spinner's day particularly, but you, you, you just not. I just don't see them holding him back for much longer. They'll want to, to give him a go. I just wonder how he'll be enjoying this, <laughs> this weather. Yeah. Maybe a little different, but uh, he's watching as Bailey's in to Elgar. That's worked off the pads. Nice shot, timed away through mid wickets. Beats uh, Blatherwick. Here goes Lyon catching up with it. And uh, Elgar comes back uh, for two, and that does bring up three figures for Essex. We've got to within 46 of the Lancashire first innings for the loss of one wicket. So 100 for one. Elgar on 34, and Cook on 11. Yeah, some very contrasting innings. Cushy yesterday, and now Cook and Elgar. Bailey two. Elgar forward and defends, and there's no run. I feel a little for uh, for Jack Blatherwick. He was at mid wicket there, and he's he's there's four used pitches, practice pitches that have been used as part of the players' warm-ups, and he's been 
bouncing around on there all morning trying to stop the ball and he's he's had I think a few grazes along the way. He's he's done well. It won't be a particularly pleasant job that <laughs> fielding on those use wickets. Final ball of the over, Bailey to Elgar. And uh, again gets forward and defends. And there's no run, it's the end of the over. Uh, Bailey's bowled five overs through the first half an hour of this morning. Five overs for 14. Balderson's bowled four overs for 18. And we are going to have our first bowling change. Yes. It's 100 for one. Yes, and I think to this date, I think Essex obviously going along mostly. Not losing any wickets so far this morning. Um, had the one opportunity, Lancashire didn't take it. I know they've got to keep working and working hard as the score has reached the 100. And it looks like... Is that Williams? It is, it is. It's William Williams. William isn't Williams yep. well, is going to come on and he's going to be rolling from the Graham Gooch end. And he's be bowling to a very attacking field. Um, and obviously Lancashire have got to find a way of getting wickets, so mm. it can't be too defensive. No, no. They've pretty much four slips all morning, haven't they? Yep, so he's going to have four slips. He's going to cover point, mid-off, mid-on, square leg, and a man on the long leg boundary. He'll be rolling fast, medium, right to arm, over the wicket. Williams with his first delivery of the morning and bowls, and that one just shapes away from Cook, who initially looked to play, takes the bat away, a nice carry through to wicketkeeper Hurst, and there is no run. Score stays 100 for the loss of one. Dean Elgar has been there from the start. He's on 34, looking pretty solid. And with him, Cook on 11. Cook came in as night watchman last night. He's now faced some 32 deliveries and doing the job that he was sent in to do, which was to Make sure no other wickets fall. He's now facing Williams. Williams in, bowls, and he fends at this one outside the off stump. That really was catching practice. <laughs> and he's very fortunate that he didn't get a touch on that because those four steps would have been in business. Mm. Umpire has a little chat with Williams. Just perhaps telling him to veer off the pitch a little bit quicker, but that really was a get-out shot there by Cook. He was way outside the off stump, but he tried to... Let's see what he does to the next ball. Williams bowls, and that keeps it a little bit low. And he does very well, Cook, as he stays right in line, gets the bat down in time, and plays it out to extra cover. Can't score. He stays on 11. And still 94 overs after this one remaining in the day's play. Could be a very long, long day for Lancashire if, if things don't go well. Mm. Seem to be brightening up at the moment as Williams in his first over of the morning in and bowls to Cook. And Cook is he's going to get runs here now as he steers this one pass backward point and it pulls up three quarters of the way to the boundary. And in the meantime, he crosses for two, he goes for 13, and the score goes to 102 for, for the loss of one. There's a bit of rain in Canterbury, it's a rain stop play between uh, Kent and Surrey, with Kent 144 for four. In the first innings, Jason Holders just hit a six <laughs> for Worcestershire. They were 104 for four in reply to Durham's 244 all out. Williams in. Balls and Cook very watchful, all back of a length and just defends it solidly out on the offside. And it's no run. Stephen Eskenaz is out for Middlesex. They were 115 for five, replying to Yorkshire's 159. All out. Holder's gone though, isn't he? Yeah, he he's gone for 18, <laughs> bowled by Ben Rain. So <laughs> six and out for Jason Holder. What's issue one turn for five now? Williams in, bowls. And that's a nice push drive there by Cook getting onto the front foot. He survives the over, fielded at mid-off. He remains on 13. Elgar, who would take straight at the start of the next over, he is on 34. And Lancashire have made a fairly solid start this morning. Just carrying on from 
yesterday evening when Kushi was very, very attacking in that half century before he lost his wicket. They have now reached 102 for one. Yeah, the captain, Keaton Jennings, gone to go and meet, meet uh, Tom Bailey, who's made his way up from the, the boundary where he was fielding. Looks like uh, Jennings and, and Bailey having a little conversation as to maybe how, how many more he wants or where he wants his field is set. How are we going to get Dean Elgar out here? <laughs> Josh Bahadon's in the conversation as well. He's looked absolutely solid, hasn't he, Elgar? Yeah, he's obviously a high-quality test player. Um, relishing this opportunity now to play county cricket, mm. I guess. His days at the international level are coming to a close. Well, he's bringing it to a close, not necessarily being not good enough to play. I think he's obviously looking to do other things right now, but... A very, very experienced player, somebody you have to prize from the cricket. So it needs a lot of thought as to how you're going to get him out because you know, he, he set his stall out and he looked about for the whole day. He has set his stall out, yeah, he looks in that uh, in that mood. Barely over the wicket to, to Elgar. Takes a single just off the back foot, clipping it away towards deep backward square leg. Maybe the plan, Scott, was to give him a single and bowl off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair point. Because they took the square leg out, put he him did. up the deep square yeah. leg, and then he bowled it on the leg side and clipped it to the square leg for a single. Yeah, but maybe. Yeah, let's forget <laughs> Elgar for a minute. Work, work on the other one. <laughs> it's 103 for one. Elgar coming into this on the back of runs against Nottinghamshire in the first game. He got 80 in the first innings and then 26. And then last week against Kent here, making 120 and 34. As Cook gets forward and defends away to mid-wicket. No run. It's not a bad way to replace Sir Alistair Cook, is it? You've gone from Cook opening your batting to Elgar, who's got uh, 5,500 test match runs at mm. 40, including 14 centuries. Yeah, very good signing that by Essex. Um, you know, the runs that Alistair Cook scores, you can't just let those runs score on notice. So... You've got to replace him with somebody who is capable of that amount of runs or more. It's Cook waiting, Bailey bounding his way back in. Oh, a play and a miss from Cook. The most kind of flamboyant looking shot from Cook. Thrusting and swinging and missing and through to the Hurst and there's no run. Might be one to forget. Yeah, just drew him into the drive. It was a pitched up delivery. And fortunate not to get a touch well, he's had a little bit of good fortune along the way but he's still there 13 not out 103 for one three slips in a gully and there's Bailey balls and Cook plays forward in defence Josh Bohannon comes forward from mid off to field scoops up the ball with his, uh, his left hand and gives it a bit of a polish as he wanders back to meet his bowler he's walking back to his mark Nathan Lyon just starting to do a few very gentle stretches. I wouldn't say it's a it's a full warm-up. <laughs> or maybe he's just trying to keep warm, perhaps. I think it's a bit of both, I guess he <laughs> suggesting to the keep to the captain who'd like to have a ball and at the same time keep warm as well. And Bailey to cook. It's dabbed away into the offside. There's two Lancashire players scampering after it. Behind him from mid-off and Balderson from point. It's Lancashire's vice captain that gets there first. And there's no rum. Just a single off the elbow, which was the first ball. A clip away off the pads by uh, Elgar, and then in the odd play and miss, and a couple of defensive shots along the way. Final ball of Bailey's tenth over of the innings. It's his sixth in this opening spell this morning. And Cook just uh, defending. And there's no run, end of the over. So it's 103 for one, Dean Elgar on 35, Sam Cook's on 13. And Essex trail Lancashire by 43 runs. Yes, and that probably could be the end of, of Bailey's spell. He's given it all this morning, could have had a wicket. Hasn't worked out, so I think Lancashire perhaps going to have to find another way of breaking this partnership in getting into the middle order of the Essex batting who are they're in a very good position right now having bowled 
blanket out yesterday for 146 until I've reached this point of the day where they're 103 for one. Things are going nicely, but lots of discussion taking place. You're not missing any cricket because you're trying to get the field setting right for Elgar. So Williams is going to ball to Elgar for the first time. He's going to go around the wicket. And he's got three slips and he's in now. Williams bowls. And that ball comes into Elgar, comes across his stumps and plays it up to mid on. Lands, Nathan Land does the fielding and there's no run. I'm just trying to get an angle here on the square field. He's not really gully, he's a. I think it's more cover point catching. There's a third man, there's an extra cover, there's no mid off. So Williams has got to cover that area if Elgar drives down the ground. Williams in, bowls, and Elgar's clipping this one through mid wickets. There's runs here, at least one. And um, we'll settle just for the one. This ball was clipped through mid wicket, so he gets a single. Cook. Hooks on 13, so he'll take straight. The feel changes. Will be a more aggressive feel for Cook. Yes, the wiki keeper getting his bootlaces tied, so after that. We decide whether the fielder goes to a fourth slip or a run saving position. So at the moment Essex going along nicely. Today looks as if we might be a bit on and off, but Williams now over the wicket is uh, f and that's one attempted pull shot there by Hook by Cook. He gets it down to fine leg, not in control. But he'll get a single, the return is fired into the wicket keeper. Once again, discussion about the field for Elgar. They're still wanting to make sure that they've got the field correct. And that man at point is coming back into, into a catching position. He's like a, absolutely square on the offside. Obviously hoping Elgar would reach at a wide delivery. As I said, no mid off in place. Three slips go down as Williams bowls and Edgar off the back foot and aiming for that mid off position. But can't get past Williams, who does the fielding. One oh five for one. We've had twenty three overs bowl in the twenty fourth. So the score rate's four point four four. That's going along nicely as Williams with none for 22 to his name in bowls and Elgar again punching this ball up towards mid off no timing so the fielder at an extra wide extra cover can get around to his left and do the fielding yeah, look at Lancashire's bowlers that they've used in this match so far we started with Bailey and with Williams yesterday Blatherwick bowled two overs for 22 his first one went for, for 17 and then Balderson got that little tidy spell late last night and started pretty nicely today. But they are the the, the same options for Lancashire and then Nathan Lyon. Williams found the degree of this over, Bowles, and this one is worked into the onside. Elgar thinking perhaps that he could have pulled that one. We saw him play one very good pull shot earlier on. Instead, he plays the ball gently out to mid on. Over completed. End of another over by Williams. He has figures of none for 22 at the end of that over Essex there 105 for one yeah that might be the end of Tom Bailey from this spell as well six over spell this morning for 15 yeah, I'm going to see uh, George Balderson coming back in to replace him from the Alistair Cook end 43 run partnership this between Dean Elgar and Sam Cook it's um, yeah, it's a very important partnership. I mean, Cook's job really is to just 
waste as much time. When I say waste, I mean use up as much time, not <laughs> literally waste it, but use up as much time so the ball gets older, the bowlers get more tired, give the other batters an opportunity to come in. Well, he's faced 43 deliveries for his 14, so he's done a great job. As, uh, he uh, kind of probes forward at this delivery, fullish length from Balderson. And the ball just sneaks somehow past the outside edge through to Hurst. Yeah, kept pretty low as well did. through to the keeper, didn't come off the pitch. With any venom, keeper takes a step forward. Yeah, Hurst with the gloves. In fact, the, I think the slips have done too, haven't they? Yep. Tom Bruce the and then George Burl have all yep. just taken a step nearer. Balderson to Cook forward and defends, and there's no run. 105 for one. I think it's your captain, Keaton Jennings, trying to find a way to break this partnership. Just get rid of Sam Cook and get into the the batters for Essex with Tom Wesley, Captain Dew in next, and Cox and Critchley to follow. It's a three slips, gully. There's a point, mid off, mid on, mid wicket, and fine leg. It's dabbed away down into the gully region where Luke Wells. Able to stop the ball, the ball actually just uh, going to burst through his fingers, so he has to go jogging after it. But no runs added. I'm surprised the Lancashire bowlers haven't mixed it up against Cook with not just all length deliveries, but some short pitch balls as well, just to just to keep him on the back foot. He's bothersome over the wicket to to Cook. It's deflected behind square on the leg side and uh, the umpire in position to signal a leg by so no bat on that and uh, it's actually picked up by Tom Hartley who's on as a 12th man for Lancashire there maybe Bailey's gone off after his uh, six over spell to change his bowling boots perhaps so a leg by for Cook he remains on 14 the score ticks along by an extra run so it's 106 for one bringing Elgar on strike He's got fond memories, George Balderson, of, of playing here. He, uh, he got a hat-trick for Lancashire here the other season, which included Cook and Dan Lawrence. And I think mm. Matt Critchley was the third. Well, how would you like to get one today? Yeah, just a bit. Started with Dean Elgar, moving forward. Keeper standing up behind the stumps, three slips in place. And Elgar flicks the ball away off his hip, down towards deep backward square leg for a single that was a little bit of a new plan wasn't it with Balderson in and the keeper standing up and send the keeper back with the slips in place when Bailey's been bowling around the wicket to Elgar just trying to find that movement away and that outside edge but slightly different play there with the keeper standing up for Balderson but uh, easy single really for Dean Elgar so 107 for one back into Cook and that's pulled out towards deep back with square leg and pulled nicely for four runs, actually. This pivots onto the back foot and a controlled pull shot out towards the uh, the boundary behind square on the leg side for four. Yeah, nicely controlled pull shot this by Cook. Didn't bounce particularly high, but just right in the hitting zone, probably just above the hip area, but he put it away nicely and um, he moves to 18. No 111 for one, so nice way to finish the over for Cook, who's now faced some 40 deliveries, so he's doing his job well. Dean Elgar, he's still there on 37, he's faced 69. And a change in bowling, is this? No, William's going to continue, isn't he? Well, it's. No, Williams is still going to continue. I thought, I thought perhaps they were going to switch Williams round, but instead he's going to go around the wicket. Discussion really taking place, I guess, is in relation to the field setting. This field is offering Elgar the opportunity to score down the ground. Um, Point fielder who was catching now he's gone back to a normal point position as he bowls and Elgar comes forward and he runs it off the face of the bat towards the gully 
position, goes past the field in the gully and cover point comes around, does the tidying up. And there's no run. 111 for one. Williams bowling from the Graham Gooch and he's bowling over the he's bowling wrong the wicket to the left-handed. There we go. He's got two slips of gully and he's got a short mid-wicket catch and also he's got a square leg. Hoping that Elgar would clip it in the air in that area. Williams is in now. Bowl to Elgar and he's forward. Plays it back along the pitch. Williams does the fielding. And there's no run. So we went out last night, boys, sent me for a little bit of something to eat. And I, I gave you a little test at dinner as to whether you could name the 11 <laughs> that was uh, that was in the team for your both your one day uh, international debut and your test match debut. That was your test last night, wasn't it? Yeah, I passed the test. Toppers, toppers didn't. You passed with flying <laughs> colours. He was useless. Williams in bowls and he's solidly behind this one. Elgar writes across his stumps and just gently plays it on the on side. You were, you, you were. I think you were better for the one day side, wasn't you? I think you didn't you struggle a little no, bit for the, some of the bowlers in the test team. No, no, oh, there was, the, 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 no just probably just one. I think. Um, okay. I mean, Topper's struggled with both. I mean, he couldn't even remember that his captain and stalwart Graham Gooch was he, playing. That's true. He had a stinker <laughs> with that, didn't he? I'm going to bring up the, t the, the, the team. Slips goes down, Williams bowls, and that one comes off the edge of the bat, keeps all along the ground. It stopped it for a slip. But Elgar was on the front foot. We'll just run off the edge of the bat, all along the ground to the first slip, and there's no run. Elgar takes a step down. The pitch, having a look at that area where the ball pitch, and now in discussion with with Cook, that one really didn't bounce. And Williams gets to the end of his mark, turns. It's medium fast, in. Ball, and Elga drives, and that's a good stop there at mid wicket. That probably had two written over it as he's. Clipping this one through mid wicket and a diving stop. Luke Sim on strike, he stays on 37. Luke Wells, it was a good stop, wasn't it? Yeah. The big lad, he's got a long way to get down, Luke Wells. Yes, he did well, and obviously, in these cold conditions, change of field. Square leg is now going up to deep square leg. As Williams, halfway through his run up in no. Ball to Elgar and Elgar's on the front foot and easiest one. There's a chance of a run up here if he hits the stumps and he missed. But that was a tight single. Elgar played it to the left of cover point. Call for the single and Cook ran in for all his life. The return came into the strikers and missed it. The 50 run partnership comes up between <laughs> Elgar and mm. Cook and at the same time the floodlights come on at the same time. Oh, so um, it's all happening. Everything happening here. At, at Chelmsford, but at the end of the over, Essex are 112 for one. It was a, it was a quick single throw coming in. It's hard to tell there whether or not if, if he was if he would have been in or not. A direct hit would have made it a rather tricky decision for the umpire to give, but uh, he missed. Yes, got your. So go on then. I hope Toppers is listening today yeah. because he. You might get it right this time. <laughs> this was your one-day international <laughs> debut. As uh, Bolson comes around the wicket, Elgar defends, and there's no run. This was at was at Edgbaston, wasn't it? Yeah. In uh, August 1980 against Australia. I thought you struggled with some. Uh, some I thought you struggled with, with Rob with Robin Jackman, didn't you? Didn't no, you? That, that was J Jackman was. I think with a, that was with a Test match, wasn't it? No, that was the was, was, that, was, that was the ODI Jackman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but Jack has played the Test match too. There's that Balderson forward again goes Elgar, takes a quick single, just dropped into extra cover. Through he goes for one, moves on to 39, 112 for 113 for one. So it was Gooch and Boycott <laughs> under the batting. Athy at three, Butcher at four, with a 52 on debut from just 38 deliveries and five fours, he came out smashing it. 
Well, it was set up before you. You've got to, you've got to see how many Gooch and Boycott got. Well, I say, okay, okay, you're very polite. Gooch got 108 and Boycott got 78 and Athy got 51. Yeah. So you had freedom to come out and give it a wallop. It's <laughs> Balderson in to Cook, who's defending. There's no room. Then you captain both of them. Oh, no, Gatting. Yeah. Gatting. Gatting next. Run out. Who ran him out? Uh, I don't think it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Gatting run out for two. Both of them. And then uh, David Burstow, Robin Jackman, John Embry, Chris Old, and Mike Hendry, who didn't bat. As England beat Australia by 47 runs. Clipped away by Sam Cook. Just through square leg. He turns and hustles back for a couple. And uh, comfortably gets back for two by the time the throw comes in. And he moves on to 20. It's 115 for one. So that was your one-day international debut, your test match debut. Um, again, you, you, were quite, you were good on this, but... Um, Topper struggled, didn't he? Big time. He struggled big time. So your, your, your test match team, Gooch and Boycott again, Gatting at three, Gower at four, Butcher on debut at five, and then Captain Bolton. And there's a Balderson playing a miss by Cook through to the keeper, no run. Peter Willey, David Bairstow, John Embry, Robin Jackman and Graham Dilley in that England side. But as we were saying last night, I looked at that West Indies side and oh my goodness. So they only needed four bowlers to bowl you out for 120. Because the bowlers were Roberts, Holding, Croft and Garner. <laughs> <laughs> not a bad, not a bad set. <laughs> they didn't need long, did they? <laughs> Final ball of the over. So 115 for one. It's Balderson in. And again, Cook just plays the ball away. Off his pads through square leg for a single. 116 for one, but shall leave you for an update. Yes, and... Uh, Sorry, being attacked here by a bumblebee, but Essex moves nicely along. Cook doing a very good job here. Um, not only was he night watchman, but he's now really starting to play well. He's moved on to <coughs> 21, and with Elgar, he's on 39. So, as the lights stay on here at Chelmsford. Lancashire fighting hard to try and get a wicket, not having it their way at all. As it's been a very good, good 50 run partnership by these two. And, mm. and uh, you're, <laughs> I guess the plan for the first thing is well, let's get rid of the night watchman and then start to work through, but putting him down in the first over of the morning is makes it more difficult yep. because since then the night watchman has played he's played um played very well and he's survived but he's now got a face williams who's going to go over the wicket and a very attacking field williams has got he's got three slips and a gully a backward point he's in now right arm over the wicket and bowled and cook his track on the pad is allowed to pull for a bw but the umpires having nothing to do with that probably just Going down the leg side, the ball was on the way into Cook. It was just struck on the pad and really given out out there by the umpire. He stays Cook on 21, Elgar 39, and it's pretty cloudy at the moment. Yeah, uh, it's just been for a while, but just had a little walk around just while while you and Scott were doing the duties. There was just a little spit of rain in the air every now and then. As Williams bowls, and this time he's steered into the gully region as comes gently forward. Bit of bounce, ball goes to gully. Feel it, there's no run. So, score remains on 116 for one and a six. Not having it their own way, they're really having to fight hard as Lancashire. They're trying to break this partnership. So look at the rest of the field, he's got a square leg mid on as Williams bowls to Cook and Cook's clipped this one through me wickets his runs here. It's racing up towards the boundary, hasn't got the legs to get there. And a valiant effort by the fielder, but the ball wins the battle. And Cook advances by four. He goes to 25, and really that was an excellent shot. The score now moves to 120, just 
pitched up delivery and he's clipped it through mid wicket and a long chase out to the mid wicket boundary but the ball wins the race yeah it was in the air that was always a shout of catch but you can't have fielders everywhere and just wide of the man well well wide of him really wasn't it wasn't it, it was catchable height but not a catchable chance williams in his eighth over he's halfway through it he's got none for 27. he's in now ball to cook and cook is beaten outside the off stump by good delivery he just shaped away from him played at it definitely ball goes through to hearst nice to take him but the important thing was there was no touch so score remains 120 and there we go he's at the non-strikers end he's been there a long time for his 39 but he wouldn't matter he would he wouldn't worry about that neither would essex they'd be quite happy if he can bat the whole day even slowly that would ensure that they find themselves in a a good position discussions going on between williams and he's just moving the square leg now into more of a mid-wicket position he's in now around the wicket and bowls and this one is oh. steered down to third man there's runs here the ball is coming down in front of our commentary position we'll have to wait and see has it got the legs to get there no it hasn't but in the meantime the batters will cross for three the return comes in so three more to cook cook goes to 28 and score moves to 123 for the loss of one yeah, more frustration for Lancashire. It's cold. There's a spit of rain in the air. They've put down the night watchman in the first hour. The lights are on. It's grey. It's overcast. And they are right under the cosh here. Only 23 runs ahead of Essex now. Yeah, very much so. And the night watchman doing the bulk of the scoring. The left-hander, Ed Elgar, comes on strike now. And if the field's set in, they've... There's two slips and a gully, a backward point as Williams coming around the wicket to Elgar and a bots is run up. Dead ball signaled by the umpires. Also a field change on the onside. The square leg goes up to deep square leg. And Williams goes back to his mark. He's bowling from the Graham Gooch end as the sun breaks through. So we've got sun, we've got cloud, we've got lights on as Williams past the umpire now, balls to Elgar and they'll go on to the back foot and punches to extra cover, can't beat the extra cover fielder the over is completed, he stays on 39 Dean Elgar and with him Cook is on 28 Essex, they're 123 for one just wonder how long it's going to take for Lancashire to turn to Nathan Lyon here, just 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 to try something different I mean, just we, <laughs> we were discussing yesterday we thought because of the conditions that we wouldn't see too much spin, but then there's some late order hitting from Lancashire. They put Simon Harmer on and it worked. And the catch was popped up at long on. And, and I wasn't saying that for any reason because I'd spied Nathan Lyon uh, making the move or anything like that. But, but yeah, finally Lancashire said, well, look, we've got to go to our overseas gun bowler and see whether Nathan Lyon can get anything happening here. And at the very least, remove the night watchman, Sam Cook, if, if nothing more than that. But the way Cook's going... He's certainly not going to be giving it away in any way, shape or form. Absolutely. And I think the first thing the FL has got to come to grips with is obviously with cold fingers. There's a finger spinner, so it's important really to be able to feel the ball and then also to find out if there's any spin um, in this pitch brilliant opportunity for these Essex members and spectators as well to see one of the world's top finger spinners in action as well just great to have him over here slightly more truncated period than we were hoping for but here he comes in now he's going to bowl right arm around to the right handed Sam Cook that's down the leg side actually just flicks the outside of Cook's pad as he shoulders arms to that drops out on the onside no run 123 for one blowing on his hands Nathan Lyon trying to get those fingers warmed up yes he's got to get the feel of that ball he's got the shades on though sunglasses are on as he's in and bowling once again and that's just worked behind square on the onside for no run by Cook very quick through the air Nathan Lyon as well again just rings the hand number 67 on his back shaven headed he's in now 
and bowling to Cook once more and Cook just back on his stumps place defensively out to the onside no run forward short leg leg slip and a regulation slip and in it short mid wicket as well as Lancashire but look for this breakthrough 123 for one just 23 runs behind Essex on first innings here's line in again bit more air on that one and Cook tickles it wide of the man at leg slip and that's running away to the long leg boundary should just about be hauled in it is one of those sliding stops that flicks it back and they save a couple of runs there they come through for two 125 for one yeah good piece of fielding had to chase hard ball gathered a lot of pace but Cook gets another two and goes to 30 so he's doing well Line in again. And Cook just plays defensively in front of his pad. And there's no run there. He's very watchful, very careful about it. There was a couple of flashing drives from Cook earlier, which he hit no more than fresh air. And obviously the edge that was put down at slip, but otherwise looked very solid. Taking the scoring opportunities when they've come as well. Here's Lyon then rounding off his first over. He's in. Big shout for LBW here against Cook. Lyon down on his knees, imploring the umpire to put his finger up. Uh, but it's met with a shake of the head, and it's met with no more than handing the Aussie his sweater at the end of that over and his cap. And Essex here are 125 for one. Yeah, good delivery there by Lyon. That one going straight on with the arm. But I think obviously the angle from around the wicket the umpire would have deducted that the ball was not coming back. Um, obviously no spin yet, so Cook gets the benefit of the doubt, if there is any doubt. There's obviously no doubt in the umpire's mind. He was very clear about his decision. Mm -hmm. So he's given it not out. 125 for one. And once again, Lancashire in a conference. And they've done a lot of that so far this morning, trying to really find the answer to breaking this partnership at the moment it's been very difficult to do because both players have played well this morning Cook had a bit of luck in being dropped but apart from that I think he's done a very good job as night watchman we'll have to wait now as Elgar is now the person in straight he's got two slips in the gully with him now to Elgar backward point and an extra cover he's round the wicket now and bowls, and this one is firmly driven by Elgar up to Whitish Medorn, and they will get a single. The turn comes into the keeper's end. Response by Cook. Elgar goes to 40. It's 126 for one. Just a little slow in setting off there, Sam Cook. Just wired, I think, that whether it was going to beat the man at short mid wicket, and he was probably a little bit guilty of ball watching and Elgar meantime was herring down to the other end but Cook with a long stretch was safely home at the end of all of that as well yeah he was in the end quite safe because the fielder had to move quite a lot to his left and then position himself to throw with the right hand so that little fraction of a second would have ensured that Cook was able to make his grounds now the onside field being reinforced this short mid wicket is coming in place so there's just three slips and backward point and a wide mid off. Williams coming over the wicket. No, to Cook. Bowls and Cooks. That's got to be close. Well. Uh, he's given not out. Cook has been whipping that through the arm side. He's struck on the pad. The ball ends up in the slip cordon. And um, lots of disappointment there. Let's wait and see. Can't really see too well. Well, I know, I, I know, there. I know they're keen for a wicket, but but the way the slips, the wicket keeper, and the bowler went up. I mean, the bowler was almost doing a a selly appeal, wasn't mm -hmm. he? He's was running through because he was he was almost sure that he pinned Sam Cook there, but yep. the umpire unmoved. Yep. So Cook's a wave as the sun comes out in all its glory. He's waiting for Williams now, and Williams in bowls, and he beats him outside the off stump, and uh, Cook just groping forward to that delivery goes down the pitch now and taps the general area where that ball was pitched but the result was that it went past the outside edge it's 126 for one 26 years of age Sam Cook will be 27 come August done such a good job since he came into this Essex side and now he's adding useful runs to his reputation as well Settles down now, slips go down as Williams now balls to Cook and he's trying to turn this one on the onside. Strikes the pad, goes up to 
just past the short leg position through the by through the coming in there for mid wicket so there's no run he stays cook on 30 elga on 40 and a six the sun is out quite nicely it's some blue skies over here to our right it's nice and warm at the moment once the sun is out you're in the prime position there. The sun's coming through right in, right into the position perfect. where you're seated, so it's perfect yeah. for you. Williams to Cook, and Cook's forward. That ball is just running off the face of the bat to the third slip position, all on the ground, and there is no run. So Essex would be very, very pleased with where things have gone this morning. Really, they have knuckled down. They've batted well, not too extravagant all that happened yesterday when Cushy was at the crease <laughs> that seems an age ago suddenly it doesn't it was it? A, a, a frantic 50 but it has allowed Essex also to play in this fashion field change square leg goes to deep square as Williams in and bowls to Cook and Cook is full oh my word Cook's looking to play that down the leg side and the ball goes past the upside edge two to the wicket keeper I'd like to see whether that ball actually moved or whether he was just playing down the wrong line. But it was an awkward position to get into. He was I, I, he was groping for it, wasn't he? <laughs> Squared up and the and the the face of the bat turned towards square leg. And, and in the end, I think he's just thankful he, he hasn't heard a, a nick and he hasn't heard the death rattle either. And the end of it, all that matters is that he's still there and Essex just 20 behind and Nathan Lyon to continue from this Sir Alistair Cook end. And he'll probably be a little bit happier now, Lyon with the sun out. Yeah, he'll well. feel a lot happier, not just for his body, but I think for his fingers, he would like to feel that, you know, it's important for spinners to get a good feel of the ball. If it's feeling smooth, then... Well, he's ready now. One slip and a forward short leg in as Lyon comes around the wicket to the left-handed Dean Elgar. A bit more air this time, a bit more flight in that from Lyon and defensively pushed out for no run. Yeah, nice I think, I think, Lyon, well. I think Lyon will enjoy this contest, you know, reputations on the line, Lyon and Elgar, so both of them will enjoy the contest. Nice dip on that as well to Elgar. Good flight, good bowling from Lyon as he's in again, bowling to the South African, and Lyon this time waits and tries to cut that one away, but only hits the man at point, and there'll be no run again. 126 for one. We're in the 31st over of this Essex innings, and the run rate's good. It's, it's just above four. And Lancashire barely got above two and a half yesterday when the conditions were really trying for the batters. Line very quickly into his delivery stride. That's slower and it spins and there's turn outside the off stump taken by Hurst, who stood up with the helmet on, but there's no touch from Elgar. Good bowling again. Yeah, lovely piece of bowling. That's why he's the best around at the moment. And he has been for a while. Yeah, best finger spinner in the business. Nathan Lyon, off spinner. In again, having beaten Elgar. That's slightly shorter, slightly quicker. And Elgar back on his stumps, plays defensively for no run, back to the bowler. Working vigorously on the ball is Lyon as well. On his drying it and wiping it on the front of his shirt. Very quick in his approach. In again, and Elgar works that one in front of square on the onside, but won't pick anything up there. One more ball to come of this over, and there's no run once again. 126 for one. 20 runs behind Essex. And Lyon shakes his head as he receives the ball from the man at mid-on. And then we very quickly past the umpire. And that's slower, and there's more flight on that one. And it is just flicked very gently and very precisely away by Elgar for four runs in front of square on the onside. And Essex moved to 130 for one. And just the minimum amount of fuss with that shot from Elgar, and he goes to 44. Yeah, that's a lovely shot. Just giving a little bit more air, but the line was the key there. Pitching the wrong leg stump and Elgar just clipped it beautifully past square leg and out to the boundary. It got to the boundary very quickly indeed. So he goes to 44. And obviously score most of 130 for one and change of bowling. No, we're still Williams. He's taking that sweater off. 
Yeah, it is, yeah. Just, I, was, yeah. I was just checking that as well, but yeah. it looked like a change, didn't it? But yeah, yeah when Williams yeah. takes the sweater off, we can see the big number 30 on his back. Yeah, yeah. So he'll both the cook. He's got two slips and a gully in place, and very short and straightish mid wicket, looking for, clip, for Cook to clip. Now he's changed the field. Now he's put him a little bit square, just waiting for Cook to clip that ball on the onside in the air as Williams bowls and Cook solidly forward. And the ball goes up to a wideish mid on position and there's no run. Pitched up delivery and cook onto the front foot. Sun now beating down and players, I'm sure they'll enjoy that. So will the group in the commentary box. Yes, thank you very much. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we have had it in here. I guess the temperature in here has probably been cooler than it has been outside as this delivery is squaring it up. But he gets behind it and goes up to backward point, no run. And I guess if you're Lancashire, Roland, if you're if you've been in situations like this during your career, I guess the, the message is yes, we put the night watchman down, and yes, Essex are in a strong position, but if we can just get one, if we can just get one. Yeah, it's um it's important to keep working hard. You've got to believe that you still can pick up a wicket. Obviously they would like to pick up Dean Elgar because he is the quality player in the team as Williams bowls and Cook will have nothing to do with this one. It's pitching wide outside the off stump and it goes through to wicket keeper Hurst and there's no run. Warwickshire have just lost a wicket but they're 401 for six <laughs> against Hampshire down at the Utilita Bowl. So they're continuing to go merrily along. Elsewhere in Division 1, I can tell you Kent 155 for four against Surrey. Uh, Somerset, 167 for three against Nottinghamshire, so only trailing by 26 runs now. And Worcestershire in trouble, 135 for seven, still 109 runs behind Durham on first innings. Yep, that's a real problem. Slip goes down, and Williams in. Bow to Cook goes forward and try to perhaps biff draw the bat, but it comes off the face of the bat, runs down towards the third slip position. Gully dives to make the stop. Division 2, Leicestershire 237 for 3 against Derbyshire. Uh, Middlesex leading Yorkshire now by a couple of runs at 161 for 7 on first innings. Glamorgan 271 for 9 against Northamptonshire and Gloucestershire have been bowled out, 417 all out against Sussex. Williams on the ground boot in, bowls and that's solidly defended there by Cook who's looking very comf comfortable at the moment. Mm. No worries at all. He's just playing, taking it easy. He's not going after the bowling. Just psst. looks as if he wants to be there for a while as well. He's 30 not out. He's he's been there for 73 deliveries, so he's done his job. Yeah. It's 130 for one. One ball remaining in over number 32. Williams currently none for 31 as he's in now. Bowls and Cook. Gets that one off the bottom of the bat. Almost played on, but it's the pads go onto the offside. End of the over by Williams. That probably will be his last over as well, I would imagine. He's had a good spell this morning, but he's currently bought 10 overs now for 31. At the end of the over, the 32nd of the innings, Essex are 130 for one. So trailing by just 16 runs. 32 overs of this Essex innings gone now as well, and they've played nice and steadily. This morning, not look to do anything outlandish, not look to get after the bowling in any way, shape or form. Just played some good, nice, normal, solid cricket and it's, it's getting them well ahead in the game. Well, no, not ahead on runs, but certainly they're in the box seat in the game. Nathan Lyon to continue from this uh, Alistair Cook end, just making a slight adjustment in his field, sending mid on slightly wider but he's very quickly into his delivery stride now. Dean Elgar, the man on strike. Lyon comes in and Elgar just pushes defensively into the onside and there's no run. Lyon has his hand in the air, felt that maybe that ball had a chance, but nothing doing, 130 for one. His line just flicks his hand out, his right hand out with the ball in his hand as he makes his approach in now. And Elgar works that one into the onside, calls Cook through for a very quick single and a nicely judged single as well. The man at short mid wicket, slightly on his heels, 131 for one. 
Yeah, excellent cricket there by Elgar, just nudging the ball into the onside. But thought the fielder could have done a bit better there. He was a bit slow in reacting. Had he moved a bit quicker, Cook could have been in a bit of trouble. So changing the field brings the right-handed Cook down onto strike. So they enforce the men around the bat as Lyon just pushes up one through a bit quicker. Elgar gets halfway down the pitch, but Cook's watching where the ball's gone. There wasn't a run there anyway. And just put a forward short leg in, a leg slip and a regulation slip for Cook. So just the extra man around the bat as Lyon is ready once again. And he's in to Cook. A bit more flight with that one and Cook plays defensively in front of that front pad. And there's no run. 131 for one. As Lyon again just works a bit more on the ball, getting moisture off it so he can get as much grip as possible, as much purchase as possible. Cook comes down the wicket this time on the walk but plays defensively out to the offside for no run. Doesn't want to be dictated to here by Lyon, doesn't want to get pinned back and allow Lyon just to bowl at him. Lyon inspects the ball, somewhat suspiciously looking at it. As Lancashire strive for the first breakthrough of the day. Quicker from Lyon, and it goes right through Cook, taken by Hurst, but there's no touch and there's no run. Yeah, excellent delivery, that last one. Gathered pace off the pitch, went on with the arm. And Cook looking for a little bit of turn that wasn't there. Ball just going past the outside edge, so he survives. Still 131 for a one, so it's been a good session so far for Essex. They have done two things, they have survived any attempts to pick up a wicket, and yes, the change will come in from the Graham Gucci end. Yeah, Lyon has gone up to that far end as well to have a chat, but no, it looks like Williams is going to continue. Yeah, there was a long, long conversation there before the start of this over. Lyon was in conversation at the far end with, with Bahannon, and Williams was slow in coming to take his sweater off, but he's wearily made his way to his bowling mark at the far end. Probably acts for one more. He's got his chance now, but he's going to come over the wicket to Elgar. In, bowls. Elgar drives through the offside. That should go up towards the boundary. There's a long chase there. The ball wins the race. And that's the problem Williams have got with no mid-off in place that anything pitched up. Um, he can concede down the ground. And Elgar, player of his quality, he's not going to miss out on that type of delivery. Drives it quite firmly on the on the offside of the pitch and down to the boundary for four. So, yeah. with that. Yeah, the chase yeah. from Nathan Lyon, but he had to come to a skidding halt before he headed into the advertising hoardings of the ball, won the race. But a lovely shot from Dean Elgar. Now moves on to 49, not out. Yeah, just one shot of what would be a deserving half century. As Williams is in, no balls, and this is it. As he clips this one through mid wicket, should get at least two here. The mid on fielder has to chase out towards the boundary gets to it now and the return comes back to Williams but in the meantime Dean Elgar has crossed for two runs brings up his half century and he gets a round of applause here from the Essex supporters they appreciate this innings and um, they certainly would like him to go on for a lot longer yeah three games now for Dean Elgar in Essex colours got an 80 odd in his first knock against Nottinghamshire a century against Kent last week and a half century now here against Lancashire with what he hopes will be power to add as well yep. and, um, the top player as the deep square leg has been brought in 15 yards as He's in now, Williams bowls to Elgar, and Elgar's running this one down to third man. That should go for another boundary. The chase is on. I don't think the fielder is gaining any ground on that ball down to third man, and he concedes another boundary, Williams. Perhaps one over too many. And that one was just dabbed away by Dean Elgar, showing a good appreciation for where the fielders are, and just worked that down to third man for four. So. 
And he's played that a couple of times in this innings now. And it's a, it's a controlled dab as well, isn't it? He's right over it. He's, he's making sure he's above it, so it's not going to give an opportunity, even a sharp chance to those slips. And he's find, found the gap on a couple of occasions now for boundaries down to the unguarded deep third boundary. Yep, he goes to 55. Williams goes now around the wicket now and bowls. And this one, Elgar allows to go through outside the off stump. Just bunks once before reaching the wicketkeeper hearse, but no damage done. Elgar comes up to the middle of the pitch, just taps the area. That ball perhaps would have landed in. So he stays on 55, Cook on 30. And just five runs separate these two teams right now. And Essex really are in control of the game. As Gene Elgar, as you said, Third consecutive game that he's gone past 50. Williams bowls now, and there goes forward. He's going to get runs here, at least two. He's played this one gently out through the offside, but the ball is raced off the bat, out to the cover boundary, and in the meantime, they're crossed for two. So he now goes to 57. The score goes to 143. It's three runs now. That was just a gentle push. Difficult to see at the moment, he says, famous last words, but difficult to see at the moment how Lancashire are going to get a wicket because the, the pitch is playing extremely well and these two batters are very well set, he well, says. Williams is trying to change that now. He bowls to Elgar. Short, a lot of extra effort. Tumbles over and Elgar allows a short wall to go through to the keeper. That should be the end of Williams' spell. Um, he's had a, a good run in. Yeah. Perhaps one over too many that over went for 11. And, uh, sorry, he's about 11 overs. So he's about 12. He came off mm -hmm. that over. So very expensive over in the context of when the run rate is on 4.21. Then you can see 12. That makes it very, very difficult for the captain. So you, you, I would imagine that he will take a break and you'll get one of the other medium paces to complete to the lunch and interval. Yeah, we've got about 40 minutes to go until the lunch break here. Nathan Lyon is in and bowling to the night watchman, Sam Cook. And Cook just plays defensively back down the pitch. And Lyon can do the fielding himself. Just says to the man at mid-off, don't worry, I can pick that one up. Save your legs. Cook, who is 30 not out from 79 deliveries and continues to blunt this Lancashire attack at the moment. As Lyon is in around the wicket, and Cook just, again, out to the offside, and there is no run once more. Dean Elgar just goes down, and there's a little look at the pitch, just prods down something that he's spotted, eagle-eyed. Cook goes for a little wander out to the leg side, but is now ready as he takes his guard once again. Lyon in. Cook, just from the crease, plays defensively back to the bowler. 143 for one, Essex trail by three. And uh, one of the Lancashire fielders has his trousers down at the moment. That was Josh Bahannon, and he's revealed that he's got another pair of trousers on underneath to keep himself warm. Lion in. Cook comes down the wicket and works that one nicely in front of square on the onside. And they'll just come through for a single. The score goes up to 144 for one. But Hannon continues to adjust his trousers and his clothing. It's like he's got like a pair of, I don't know if they're full length trousers, whether they're long johns, the old long johns that he's got on to keep himself warm. Well, it doesn't surprise you, it's been bitterly, bitterly cold the last couple of days, so the players really need to wrap up and wrap up well. There's no sort of a camouflage sort of um, motif to them as well, as Lyon is in to the left-handed Elgar, just rides that one, break of the wrists and works it into the offside, just behind square for no run, 144 for one. And it's Bahan and he has the ball in his hands at the moment. Gives it a vigorous rub on the front of that Lancashire shirt. Sun is out, but the flags are being buffeted by strongest breeze here at Chelmsford. As Lyon is in again, Elgar watches that one carefully and whips it away through the onside. There's a sprawling diving stop there, and they'll come back for a couple of runs. Although the throw comes in now, but Elgar is safely home. Good piece of fielding, that actually. It was a slight 
deliberation about the second run, but in the end they've got home and the scores are level, 146 for one at the end of that Nathan Lyon over. Yeah, excellent piece of fielding, just whipped away there, wide of the mid on field up to his left. He had a lot of work to do, he did it well and still had the presence of mind to get to feet and quite a powerful return to the keeper. Elgar had to sp sprint to get home, but he got home safely. Tom Bruce with the fielding. 146 for one, so. Scores are level and we will have that change of bowling. You said it looked like that would probably be the end of Will Williams and indeed it is. And it's, uh, it's Jack Blatherwick who's going to come on to bowl from the Graham Gooch end. Yeah, really, I think Williams just had one too many. He did bowl a lot of effort, lots of effort this morning and that one over really has cost the team 12 runs. And So Jack Blatherwick. He hasn't had a, the best start um, yesterday, he bowled two overs and was pretty expensive. He went for 22 off his two. Yes, that was during the, the Cushy chaos, wasn't yeah, it, was during that spell? Yep, so he's going to bowl with two slips and a gully. He's bowling right arm over the wicket to Cook, who is on 31. <coughs> he's got also a backward point to support him, an extra cover and a mid-off on the offside as... Blatherwick's in on bowls. Oh, and that's a good short pitch delivery, banged into the turf. And um, stood up, hit the shoulder of the bat. That could have gone anywhere. But it landed safely off on the offside. Cook surprised him a little with the pace and bounce. So good start for Blatherwick. Yeah, that did, did surprise Sam Cook, didn't it? Yeah, I thought yesterday, even though Blatherwick was quite expensive, he got a couple of balls to, to come through at a decent pace. So... I guess he's running slightly downhill as well. He's bowling from the Graham Gooch end. He's got a deep square leg in place as well as fine leg and a bit off. Blatherick in now bowls and he goes after a wide one. Cook feet not going anywhere, just all back. Unfortunately for him, he missed it. Went through to the keeper. He stays on 31. It's 146 for one. Yeah, he hit the ground with a bat, didn't he, which had the... A couple of the slips interested momentarily there. Glenn Speller, Roland Butcher, Scott Reid and Kevin Howells with you on Five Live Sports Extra, BBC Essex, BBC Radio Lancashire, via the BBC Sport website and app as well. Scores are level here, Essex 146 for one after bowling out Lancashire for 146 yesterday. And Blatherick running towards us in now and bowls and that's shaping away upside the off stump but starting too wide and Cook just watches it carefully as Hurst collects behind the stumps and there is no addition to the total. The lights are now off so there's a belief that, that we're going to have good weather for some time. So the fly lights have been turned off as Brother Rick Bowling from the Graham Gooch Inn is quite a long run up. He's halfway through his run-up now, approaches the umpire and bowls. And Williams fends outside the off stump of the shortest delivery. Again, doesn't get a touch. It goes through to the keeper. Frustration there for Blatherick and for the batsman because he felt perhaps he should have scored off that one as well. But luckily, he didn't get an edge. Yeah, he didn't go anywhere with his feet there, did he, Sam Cook? And I think there's a bit of frustration there as well. Look, look I've worked so hard here. I've had one life already, but I've worked so hard to get myself to this situation. I don't want to give it away now. And wouldn't it be great if Essex, from their point of view, could go through without losing a wicket this morning? Yes, as Blatherwick's got other thoughts now in and bowls. And that's a nice shot worked into the onside. He's only going to get a single as <laughs> Medon has to move around to his right. But he gets that single, brings... Dean Elgar on straight, Elgar is on 59 and has been very solid, very composed as you would expect, a player of his quality who has done it at the highest level um, consistently, but an excellent sign in for Essex, yes, expected to do a similar job to one Alan Border who was here many years ago. Oh, great days, great days. Yeah. Um, similar type of player, very gutsy. 
as Lathrick goes around the wicket now to Elgar, bowls and he's struck on the pad trying to turn that on the onside but no harm done, the ball goes out on the leg side, the keeper comes out, completes the over, that's the final delivery of Blathwick's over, so a much better start, he's got none for 23, just that one run coming off the over at the end of it, Essex have just taken the lead, it's 147 for one, having dismissed Lancashire for 146. Yeah, I'm sure you'll have had some battles with Essex and Alan Border down the years when he was here. I mean, Mark War, another great yeah, Australian batter yes. that, that Essex had here. You, you got, we were talking about this during the Kent game as well. You know, Aravinda de Silva at, at Kent as well came, came over. The great days of the of the over the top 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 overseas players like Nathan Lyon here for Lancashire coming over and playing county cricket. Yeah, of course. I mean, um, Alan Border was a terrific player. I mean, and here is Nathan Lyon, his fellow Australian. In and bowling to Cook, just pushes back to the bowler for no run. You know, if, if ever there was a crisis, Border was the man. Mm. Gritty, nuggety sort of player, really talented as well, led Australia so well for those years too. And here's Lyon. It's a relatively long approach that he has as he's into Cook. A bit more flight to that one, and Cook drives, but it was stopped on the edge of the square by the man at mid off who is Keaton Jennings, and there's no run. Cook getting, getting that front foot right out there on the drive. Not picking up anything for his efforts, though. He's lying again, and this time Cook just props forward defensively for no run. 147 for one, so lead by one run. With nine first innings wickets in hand. Tom Wesley, the Essex skipper, the next man in. Dewin. There's, here is Lyon once again. Bowling to Cook, who goes back and just forces back up to Lyon. We have a little change at the end of this over. Ronan's going to take a break after his long, long stint. Get his, get his legs moving again. We go for a walk or a stroll. And that's what Lyon's going for a stroll at the moment. Let's have a word with Keaton Jennings at mid-off. A little chat there, a little exchange of views. Lyon with... None for ten, with two balls to go of his fifth over. Leg slip in. And Cook is struck on the pad. There's an LBW shout from the man at slip, but nothing from Lyon. Dribbles out on the offside and they don't take a run for that. Yeah, nicely flighty delivery. Just wondered why he's bowling around the wicket to the right-hander. Maybe just looking for that ball to go straight on. Well, he's finishing up his fifth over now. And his line, he's into Cook, and Cook on the drive will pick up four runs here as well. Just slightly overpitched from Nathan Lyon. That brings up the 150 for Essex, 151 for one, and Cook goes to 36. Yeah, well played, Cook. Slightly overpitched and driven along the ground through extra cover. And um, he's doing an excellent job, Cook, here for his team. The 150 comes up in 154 minutes, and... This partnership now is a pretty good one. Lead is a five. I will make way for Scott. And um, a six as they look to go to lunch in a very good position. Thank you, Roland, which will rejoin us after the lunch break. Lunch is due at ten past one, incidentally. As they just try to extend and get back some of the time that we lost yesterday. Really good stint from Butch. He gets a slap on the back from Scott Reed as he makes his way off. Done a few long stints down his career as well with bat in hand. But Essex here, 151 for one, so they're leading by five runs. Welcome back, Scott, for the there closing. What, uh, just, uh, just under half an hour before the lunch break here. Oh, yeah, it's ten past one, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, tough morning session, this, isn't it, for Lancashire? A bit tough game so far. Jack Blatherwick, can he rustle up a bit of hope before lunch? He bowls to Elgar, who leaves. And that's gone through to uh, Matty Hurst, the keeper, and there is um, no run. It's tough going for the bowlers because it, it hasn't done too much. And, yeah, to keep referring back, they, they put down Sam Cook this morning in the first over. But other than that, mm. not a lot happening, if we're honest. No, no, it, yeah, it, it, it did a little bit in that first kind of half an hour. So you say there was a couple of play, plays misses and a drop from uh, Bell dropping Sam Cook, but... It's a stark contrast to what we saw through 
uh, the course of, uh, of yesterday. But they're, they're plugging away. There's uh, Blathwick around the wicket to, to Elgar, goes back, cuts the ball. And that picked up cleanly by George Bolders. And it's, again, it's that awkward position where there's four pitches which have, have been used as kind of the practice pitches, and it's taken a pretty horrible bobble off one mm. of them. Just deceiving Balderson. So Elgar gets a pretty comfortable single. He's battered with a great deal of authority, hasn't he? Last night and again this morning, he's looked absolutely untroubled, really. Unflustered. His defence has been outstanding. He's left really well. The ball did move a bit this morning and he, he left well to Bailey, who got the ball just to shape away from him quite a bit from around the wicket in that first kind of half an hour, 40 minutes this morning. You wouldn't say Lancashire... Uh, are getting desperate in, in any way, shape or form. But it is noticeable now that the conversations uh, before the bowler delivers the ball are, are slightly longer now. The field placings are taking slightly longer, particularly when they've got the night watchman, Sam Cook, on strike as well. There's a, a just feeling that we, we need something before lunch here. Yeah, Cook back on strike. There is a short leg, four short leg in place, two slips in the gully, point mid-off. In a wide middle on the deep square leg. Blatherwick bowls over the wicket to Cook. He's gone for a short ball. He tumbles over and he's followed through as well. And uh, into the annoyance of Blatherwick, I'm sure, Cook just kind of just dropped his hands and he just leant backwards. And uh, through it went to the keeper, Matty Hurst, and there's no run. Just looking at the way Blatherwick fell there, where the umpire just, just pointed to, to his captain and just, just had a little word with Blatherwick on the way past, that he was where he fell and where his follow-through was. Might have been a little bit too close to the line of the stumps for comfort. But Williams fell over a couple of times as well in his delivery stride at that end. 1-5-2 one, for one. Blatherwick balls again, nudged away by Cook through mid-wicket to the left of Bell, who's at forward short leg, picked up by Nathan Lyon, who comes across from mid on. <coughs> Single there for, for Cook. He moves on to 37. It's 153 for one, with um, about uh, 20 minutes or so remaining of this uh, morning session. Been a good one for Essex. Wicketless so far for Lancashire. And they've, they've pushed in front now, lead by seven runs. Elgar's anchored the innings nicely so far. Looks like he wants to bat all day. Blatherwick balls to Elgar, drives to uh, Lyon at mid-off, and there is uh, no runner. Reminder for you on Five Sports Extra that um, the, the afternoon session in, in this game, if you want to follow it, you need to head to the BBC Sport website and app, which is where you'll find ball-by-ball uh, -ball commentary of every county championship match. BBC Sport website and app for that. Sports Extra listeners, got some rugby union for you from 2 o'clock, England against Ireland in the women's Six Nations. That's from 2 on Sports Extra. Blatherwick to, uh, to Elgar, mm. short and pulled. And uh, it might be four. There's an awful lot of ground for Bahannon to make up, but he can't get to it. And he has slapped that away off the back foot through mid-wicket for four. And Elgar moves on to 64, and the score now moves on to 157 for one, and the lead is 11. And Dean Elgar doing what I've noticed he does quite a lot during his innings, and, and the fact is he has had now three long innings for Essex in, in the three matches. Change of gloves, does that quite a lot during his innings, and a drink coming on as well for he and Sam Cook. And unlike the Lancashire 12th man earlier, who looked like he was maybe running an expedition to the Arctic. The, the Essex 12th man, or member of the coaching staff, he's got a shorter jacket on and a towel wrapped around his neck as well. But yeah, change of gloves there for Dean Elgar. And these two have now added 95 runs for this second wicket. And Cook is ready. Elgar not quite ready. And Nathan Lyon's going to continue from this uh, Alistair Cook end. And... Well, Bahannon again is adjusting his apparel and he, I don't know whether he's sponsored by the people who, who, who he's got his long johns on for, but um, we've had a good look at those a couple of times now. Here's Lyon into Cook and Cook just watches that one go past the off stump and there is, there is no run. Sort of got a camouflage sort of motif, very whatever, fancy, whatever, whatever they? they are he's got yeah. on underneath there. But we, we've, had a, we've had a good look a couple of times this morning and I'm not too sure how many looks we need to be honest with you. 
Yes, here's Lyon with a forward short leg in and a slip in. The leg slip's been taken out. Lots of flight on that one. And Cook just pushes very carefully and consciously out for no run. What we saw last week in Southampton on a, on a flat pitch with a, an old cooker of ball was Lyon using all his skill to try and, try and create pressure and try and create chances. It, the pitch wasn't really turning for him. And he's in and bowling to Cook once again. Cook on the drive, hits that same man at extra cover for no run. He's got a bit more of a seam to grip with this ball rather than he had with the Kookaburra last week. It's a great exhibition of kind of guile and, and, and skill. He was just altering subtly kind of his pace, his length, his line. Just trying to find a way to, to get a breakthrough on a pretty flat pitch. Cook defensively solidly out to the offside for no run. Once again, 157 for one. Two more balls to come of this, the 39th over. Tom Press batted really well against him last week for Hampshire. Got 80-odd young batter for, for Hampshire, and he said how much he was absolutely loved the challenge of facing Nathan Lyon last week. Well, Sam Cook's being challenged by him once again, and again, Cook is very solidly forward for no run again. Hurst comes galloping out from behind the stumps. Get a little bit of movement, a little bit of warmth as he picks the ball up for Lyon again, studying the ball, thinking, how am I going to get a breakthrough? How am I going to get my side into this game? Final ball of this over then. Lyon is in and Cook waits and back on his stumps. Works that one out to the offside behind square and there is uh, no run. A maiden over from Nathan Lyon. None from 14 from his six overs so far in Essex, a 157 4 1, with about 20 minutes still to go of this morning session. It's a nice little piece on the BBC Sport website, the, the live text commentary feed. Shootout for the night watchman they've put on there. It, and it says it often, it's often a thankless role in the dressing room to throw the pads on late in the day and come out as a night watchman. But we're having some super cameos this morning. So there's three night watchmen who are still going George Gartlett for, sorry, George Garrett for Kent, who's 33 not out. You see Sam Cook here, who's 37 not out, and Josh Davy for Somerset, who's 42 not out. So it's looks like a mo morning for the night watchman, really. Garrett Cook and Davy for Kent Essex and Somerset are all um, batting on through the through the morning session, frustrating their opponents. There's a Blatherwick from around the wicket to uh, Elgar. It's uh, full and wide of off stump and through to Hurst, and there's no run. There's just so much time left in the game, isn't there? That, and Lancashire will, will be well aware of that, and the Essex bat is well aware of that. You don't have to go out and do anything silly whatsoever. So much time in the game, just play normal cricket. The run rate a shade over four, so everything at the moment is rosy in the Essex garden. A couple of wickets might yeah. change that. Yeah, Lancashire desperately need a couple too. I'm trying to prize one out before lunch. Blatherwick from the Graham Gooch end of the ground. He's a big, strong lad, Blatherwick. He comes running in with plenty of heart and, and commitment. He's around the wicket and bowling. Elgar looks to drive. The ball squirts away through backward point for a single. Takes him on to 65, one five, eight for one. Well, he's, he's looking like the immovable object he did against Kent last week is, is Elgar, and he did for much of his first innings against Nottinghamshire as as well he's he's leading from the front he's you know obviously a big signing for Essex big signing at the top of the order he's going to settle into life here in the county for the next three summers so he's doing everything he can to ingratiate himself to the Essex members and his teammates and doing exactly what they will have hoped for when they got his signature on the dotted line yeah it's a good start isn't it 80 in a century and now a 65 in his first three games that's uh, nicely played by Cook actually it's a rising ball which he gets up onto his toes and steers the ball away through mid-wicket and comes back for a couple. Sam Cook's highest first-class score. He goes past the 38 that he'd previously made. He goes on to 39 with that brace of runs and he's, he's smelling possibly, possibly <laughs> a first-half century. Well, that was a good shot. I mean, Blatherwick, uh, he was controlled. Blatherwick was trying to get the ball up didn't really get up as much as he was hoping for but it was in and around that rib cage he's got the short leg in place and he's had time and composure just to get up onto his toes and guide the ball down to the ground through mid wicket for, for, for a couple another short ball a bit of extra zip on that from Blatherwick and this time it does have Sam Cook ducking under it and he didn't look either when he ducked under that he turned turned his head away from it and it, I'm sure it got up exactly as high as he was <laughs> expecting but fortunately he got down lower than maybe he was expecting to so managed to avoid that 
mentioned these night watchmen that are still going on in, in the different games around the country. Just have a little look at some of the scores in um, the other the other games. Uh, everyone's playing. There's been no interruptions today. The weather has been on its best behaviour as Blatherwick's in to Cook. It's down the leg side. Good take by Hurst. And there's no run. So elsewhere in Division 1, um, Hampshire against Warwickshire at the Utility Bowl. Warwickshire are 424 for six. In, the, in fact, they've just lost their seventh wicket, actually, as I say that. 424 for seven now. In the game where Alex Davis got 149 for the Bears. Kent are 184 for four against Surrey. With, uh, Joe Denley on 32. And I mentioned the night watchman... Uh, George Garrett still going, he's 40 not out. Blatherwick to Cook, dabbed away in front of Square on the offside, jogs through for one, moves on to 40 now. And that first 50 is within 10 runs for him. 161 for one. Easy new territory <laughs> is Sam Cook. I'm sure there'll be a punch of gloves at the end of that over between he and Dean Elgar, and indeed there is, as Essex is strike bowler is proving more than handy with the bat as well Kent have just lost Joe Denley he's gone for 32 and uh, 181 for five is the score there you're mentioning George Garrett and the night watchman doing a good job for Kent but Denley's gone at the other end now Somerset 187 for four their trail Nottinghamshire by six runs not all out for 193 and the other division one game Worcestershire against Durham at Kidderminster and uh, some of the supporters at Kidderminster have been enjoying a, uh, watching Jason hold the bat, hitting two fours and a six mm. for his 18. But Worcestershire 161 for nine. And they trailed Durham by 83 runs. Durham all out for uh, 244. Tom Bailey returning from this uh, Alistair Cook end. He took the long sleeve sweater on, but he's still got the, the short sleeve one on over his short sleeved Lancashire shirt. And so Nathan Lyons' spell was a short one. And Tom Bailey returns. He opened the bowling from this end. As the cloud just moves in a bit more, but there's plenty of blue sky away to our right-hand side. I think we'll be OK. Yay. 15 minutes to go until the break. Scheduled break, that is. Just two slips in for Bailey now. As he walks into his start of his run-up, he's in and bowling to Cook. And Cook on the drive gets nothing on that. And it goes through to Hurst for no run, 161 for one. The lead is 15 runs. Still 76 minimum overs remaining in the day. A little late finish yesterday. But we got through the overs after they've been adjusted due to a couple of breaks. We got through it. It was the best part of the day, wasn't it, the evening session yep. yesterday? As Bailey very deliberately puts that ball into his right hand. Elbows pointing outwards as he comes in and bowls to Cook. And Cook dabs that one down. But unlike Dean Elgar, doesn't get the four runs that he was hoping for. As there's a tumbling stop by the man in the gully and there's no run. Yeah, George uh, Bell. That's a gully there for Lancashire. The two slip fielders are Keaton Jennings and Tom Bruce. Luke Wells just at a uh, backward point. Will Williams at, at cover. Josh Bannon's at mid-off. Nathan Lyon with his hands behind his back. He had a six-over spell for 14 runs as at mid-on. With uh, Jack Blatherwick at mid-wicket and George Balderson at fine leg. In fact, they might just change us around a little mm. bit here. Yeah, Cook was ready, but yeah, they're going to take the man out of extra cover. Put him in a catching position. Possibly a fourth slip here. And then move the man from mid-wicket out to extra cover. New role this actually watching. I mean, it's Josh Bannon, who's the vice captain there, chatting to to Tom Bailey just to change things around a little bit. Here is Bailey into the right-handed Cook, and Cook fends at that one and will pick up four runs as well, as it beats the man at backward point. Just goes through that sort of gully backward point area, and another boundary for Sam Cook accrues. He goes to 44, and the score to 165 for one, and that is the 100 stand as mm. well between these pair. Well, it's, uh, it's great batting by these two. Last night and this morning, it's absolutely dream kind of first couple of hours, isn't it, for Essex? I mean, Cook's got a great chance here of getting to mm -hmm. 50. Yeah, he's worked hard to get there, to get this far. 44 from 108 deliveries. 
Let's see what happens with the 109th, which you'll now receive from Tom Bailey. On the drive, and it's put down. Sharp chance away to his right for George Bell. And for the second time this morning, he has dropped the night watchman, Sam Cook, who gets a second life, and it's 165 for one. Well, if you don't get 50 now, Sam Cook, you're never going to get it. You've been put down twice. Uh, same field up. It almost is identical kind of mm. situation. Just wonder if that was slight, maybe slightly easier, maybe. He would have been expecting to have taken that one. And then Cook, as if to reinforce the fact that he's not bothered, meets that with a full face of the bat and defensively pushes up to mid-off for no run. The frustration for Lancashire continues. Fill your boots if you're Sam Cook. You've got, to, you've got to make the most of this. You might not get a chance to get 50 too many times. And he's been put down twice. And you're right, uh, Glenn, I think um, I agree with you. I think that is a, a chance that, that Bell would uh, back himself, kind of nine times out of ten to take. Bailey and Cook tries to flick that one around the corner. It's come off the thigh pad and they'll take a leg by. That's the end of the over. And Essex are 166 for one. And George Bell has dropped Sam Cook twice. I'm always very reticent to say putting down simple chances or easy chances, but you know these guys, they work so hard on it, they back themselves and expect themselves to take the catches. They do. They've uh, given two chances to Sam Cook in Division 2. Um, as we approach lunch around the different grounds, uh, Leicestershire 293 for three. They're at Derbyshire this week. Uh, Yorkshire at Middlesex. If you missed it yesterday, Joe Root uh, out for five and Harry Brook for three. Yorkshire 190, 159 all out. And in reply, Middlesex are 195 for eight. So they lead by 36 runs. Northamptonshire against Glamorgan. Uh, Glamorgan 271 all out. Northamptonshire in reply, 24 for one. And Sussex have started their first innings because Gloucestershire are all out for 417. And Sussex are 15 for one in reply. Nathan Lyon is going to come on from the Graham Gooch end, Scott. So just switching it around, see whether he can get any life out of the pitch from that far end. Regulation slip in, leg slip and a forward short leg. Well, here he comes with his sunglasses on from around the wicket and balls to Cook plays forward in defence and uh, there is no run the sunrises have bowled the Western Storm out for 114 mm. and Thunder a 147 for 8 in their match against the Northern Diamonds and it's Lyon to, uh, to Cook played off the back foot and there is uh, no run and the Rachel Hay Flint Trophy, these games are starting this weekend. Cook didn't play against Kent, uh, but six not out and 29 against Nottinghamshire. Lyon to Cook, down the pitch he comes, plays it back to the, the Aussie, who feels off his own bowling, and then picks up and kind of shapes to throw down the stumps. Cook quickly turns and gets back in. So 35 runs already this season before before today and back that up with obviously 10 wickets in that game against Nottinghamshire as well. So he's having a good start. Three around the battle, crouching down as Cook gets forward to line and drives through the vacant mid-off region and comes back for two. I might even think of a third here. No, just settles for two. He's edging slowly towards a half century, Sam Cook. 46 not out. He's within... He's in with a, a cover drive away from 50. It's 168 for one. Essex lead by 22. I wonder if the pulse has just raised <laughs> slightly on Sam Cook. Lion for Lancashire from around the wicket. Balls, Cook forward and defends calmly enough. Off the front foot, just leaning into it. The ball bounces up towards the Lancashire captain, Keaton Jennings, who comes up from mid-off. And there is no run. One ball left of the over for, for Nathan Lyon. Having a, a 12 before lunch from the far end. He's bouncing his way in past him by Wharf. Balls. Full ball to Cook, who drives through mid on. Takes a single. Keeps a strike. He's three away from 50. It's 169 for one. Essex lead by 23. Scott disappears off to update listeners on BBC Manchester. He's got a list taped up on the 
on the frame of the window in front of us to tell us which station he's updating, what time he's got to do it as well, because he's all over the shop today. And on BBC Five Live Sports Extra, BBC Essex, and BBC Radio Lancashire and Manchester via the BBC Sport website and app as well. Myself, Glenn Speller, Scott Reed, Kevin Howells and Roland Butcher bringing you day two of this county championship match. We've got women's Six Nations rugby to come up this afternoon on Five Live Sports Extra. So if you want to follow the afternoon session, then you'll need to switch over to the website and the app if you're with us on Five Live Sports Extra at the moment. Tom Bailey to continue from this Sir Alistair Cook end. He's going to be bowling to the night watchman, Sam Cook. Bailey is in and Cook watchfully defends out to the offside for no run. 47 not out. Dean Elgar unbeaten on 65. Lancashire have come up dry so far this morning as far as wickets are concerned. Those two dropped catches in the slip, both by the unfortunate George Bell and both yeah, of really Sam morning, Cook at the outside. moment. Four slips are in for Lancashire. Bailey turns, runs away from us, is in and bowling to Cook once again. And Cook, this time watchfully, almost in a crouching position, defensively out to the offside for no run. A third of a way through this over. Cook just wanders off to the leg side. Thinking. Elgar comes down, Dean Elgar comes down, and there's a, a few words of encouragement for his batting partner, who is in virgin territory with his highest first-class score at the moment. As Bailey is into him, Elgar leaning on his bat, watching what Sam Cook does with this one. On the back foot, defensively out to the offside, calls Elgar through for the single, the throw comes in safely home. Cook goes up to 48, and the score up to 170 for one. Scott is back with us having updated BBC Manchester listeners with the latest from Chelmsford and Cook within two now of a first half century but he will not have the strike <laughs> yeah I'm not sure I'm not sure what, where Lancashire should go really I think that lunch can't come soon enough for them I think try and uh, try and have 40 minutes off and go again this afternoon but it's uh, Essex that hold all the cards here and the building nicely Still with tons of wickets in hand, plenty of time left in the in the day, let alone in the game, to try and get themselves well in front. <coughs> Bailey round the wicket then to the left-handed Elgar. He's in now. Well, that's well, well wide of off stump, and Elgar just watches it go by. 170 for one. So the lead is 24 runs. The run rate below four now. That's the first time it's dipped below four this morning. But Essex won't worry about that. No, I suppose we kind of it's back into the, of the session, isn't it? Yeah. Don't want to just take the edge off what has been a good couple of hours here for Essex by losing the wicket. So things have just slowed down a touch. Lancashire tried to slow them down a little bit as well. Here's Bailey into Elgar again, well wide of off stump, and it goes through. He's probably been a bit unlucky, Bailey. Eh? He's bowled well, hasn't he? Ball well yesterday, beat the bat a few times yesterday, and again at first thing this morning they've gone back to where they started, which is barely around the wicket to Elgar, two slips in the gully, just trying to angle that in and to get the ball to straight and see if he can try and find the edge of Elgar's bat. He's left really well, though Dean Elgar. He's not at all, he's not played anything that that he's either not wanted to play out or not had to play out. He's left a great deal of class. Bailey to finish this 43rd over. He's into Elgar and again he can watch that one go by as well as very very full delivery and it goes through to Hurst and slightly awry there with his last three deliveries was Tom Bailey. It's the end of the over and Essex are 170 for one leading by 24 runs. Yeah we've got time for one more Nathan Lyon over aren't we before we get to the uh, lunch break. It was brilliant watching him bowl last week, especially when there was nothing there for him. I mean, I'm sure it, 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 if it, Lancashire can get some pitches that turn, which I'm sure they'll try and do when they're back at Manchester, and they've got two outgrounds while he's with Lancashire, so they play at Blackpool and at Southport, so they, I mean, you'd think those pitches would be absolutely ideal for him. Um, so it would be, you know, great when the pitch is turning, but it was equally as fascinating to watch him when he had so little to work with. As he bowls to Cook, who just nudges the ball away to, uh, to mid-wicket and uh, there's no run. Yeah, Cook, five balls to get there, but there's no need to rush. 
Yes, can he cope with the pressure of being 48 not out at lunch? And <laughs> two away from his first 50. He's on the front foot and just dabbing this out into the offside. And there's uh, no run. Walks out towards square legs. There's a forward short leg, which is George Bell. There's one slip, Luke Wells. Matty Hurst is the keeper standing right up behind the stumps. The backward square leg, a deep square leg, mid wicket, long on, mid off cover, and backward point. And just uh, calmly playing it back to Lyon. Lyon's putting it right up there, isn't he? He's, he's trying to tempt Cook, <laughs> maybe to try to go over the top, but they've got the man stationed out there at uh, long on. We'll update BBC Essex listeners at the break here. Just got with a really yeah, that goal. man on the long arm boundary. Should he be tempted to try and clear him just on the stroke of lunch? Lion to Cook. It's uh, played down into the ground in front of Bellet. Forward short leg, no run. 170 for one, lead of 24. Final day of the National League football season today. South and United are in action. They're 1 1 at the break. For those who are interested, two balls left of the over yeah, line to Cook. Well, he'll done. get one here. Um, he'll move to 49. As he manages to find a way past uh, when you play a tempo, um, when you Lancashire play fielder down. who's still let on his belly. <laughs> I think it's Josh Bohannon. It was. He's uh, kind of not quite mid on, not quite mid wicket. He's floating between those two positions. So Cook takes himself to 49 not out. And uh, there's one ball left of this over. I'm not, not, not sure if we'll get time for another. And there's Lyon to Elgar. Beats Bailey's attempt to stop the ball low down to his left at mid-wicket. And Elgar through for a single, so he moves on to 66. We might have time for another one. Yes, it was nine minutes past one. And the umpires were sim similar yesterday. This is a few seconds to go. Let's get round. Let's, let's get another one in before the break here. But Elgar will have the strike. So we might have to wait a little bit longer for Sam Cook to have an opportunity to get his first half century in first class cricket. Bailey will finish off from this Sir Alistair Cook end. So Bailey switching around could be another little stepping stone. Ball in his hand. Three slips in for Elgar. First and second slip, and then a wider man. He's probably at three, three and a half slips. As Bailey into Dean Elgar, right arm around. Comes in now to the South African, and Elgar props forward defensively, and there'll be no run there. Ball is picked up by Josh Bohannon. He's got his trousers pulled up now, I'm happy to report. Sunglasses perched on the back of his hat head. Wearing that Lancashire cap. As Bailey tosses himself a catch. Licks his fingers to get that little bit of grip on the seam. Elgar is ready. Slight pause in play here. Bailey's not happy with something. Uh, there's a pause here. Something that ran a bit up because he's decided he's going to come over the wicket now. So he just politely requests that Sam Cook moves across as Bailey comes in to Elgar now. And Elgar plays and misses at that one. It's juggled by Hurst behind the stumps, but there was no touch from Elgar as the sun just beams a little brighter, a little bit warmer into this commentary box. And it's all a little bit languid at the moment. People beginning to think about heading off for their lunch. The players may be thinking about their lunch. Here's Bailey. Into Elgar. And Elgar, well, gets a flick on that one. It'll go down to the long leg for four runs. And it has come off the bat as well. And the score moves up to 176 for one now. And Essex lead by exactly 30. Ball is fetched from over the rope. And Lancashire at the moment. I wouldn't say they look dejected, but they they look a little bit puzzled, I think, as to how they're going to get themselves back into this game. Three more balls to go before the lunch break. Sam Cook, 49 not out, hunting down a first first-class half century. 
but is watching on as Elgar receives this next one from Bailey's full delivery and Elgar just pushes out defensively for no run again. Elgar does a little bit of walking away from the stumps, but Hannon has the ball in his hand. First to toss it to Tom Bailey. The benches in front of the pavilion, well populated today by the Essex members and the top two of the Tom Pearce stand away to our right as well as more and more people have come in as the weather has improved through the morning session. Here's Bailey again, right arm over into Elgar. Elgar forces out to the offside and they'll pick up probably a couple of runs here with one more ball to come. So Cook turns and they'll take two and that means, uh, barring any kind of illegal delivery, look, Cook will be left on 49 not out across the lunch break. Elgar moves on to 72 from 111 deliveries as well. So his scoring rate's been really good this morning and for the la last night as well. Cook 49 from 125 balls. Bailey bends down and just adjusts his bowling marker. And here we are for the final ball then of this morning session. Can Essex go through it without losing a wicket this morning? As Bailey turns, right arm around into Elgar. Elgar flicks that one away again and will pick up four more runs to end this morning session. That takes Essex on to 182 for one and they now lead by 36 runs, Scott. Well, yes, great session, isn't it, for Essex? Um, it's gone just about as well as he possibly could. Like I should have um, created a couple of chances. Um, they've not been able to, uh, to keep hold of them. Bowlers have running hard and done what they could to try and create chances and try and create some pressure. But look, I, uh, the home side have enjoyed a fantastic session and uh, I, I've got the prospect of batting all day today and the prospect of putting themselves into um, a position which they'll they'll try and go and win the match either Sunday or Monday. Thanks for now, Scott. Um, so BBC Five Live Sports Extra listeners will leave us. Rejoin us after the lunch break on the BBC Sport website and the app with Essex lunching at 182 for one. Standing by, mate. They're in a dominant position here in the sunshine at the county ground in Chelmsford. Players just leaving the field for lunch. 182 for one, which means Essex lead by 36 runs. And they've gone through this morning session just over two hours without losing a wicket. Dean Elgar is there, 76 not out from 112 deliveries. And Sam Cook, the night watchman, 49 not out. His highest first-class score going past his previous best of 38. So one short of a first first class half century he's been dropped twice though he was put down in the first over of the morning by George Bell at third slip and then Cook had then got to his highest first class score and Bell dropped him again and Lancashire really not helping themselves this morning. Very little movement for the bowlers. We've seen Nathan Lyon, Australia's top finger spinner, turn his arm over on a few occasions as well, but looking very unthreatening on a difficult surface for the bowlers. And Essex in a dominant position, 182 for one. Hang on.
Alderson round the wicket to Elgar. And Elgar on the pull, pulls that one away to the mid-wicket boundary. And that's the first four of the morning, 79 for one. Fetched to the mid-wicket boundary by Elgar, who guides this one past the right hand of the man at third slip and picks up four runs. No danger, he was riding that one. It was all the way along the ground into Elgar and drives off the back foot and may well pick up four runs for this one indeed. The man at mid-on has given it up. Put the ball over the wicket to Sam Cook. Nice shot, four runs through extra cover. And Cook moves into double figures with that and Essex edging towards 100. Back into Cook and that's pulled out towards deep backwards square leg and pulled nicely for four runs actually. This pivots onto the back foot. Balls to Cook. And Cook's clipped this one through maybe gets his runs here. It's racing up towards the boundary. Has it got the legs to get there? And a valiant effort by the fielder, but the ball wins the battle. From the man at mid-on. They ring very quickly past the umpire, and that's slower, and there's more flight on that one. And it is just flicked very gently and very precisely away by Elgar. Balls. Elgar drives through the offside. That should go up towards the boundary. There's a long chase there, the ball wins the race, and that's the problem Williams have got with no mid-off in place, that anything pitched up. As Williams is in, no balls, and this is it. As he clips this one through mid-wicket, should get at least two here. The mid-on fielder has to chase out towards the boundary, gets to it now, and the return comes back to Williams. But in the meantime, Dean Elgar has crossed for two runs, brings up his half-century, He's in now, Williams bowls to Elgar, and Elgar's running this one down to third man. That should go for another boundary. The chase is on. I don't think the fielder is gaining any ground on that ball down to third man, and he concedes another one. His line, he's in to Cook, and Cook on the drive <laughs> will pick up four runs here as well. Just slightly overpitched from Nathan Lyon. That brings up the 150 for Essex, 151 for one, and Cook goes to 36. Yeah, well played, Cook. Apply it to, uh, to Elgar, short and pulled. And uh, it might be four. There's an awful lot of ground for Bahannon to make up, but he can't get to it. Here is Bailey into the right-handed Cook, and Cook fends at that one and will pick up four runs as well as it beats the man at backward point. Just goes through that sort of gully backward point area. And another boundary for Sam Cook or Cruz. He goes to 44. Elgar. Elgar. Flicks that one away again and will pick up four more runs to end this morning session. That takes Essex on to 182 for one. And
four, a lead of 16 runs. I do hope that Glenn can hang it all together there, hold it together for us all here in a few moments' time. Um, Durham, 244, Worcestershire all out for 184. And Leicestershire in the second division, 293 against Derbyshire. Uh, Middlesex in front by 53 runs for the York, 212 for eight. Uh, Northamptonshire, 32 for one. Of all the main 271, Gloucestershire 417, Sussex in the fight over 27 for one. Apart from the one in the feature game, oh, did I say Somerset? No, Somerset 209 for four, a lead of 16 runs uh, over Nottingham. <coughs> uh, Kent, back on again, 196. Lancashire, Essex, Essex going well. 182 for one, lead by 36 runs. The afternoon session, perhaps get out of the way, we'll get five minutes or so just before we get to the And there is Glenn Speller. Who's recovered sufficiently to say good afternoon to everybody. Glenn and Scott. Good afternoon, everybody. A little bit of a gargle, and away we go for the second session of day two then. And Sam Cook on a half century has gone. He's gone and he's falls one short of his maiden first class 50, Sam Cook, to the first ball after lunch. He's gone to the bowling of Tom Bailey and a dejected Sam Cook drags himself away from the middle and that is agonizing and Essex are 182 for two Scott Reid. It's the nervous 40s wasn't it for Sam Cook? <laughs> you see on the replay he just slumps onto his knees can't believe that and um, out for 49. Lunch came at the worst possible time for Sam Cook. He's dropped twice but third time taken this time by Keaton Jennings at, uh, at first slip. And off the bowling of Balderson. And so, so disappointing for Sam Cook. He played so well. 49 from 126 deliveries. And he goes to the very first ball after lunch. George Balderson makes the breakthrough. He's got both the wickets to fall in this innings now. And finally, we get to see the Essex skipper, Tom Wesley. Yes, it's kind of like what we've been almost waiting for. Lancashire have been desperate to try and get into the, the batters. Uh, frustrating innings from a Lancashire point of view. Excellent from, from uh, Sam Cook. It's a shame he couldn't go and get, get one more and get to a 50. But um, his work was, uh, was absolutely emphatically done at lunch, wasn't it? To a batter through that morning session was a great effort alongside Dean Elgar. Lancashire at last have some uh, a new ba a batter to try and... Um, Try and have a go at. Um, they're going to need a, a really good afternoon session here, Lancashire. Try and get in and amongst this uh, Essex uh, batting lineup. The lead is 36 already. Can't afford really for that to uh, to become just a, a lead well north of kind of 120, 130. I mean, uh, 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 that that's a bit of almost the, the best possible outcome here from a Lancashire point of view. A lot of work to do, but. Um, at least they've got a new batter to have a go at. Tom West, the, the, the skipper, and it's another one for George Balderson. Yep. Two for 28 now, as he's into Tom Wesley, well wide of off stump. And there is no run. As you would expect, the volume level just mm. goes up a little bit in the slip cordon around the field. That will have helped the lunch go down a little bit better for Lancashire as well. They've got rid of the night watchman, and they've got a fresh batter at the wicket straight after lunch. Agonising for Sam Cook. 49 not out at lunch his highest first-class score and then to the very first ball he edges George Balderson to first slip and Balderson is in and bowling to Wesley who probably just about opens the face of the bat there and gets it down towards the deep third boundary and it makes its way despite the valiant chase over the rope for four runs 186 for two yeah, Balderson was a bit of a magic army. I mean, he had this habit last season, actually, and indeed the season before, that he's been able to to break partnerships just to find wickets at the right moment. They tend to come in little clusters for Balderson. They have done certainly in the last couple of seasons. Here he is again into Wesley, who flicks that one away wide of mid-wicket and will come through for another couple of runs, 188-4-2, so the lead... He's up to 42 runs now for Essex. They've lost that wicket, but the batting lineup is long, and Dean Elgar yeah. is still there, 76 not out as well. Yeah, and the lead is, you know, it's a great chat position, isn't it, for the captain to come out and bat here? You know, he 
asked Sam Cook or the, the decision was made for Sam Cook to come back late last night to, to keep this next one is worked behind square on the offside by Wesley this time should be another couple of runs here and despite the wicket falling the runs are coming now for Essex another couple to Wesley he goes to eight from just four balls and 190 for two the lead up to 44 and it takes the run rate above four again in this innings yeah for Wesley just having to not have that uh, threat of coming down to bat last night Sam Cook doing that night watchman role and then batting through the morning session this is a ideal setup isn't it for the captain to come out he's got a batter of high class test match batter at the other end who's 76 not out lead is looking healthy at 40 odd and you know, great position for Wesley to come out and bat this next one is outside off stump, well wide, taken by Hurst again. That is the end of an eventful first over. After lunch, Lancashire have got their breakthrough, but Essex still in a very, very strong position at 190 for two, leading by 44. Reminder, listeners on Sports Extra, that uh, if you want to continue to listen to the uh, cricket uh, from uh, Chelmsford, then it will be, as indeed every ball of every game, uh, viable via the BBC Sport website and app from 2 o'clock. I think it's a bit of rugby union. The women's Six Nations on the way from 2 uh, for Sports Extra listeners. So head across to the BBC Sport website and app to continue to listen to the uh, second day of this uh, Vitality County Championship fixture at the Cloud County Ground here in Chelmsford. And home side looking to try and bat their way into a strong position. Lancashire like are going to start with Will Williams from the uh, River End um, after lunch. The bowling bowlers that Lancashire like have uh, used in this uh, in this game, in this inning so far, Tom Bailey, 13 overs for 55. Will Williams has bowled 11 overs for 43. Uh, Jack Blatherwick uh, has been used in a couple of spells, two overs last night and three overs today, but he's only bowled five overs. Uh, and has gone for 33. Uh, George Balderson, nine overs, two maidens, two for 36. And Nathan Lyon, eight overs for 19. Here's Will Williams, right arm around the wicket balls and through to Hurst, but not without uh, Elgar just inquiring about the ball. and <laughs> kind of shaped as if we were going to try and play at that and pulls the bat away. Just a reminder to you, five live sports extra listeners will be off to the women's Six Nations Rugby Union this afternoon so if you want to continue to follow this game or any of the cricket then it's the BBC Sport website and app go onto the live text feed page you'll see next to the live reporting tab is watch and listen and you can see everything there the full list and you can go around the county grounds and go around the games to your very heart's content throughout this Saturday afternoon and there's Williams to uh, Elgar and that's left and taken by Hurst and there is uh, no run. So it's the two wickets to fall so far in this Essex innings. Cushy yesterday making 53 from 33 deliveries with nine fours. Came out with uh, a great deal of intent and positivity. In fact he, he was swinging after the first ball which I think he top edged over the slips. He did. <laughs> and he just kind of carried on. Battled his way up to 53. Fell late on last night, and the night watchman going after lunch. Again, Elgar leaves. Outside his off stump, which has been a, a signature of his innings. He's played really well. It's been a really stubborn, determined innings full of um, experience and international class, really. He, like I should have probed away with their right arm seamers, whether it was Bailey or now it's William, bowling around the wicket to the left hand at Elgar. Just trying to get him to play at something outside that off stump. Try and find the edge of the bat if the ball can just straighten and shape away from him. There it goes again, mm. but this is what he's done so far. He's just not looked to try and play at anything there where he doesn't need to. He just rocks onto the front foot, lifts the bat away. And the ball angles through to Matty Hurst, the keeper, and there is no run. Yeah, he's just offering a little bit, isn't he? Because he put he's putting it right up there to, to, to give it the opportunity, but just starting it too wide and Elgar is such a good jo judge and we've, we've seen it throughout this innings, such a good judge of anything outside the off stump, what he plays out and what he doesn't need to play at. And Williams into Elgar again, that's left, oh, there is no run, he, just, he can get the ball to come, to move both ways William, but I mean, the ball's 47 overs old, but that's that uh, 
And we saw quite a few times in the last season or two where batters have shoulders arms to balls that have just nipped back in and gone on to clip the top of off stumps. We he can get the ball to move both ways at the minute. Just uh, allowing everything to slide away into the gloves of the keeper. Sets off again to complete the over. Williams to Elgar, it'll straighten, has to play and does. Just chops it into the offside, out towards extra cover. And there's no run, so that's the end of the first over of the afternoon session from the Alistair Cook end. Williams sends down a maiden. It's 190 for two, a lead of 44. Yeah, so Lancashire have got the, the job done that they would have hoped to have done and could have done in the first over of the day, but they've got it done with the first ball in the first over after lunch. So that's the, that's the first job ticked off, as it were, which is to get rid of the night watchman. Next, it is can they get rid of the other set batter as well in Dean Elgar and make this a really good afternoon session and get themselves right in the game. They are trailing at the moment by... 44 runs and Essex will look to add a lot more power to that as the day progresses but Lancashire have opened up the Essex batting now that's Balderson who's got both the wickets to fall comes in to Wesley who again just angles that one down towards the deep third boundary the chase is on it'll be hauled in and they'll come back for two and think about the third but the throw comes in and prevents the third run good chase good pick up good throw 192 for two now and Wesley goes to 10 from just six deliveries had a couple of starts this season Tom Wesley without going on it was in magnificent form last season for Essex I'd dearly like to pick up once again. Final day of the National League season. 12-15 kickoffs today. Doesn't look like Southend are going to make the playoffs. They have to win first of all, and they're only drawing at the moment. As Balderson comes into Wesley, pushes up to mid-off, and there'll be no run. And a word in dispatches as well for BBC Essex's Southend United commentator Nick Alico. It's his last game on commentary today. He's been covering the Blues for just over 30 years now decided that now is the time to hang up the commentary mic at, at least so congratulations to him on an extremely long stint and he can enjoy watching the Blues now I was going to say from a comfy seat at Roots Hall but there aren't many comfy <laughs> seats at Roots Hall at the moment as Balderson is into Wesley Wesley on the drive but straight to mid on and there'll be no run once again 192 for two and the penultimate weekend of the regular football league season as well Colchester looking to secure their EFL status they've got three bites of the cherry to do that and if results go their way today it'll be done today and lots of uh, things to be settled as well up in the northwest Scott as Balderson is in and Wesley from the back foot drives out to the offside and there is no run once again including a huge game for Burnley this afternoon where it's Sheffield United mm, yeah and they're uh their uh, destined to be f failed attempt to stay in the Premier League. <laughs> Love your optimism. <laughs> you never know. I was going to say stranger things have happened, but they probably haven't. No, probably honest, not. No. <laughs> Here's Balderson. Three slips. Uh, Wesley angles that one into the onside, but just hits the man at mid wicket, and there is no run one more ball to go in this the 48th over a minimum of 68 overs plus a ball to go in the day the run rate just over four a bit of sunshine again comes out at Chelmsford it's all right though isn't it that run rate hovering around four I mean they, they can they can push that on later in the innings if, if they've got wickets in hand and they want to do it Balderson is in and uh, Wesley again playing with a straight bat out towards the offside but it comes off the inner face of the bat and goes down to long leg and they jog through for another single to end that over from George Balderson who's now got two for 39 from his 10 overs three from that one and Essex are 193 for two and they lead by 47 runs to get the sunglasses out here Glenn beautiful isn't it should well, put the shorts on and the flip-flops. No, no. Oh, I'm getting carried away. Matt, who works on the uh, media team here at Essex, uh, when we were out on the outfield waiting for the end of play, close of play interviews yesterday, he came out in a T-shirt and shorts. I saw and, that, yeah. and, and myself and one of the writers, Martin, he was saying, can you go back and put some clothes on? You're making us feel cold. And we were there with our coats and collars all turned up, trying to protect ourselves from the biting wind. Well, he's a Yorkshire lad, isn't he? Well... 
He's, yeah, but he doesn't feel the you don't feel the cold in Yorkshire apparently. Well, there's no sense, there's no feeling, as they say. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can say that, I can't. Actually, probably as a Lancashire man, you probably can't say that. <laughs> 193 for two. Lead of 47. Three slips away. Here's Williams, and he's in a ball over the wicket. And it's left alone by Tom Wesley. Taken by Matty Hurst, the keeper. There's no run. I mean, no hurry from Essex either. I mean, nope. if they can bat the day, they'll bat the day. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Pretty simple, yeah. then. Bat. Bat well, bat once, isn't that what they say? If they're batting still at the close of play, yeah, they're going to be in a very, very healthy position. I think in today's uh, three and four, the forecast is all right, isn't it, for, yep. the, for Sunday and Monday? Actually, I've not looked at Monday, but definitely tomorrow. I saw that on the weather this morning. And Williams in, left by Wesley. Into the gloves of, uh, of Matty Hurst. And there again, there is uh, no rum. Plenty of encouragement amongst the Lancashire players. have come out after lunch, helped by the fact they've taken a wicket at last. Got rid of the night watchman, Sam Cook, falling just short of his first 50. They uh, need to go on a bit of a roll, though, here to Lancashire. Nathan Lyon polishing the ball at, uh, at mid-off. He'll hand it back to, to Will Williams. He had eight overs, none for 19. Lyon didn't really do too much for no, him. He didn't. No. Three slips all settling into position. Tom Wesley waits. It's fallen wide of a stump by Williams. And taken by uh, Matty Hurst. And uh, there is no run. Keaton Jennings and Tom Bruce and George Bell are the three slip fielders for Lancashire. But around about this time last week against Kent, the sun was out, it was nice and warm, mm. the pitch was dead, it was flat, it mm. was slow, we were sort of nudging each other to keep each other awake, <laughs> and you could see a few people dozing off in front of us as well. Not because, you know, not because they weren't pleased with what Essex were doing, but be just because of the nature of the game, and, it, and the cook up a ball, and, it, and the pitch, and it was... Yeah, but um, this, this game's got plenty in it. Williams to Wesley. It's still got a decent carry, that, hasn't it? Through to... Uh, to Hurst, it's wide of off stump. It was a wire ball from Williams, which Wesley left, and Hurst takes it. Ball nestles nicely into his gloves and he bounces across first slip. By the time he takes the catch, the Lancashire wicket keeper. Meantime, Warwickshire 455 for nine against Hampshire. Liam Dawson's got four for 146 from 40 overs for Hampshire. That's a stint. Yeah, he bowled a lot last week as well. Williams to Wesley. That's defended no run. He was he was north of 40 overs yes, uh, last week. He may have bowled 46 <laughs> in the second innings. <laughs> so he's, he's he's got through quite a bit already, Liam Dawson. Early. I, to be fair, I have indeed quite a lot of the spinners mm. in the country. One of the byproducts of the Cooker Report was in quite a lot of spin, haven't we, in the first two rounds of the championship? Kent 204 for six against Surrey. Joe Denley is out there, though, for 32. Williams brings uh, the Essex skipper solidly onto the front foot in defence. And there's no run. He was able to leave quite a few of those deliveries, but on that occasion, uh, drawing to a defensive shot and uh, played it nicely. Completes the over. It's a maiden from Williams. He sends down another one, and he started with successive maidens from this end. 193 for two, Elgar on 76, Wesley on 11, and Essex lead by 47. Somerset eking out a lead against Nottinghamshire, lead by 25 runs with five wickets remaining. 72 from Sean Dixon, and the night watchman Josh Davy is also out there. He made 45, and Banton still there, 34 not out. And Durham in their second innings, five for one against Worcestershire, which means their overall lead is 65 runs. Just going to update BBC Essex listeners at full time of the football in the next few moments. I think you've got one to go off and do in about 10 minutes, Scott. And uh, once we've sorted all that out, I'll probably get Roland to come in and join you. As the sun beats down into the commentary box here, as this next one from Balderson is worked into the offside by Elgar, and he goes through for a single. That's his first run after the interval here. 194 for two is the score for Lancashire for Essex, and they lead by 48 runs. 
Incidentally, that uh, second wicket stand for Essex as well, in the end, realised exactly 120 runs. As Balderson comes into Wesley. Wesley on the drive and drives majestically straight past the bowler and up to the long on boundary and picks up four runs. 198 for two. And Tom Wesley, not so much like Feroz Kushi, but nevertheless has come out with a bit of intent here. Well, it's a great position to come out and bat, isn't it, I suppose, with the team already in front and the night watchman and Dean Elgar have taken quite a bit of the hardness out of the ball in the morning session. The bowlers are having to, to go again in second and third and fourth spells. And lovely way to come out. But a bit of freedom here to work with, hasn't he, Tom Wesley? Balderson back in, and that goes through to Hurst. And there is no run. 98 for two. Midway through this 50th over of the Essex innings, the run rate smack on four runs now as well. The South End have just gone behind if you're interested in the National League. They'll be staying in the National League for next season. Looks like Halifax are going to make the final playoff spot in that division. That regular season finishes today. Chesterfield already up. They could have declared probably cricket style around about Christmas, Chesterfield, and it has still gone up. Here's Balderson into Wesley, just pushes forward defensively, and Balderson stops it in his follow through. And there's no run. Wesley 15 not out from just 20 deliveries. Essex too short. Of 200. Three bonus points points for Essex so far in this game Lancashire yet to register one it's time next week I'll be enjoying Chester Street Essex up at Durham Lancashire next week are off oh week off putting the feet up yep now Hurst is going to stand up now to Balderson try and keep Wesley back in his crease Balderson in and Wesley lets that go by and Hurst parries it, tries to tip it round the corner to the man at the third slip, doesn't quite reach him, but there's no run. And lots of blue sky around the county ground now, directly above us and in the distance too. Try to see if anyone's got any of their balcony windows open over on the left-hand side of the ground, the Felsted School stand, but no, obviously it's still a bit too chilly for that. As Balderson is in once again to the Essex captain who whips that one away, should be stopped by a tumbling man at mid-on. I say should be stopped, he got a hand to it and tipped it over the rope by Nathan Lyon and it goes for four runs, that's the 200 up for Essex, 202 for two and the lead goes up to 56 runs. Yeah, he, he, he got to it, didn't he, Nathan? He put, put the dive in, got something on it. But with everything that was thrown at them, it was quite some season. He stop the ball from getting underneath his body. It was hit nicely, it was well timed. So even with Lyon getting something on it, still had the pace to rattle its way towards the, the boundary rope. Final game. They just couldn't. Wesley, 19, Elgar, 77 then to lead 56. Basically, kind of 56 for two. You know, the uh, or Essex. What can their lead be at the end of this? It looks like we're potentially quite a formidable looking lead that Lancashire are facing when they come out to bat second time round. Full and wide of off stump by uh, Williams as he comes in to start again to Dean Elgar through to Hurst and there's no run. Yeah, as you say, what can the lead be? What do Essex have in mind? Do they have anything in their minds at this stage or is it just bat, bat, bat and see where we get to by the end of the day? I'm sure this afternoon session it's that and then they'll have a look at it at tea. Yep. Thank you for say there's so much, uh, so much time still to go in the match. Williams for Lancashire back into uh, to Elgar. You know, leaves it and quite like it how he watches it too. He kind of bends his knees. He lifts his back just above his waist height and spins his hips round as he follows it with it all the way into the gloves of, of Matty Hurst. He has left well. He's been really watchful. Test match player and all that international experience. Real sense of calmness and authority, hasn't he, Dean Elgar, in this innings? 77 from 121 deliveries. He's negotiated everything that Lancashire have put his way so far. And this time gets forward in defence. Slightly tighter, straighter line from Williams. Elgar having to play. Solid 
front foot defensive shot. And again, there is no run. It's not going for much for Williams, who's started very tidily after lunch from the. Now as to Cook, end of the ground, halfway through his uh, 14th over of the. Of the innings, balls again, but a width this time, carved away, good stop, excellent work actually by George Bell. He's uh, done really well to cut that off, it was cut by Elgar. Fine piece of fielding by Bell, cartwheeling away to his, uh, his left. Trying to continue this period where Williams is sending down dot ball after dot ball. Two balls away from the third successive maiden over to begin with in the afternoon session. Two slips, wait. And it's at Williams again. Again through to uh, Hurst. And there's no rum. 202 for two. Well done, Just coming to the end of the 51st over as well in Frankie this Farber, Essex innings and all this efforts. By the Lancashire bowling attack that has produced just the two wickets so far, and they've they've had to work pretty flipping hard just to get those two wickets. Last ball of the over. And just pushed Bell out deeper now. There's a deep backward point. Williams in. There won't be three maidens on the spin, but worked away through the offside by. Uh, Elgar for a single and he keeps the strike as well so he moves on to 78 203 for two lead by 57 end of the over then I will be updating BBC Essex listeners at some point in the next few moments on what's been going on here Southend have been beaten Colchester kick off at three o'clock as we come to the end of the season lots of non-league playoffs to come in the next couple of weeks as well as there's a meeting of minds at the far end, the Graham Gooch end, amongst three of the Lancashire side, one of whom is the bowler, George Balderson, who's the only one with wickets in the column of his bowling analysis at the moment. He's going to be bowling to Dean Elgar, who is 78, not out. Right on over he comes in. Elgar goes to cut that one away, gets nothing on it, and it goes through to Hurst. Here we go with BBC Essex listeners. 203 for two is the score. A defeat for Southend United in their final game of the season. It was all academic anyway, because FC Halifax Town went and won their National League game. We'll round up all Algar 78, Wesley on 19. Manchester United team news as well ahead of their match against North County at 3 o'clock in League 2. But let's get back off to <coughs> Here we go. where Essex are in action against Lancashire this afternoon. Glenn Spiller is and continuing to dominate this game as well. They're 203 for two in their first innings and they lead by 57 runs. But, but Sam Cook has missed out on a maiden first class half century. Got himself to 49 at lunch, but to the very first ball after the restart, he edged through to first slip off the bowling of George Balderson and having been dropped twice this morning in the slips Keaton Jennings made no mistake whatsoever and Cook almost had to be lifted away from the middle by a crane because he's missed out on his maiden first class half century but the job he's done for the team and it is a team game I'm sure will be applauded he's out for 49 Dean Elgar is still there on 78 he's been joined by the captain Tom Westley who's got himself to 19 off just 22 deliveries 203 for two is the score can I just add my congratulations and thanks to BBC Essex Sports Nick Alliker as well he's um, been by my side throughout the entire 20 plus years that I've been on BBC Essex Sport and uh, as well as all his professionalism his excellent commentaries and everything else he's done I would highlight just one thing which is friendship and a deep friendship as well and particularly over the last 12 to 18 months and all down the years as well he is the absolute epitome of what friendship and what friends do for each other. So many congratulations to him and I hope to be his colleague at BBC Essex for many years uh, to come. There are a few people who could learn exactly what it means to be a real true friend. And Nick Hallecker is that not only to us, not only to his colleagues, but also to the BBC Essex listeners as well. Essex here, 203 for two.
Roland Butcher is going to come in alongside myself and then I'll slip out once Scott's done his update here for BBC Manchester. He's then got to stay on, I think, for do his update for Radio Lancashire as well. But meantime, Balderson is continuing from the uh, Graham Gooch end. And he's going to be coming in and bowling to Elgar, unbeaten on 78. He comes in now and that's past Elgar without even playing at it and through it goes and there is no run there. Welcome back Roland Butcher, agonising for Sam Cook first of all. Yes, I mean he was first ball after lunch, it was a nice juicy half volley, perhaps that's what tempted him, he could easily have left it but went after it, got a thick edge and um, third time unlucky. <laughs> He was caught just one short of a half century. It would have been a deserving half century. Here's Balderson in again to Elgar. And Elgar this time does drive, squirts away behind square on the offside. And the man from deep third just runs around, just a singular cruise. 79 not out now, 206 for two is the score. And that is the end of Balderson's over as well. 2 for 51 for him from his 12 overs. He's worked hard to get the only two wickets to fall. But I was just speaking to Scott there, Roland, about whether Essex will have even had a chat at lunch about what they wanted to do, or would it just be just bat? Don't, don't need to make any plans at the moment. Yeah, I think they would have just really said to themselves, listen, we've had a good, good morning, things are looking good, let's more the same in the afternoon, just keep batting get ourselves into a position where the lead is substantial and then we can work from there. I don't think it would have gone really beyond that. Um, but they lost the wicket um, of Cook, which probably is not the worst thing because Wesley's come in and he's looked very aggressive from the start and he's moved quickly on to 19. So at the moment Essex are looking quite handy. So Williams will continue and he's bowling to Helga who comes gently forward and defends the ball moving away from the left-handed batter in front of him and offers to help the opposition by looking to pick the ball up but wasn't needed. He stays on 79, he's been very watchful and a, a real model of patience and expertise from this opening batsman here for Essex. He's he certainly played exceptionally well. He just held the innings together. Williams now in his 15th over as he's in now. Bowls to Elgar and that's outside the off stump. And Elgar just offers no shot. He goes through to Ricky Keeper Hurst who's bowling with two slips. And then three fielders on the offside saving one. He's got a point, extra cover and a mid off to go with the third man on the offside. And then the leg side field. He's got a long leg, a deep square leg, and a mid on. So predominantly an offside field. He's bowling around the wicket, and he's he's got none for 44 in. Bowls to Elgar, and that one dies off the pitch. Started wide, kept going further away, and not to be tempted. I love that one to go through to the wicket keeper. Tough work for these Lancashire seamers and the little bit of spin that we've seen from Nathan Lyon as well. There's there's not a lot going on out there for them at the moment and they might look wistfully back to the toss yesterday and wish the coin had come up on the other side, but it, it didn't. Uh, just listening to Shane Snater last night when we were talking to him, Roland, he was just saying, look, look, it's not a snake pit. There's a little bit of movement here and there, but, you know, by no means should batters be struggling too much. We was bowls and... Um that one's allowed to go through outside the off stump by Elgar and Williams puts his hands on his head along with the wicket keeper as to say that was pretty close and obviously from our vantage point here we can't see exactly how close it is without looking at a replay but no harm done, the score stays on 206 for 2 Wesley 19, Elgar 79, he's been there right from the start and fashioned a very good partnership with Cook as this delivery is driving outside the off stump and he's out caught behind or he's given out caught behind he's not moving El guy he's standing there maybe just disappointed that he was tempted into that drive but Williams gets the wicket Elgar has to go as he's gone for 79 and caught by wicket keeper Hurst his third wicket goes down for 
a six. There are now 206 for the loss. Just looking at that one, I can't work out whether it's disappointment from the batter or whether he feels he's hit the ground and not the ball. But whether it's deviated off the seam or not when it's gone through to the keeper, there was certain deviation. A good take by Matty Hurst, incidentally, in front of first slip. But always difficult to tell from the batter. I mean, he didn't, didn't exactly toss his head to the sky and look at the umpire. Maybe he's just surprised that he's nicked it through and got himself out for 79 when I, when I think he will feel there's 100 there for the taking. But he's out and Lancashire got a second breakthrough, 206 for three. Yeah, um, disappointment for Edgar. He's, Edgar, he, he really has batted well. I mean, conditions yesterday were not that easy. He battled the way. Same thing today. Wasn't really fluent, so to speak, but it was very gritty, very determined and looked as if he was going to certainly move on to 100. Having left a couple of deliveries outside the off stump from Williams, he was tempted into a drive and given out court behind. So the third wicket goes down. Cox is the new bat, batter. And Lancashire will be certainly feeling a little bit better this afternoon because that first session didn't take a wicket, had the opportunity to. But um, straight after lunch, They've got the breakthrough, and now they've taken the other batter in Dean Edgar. Right. What that does is it brings Jordan Cox to the wicket. He got himself a good innings in the first, in, in first innings against Kent. Desperately disappointed he was not to go on and make three figures. Well, he more than made up for that in the Essex second innings. He smashed it to all parts of the ground and got himself three figures. He will not stand on ceremony. If it's there to be hit, he'll give it a good crack. So we, we could be in for a few fireworks in the time that uh, Jordan Cox is at the wicket. But Lancashire will feel they're just working their way back into this. Yes, and Williams will want to do something about that. He's now got three slips for the new batter, Cox. He's running away from us now in bowls at Cox. And he's flicked that one off his pads immediately out to deep square leg. And obviously Lancashire haven't done their homework had a man out on the deep square leg boundary, but he gets a single cox, immediately gets off the mark. That was the final delivery of that Williams over his 15th of the innings, and he now has figures of one for 45. And at the end of the over, Essex are 207 for three. Right, well, I should take my leave with Essex at 207 for three, and Scott, we're going to work him hard. We're going to bring Scott back in uh, alongside you, Roland, for a, for a few overs, just to see what sort of an interesting stage of the game. If Lancashire can get another one, maybe get another couple, they'll, they'll feel they're right back in it and they can limit Essex, and Essex, meantime, will look to these two, and they are scorers of quick runs, Wesley and Cox. They, if it's there to be hit, they'll take it, and we'll see what we're going to be in for for the next 40 minutes or so. Yes, and Scott won't be too displeased with coming in now because he will certainly be wishing for a couple of wickets. <laughs> and that first delivery is defended <laughs> by Cox from Balderson. It goes out on the offside and there's no run. Scott getting himself ready. And Essex now 207 for three. Are we, no, are, we, no. are we standing up, Butch? Is that what we're doing? We're going to stand we're up. We're standing at okay. the moment, yes. Okay. Um, not on ceremony, but we're standing. Uh, if you're going to stand, I'll stand. <laughs> so, Bowles, Bowleson once more on the ground, Butch in. Bowles, and that's met on the front foot by Cox, who comes a long way forward and just defends the ball out on the offside. And there's no run. There's three slips in place for Bowleson, and he's got. Also a backward point, extra cover to mid-off. And onside mid-on, mid-wicket, and a man on the long leg boundary. So, Lancashire looking for another breakthrough. They've got two new batters at the crease. The rest is on 19, Cox is on one. As Balderson runs in towards us now, passes the umpire, bowls, and Cox advances down the pitch. Realise the ball is wide, allows it to go through to the keeper. Umpire's just having a little look. Where Balderson foot was landing. Uh, perhaps just clearing the lines so it becomes a little bit clearer to see as all the slip fielders with their hands in their pockets, so it's still pretty chilly as Balderson in and bowls, and that's a good delivery outside the off stump, but 
no shot offered through to the keeper. Probs away pretty well, doesn't he, Balderson? Does a very decent job for Lancashire with the ball. Often coming on as kind of second or third change and has a handy habit of just, just picking up wickets and breaking partnerships. He got north of 20 wickets last season and 600 runs, which is a pretty good effort for a young all-rounder. Just uh, still at the, the start of his of his career. He's in his 13th over. He's got two for 51, and that one is going to match with Cox coming down the wicket. And at the last minute, hmm. just steering the ball down to the third man, he'll get two runs. Played that well, and didn't he? Kept it down, which yeah. was the important thing, and he picked up two, so he goes to three. The score goes to 209. A loss of three. Kind of adjusted well, didn't he? Advanced towards Bowles and then quickly had to just adjust perhaps the shot he was intending. Yeah, let's just looking to get down the pitch to ensure that any movement he's in a position to cover it. Bowles in bowls and Cox is forward solidly defending that. Up to it off. That was the final delivery of the 13th over for Bowles. He has figures now of two for 53. And at the end of that over Essex, they have advanced to 209 for three. Like I should using Tom Bailey and Will Williams predominantly as their frontline seamers. Balderson's um, picked up 13 overs, or was ball 13 overs. They only used Jack Blatherwick for five overs, two last night and three today. And five overs for 33 for Blatherwick. Didn't bowl too much last week at, at Hampshire neither. So Balderson. Let me have just to pick up a few extra overs. Nathan Lyon, not seen him so far this afternoon. He bowled eight overs in the morning session for 19. He's in uh, Williams' ball from the uh, Graham Gooch end. He's now running in from the Ballester Cook end. His three slips are in place. It's left alone by Wesley. And uh, through to the keeper. There's no run. Speaking of Graham Gooch, did you enjoy your lunch interval? Yes, yes. Uh, good to catch up with Graham. <laughs> um, Probably haven't seen him since last year, and um, you know, no, good to be on his patch. Um, <laughs> and had a good chat. He had a little wander out to the middle, didn't you? Not yeah, just yeah, yeah. I guess reminiscing, I guess, what it was like, <laughs> 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 or how it could be. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lovely picture of this somewhere. There's Will Williams comes in and bowls, handsome looking drive by Wesley straight to mid off, and there's no run. I think it's on social media, isn't it? Have yeah, you, I mean, um, the, the uh, resident photographer came out and Kevin Howells did this and, job and did a, a fantastic job. I mean, he actually got both of us in the photo, so that, <laughs> yes, was, he that, did. Was, that was impressive. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen the, the photo, it's lovely, it's a very nice little yeah. picture. Yeah, he's done well. Make sure you get a copy of that. Oh, he sent it already. Nice. Yeah. Oh, is he? Oh, excellent. Yeah. Good work, good work. We were up here watching you both, and it was lovely. We were just saying how nice it must be, both you and, and, and Graham, just having a little wander out to the middle and chatting away. There's Williams in balls, and Wesley defends. Half a step down the pitch, and the ball trickles slowly to Nathan Lyon, who's at mid-on, and there's no run. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, Graham is a legend here. I mean, he's what he's done for Essex cricket and English cricket is... It's unbelievable and still has a keen interest in the game. Um, so it's good to good to have a chat. Very nice. 209 for three. Essex leading Lancashire by 63 runs. Essex skipper's waiting for Williams, who's back in and bowling again. Pushed full and wide and left. And uh, carries nicely into the gloves of Matthew Hurst, Lancashire's wicketkeeper. And there is no run. Remains on 19. So Lancashire have picked up two wickets since lunch. The night watchman falling for 49. And Dean Elgar, who uh, was caught behind by Hurst off Williams for 79. The last wicket to fall. So Tom Wesley and, and, and Jordan Cox, the two batters there. It's Wesley on strike. Williams again. And once again, Wesley leaves. And uh, taken by... Hurst, and again, there's no rum. Yes, and Williams just teasing him outside the off stump, offering up the drive. He's got three slips in the gully in place, so if he doesn't quite cover the ball properly, there's always a chance of one of those players coming in to slip. So he goes back to point now, actually. He's got a, a deepish gully. Yeah, it's Chad Blather with that. Williams balls. That's... Uh, Wesley off the 
the back foot gets right up onto his toe, trying to punch the ball down the ground. Finds its way back to Williams, who feels off his own bowling. End of the over. Another maiden sent down by Will Williams. He's now bowled 16 overs, four maidens. I think three of them have come since lunch. One for 45 are the figures for the uh, Lancashire Seamer. 209 for three at the end of the over. Essex leading by 63 runs. Yes, and a nice tight over there by Williams. And he's bowling from the Alistair Cook in, which is in front of us here. So he's running away from us. Uh, seemed to be a lot tighter than when he bowled from the other end. It, maybe he's running into a strong breeze, but certainly looks the part from this end. But it's now going to be Bolson. And he will be bowling to Cox. Face Cox, the three slips and the backward point extra cover mid off as Balderson is in. Bowls and he beats him upside the off stump with a good delivery that moved off the seam, bounced as well. Just fending at that delivery. And lucky Cox not to get an edge on that, so that was well bowled by Balderson, who is fast medium. Seems to hit the ball on the seam. Quite regularly, not a big swing of the ball, but more of a seamer. And those three slips have come a little bit closer as Borderson <coughs> is in and bowls to Cox and he's forward. And defends to backward point, can't score. Just comes solidly onto the front foot and with a dead bat, just pushed it out on the offside. The score stays on 209 for three and just looking around the ground. It's quite a healthy crowd in today, Saturday, obviously with all the football and everything that's going on. Still the loyal supporters are here at Chelmsford to support their beloved Essex. Well, I'm sure there's some from Lancashire as well, as that's a good delivery on about the off stump. And Cox comes forward and defends up to mid-off. Yeah, I'm sure, Scott, there's quite mm -hmm. a few Lancashire supporters oh, they will be. Yep. who would have made the trip down. And I'm sure there's quite a few Lancashire supporters... We live in the south as well, so start of the season, everybody would have had a long winter, keen to get out and see as much cricket as possible as Bolderson, right arm over the wicket, and bowls, and that's defended to a backward point. That, that delivery, Hurst has moved up under the stumps now, so he's decided that that's the best place to be. Standing up to Bolderson. There's a guy in front of me reading the paper, and he's reading about... Uh, <laughs> holidays to Greece <laughs> <laughs> well I, I, I can sympathise with this man he's <laughs> he's obviously a man of my own heart who's as Balderson is in now and bowls and that's right on a target and he defends again ball goes straight up to mid off the run <laughs> it's had two days of, the, hmm. of this match and thought you know what let's have a look see how cheap the flights are to Greece <laughs> <laughs> and take away my fleece jacket and dispense of my scarf. Yes, but the, <laughs> looking at over his shoulder, the, those photos look very enticing. <laughs> they actually. do, don't they? It looks lovely. Yeah. Blue, blue sky, blue sea, as this <laughs> delivery is again bringing Cox onto the front foot. Can't score, the ball goes to point. Over completed, and that should be another maiden over. Yep. And it was by Borderson, who has figures now of 2 for 53. Um, from 14 overs. There's not really been, since Essex started batting last night, a much of a period in the game where I think Keaton Jennings will feel has always got a little bit of control, but maybe just now, the dismissal of Elgo, he's got uh, Williams and Bolas and they were sending down Maiden from each end, maybe just might think that there's a little period where of, of calmness where the, the bowlers are asking questions and runs are not as easy to come by as they have previously been for Essex. Yeah, I think we're Lancashire can feel happy is the situation you know yesterday and today it was going at almost five and over that that's no down to 3.73 so they've done well williams in bowling to wesley that's left and uh, taken by hurst and there is uh, no run 209 for three so a lead of 63 we've still got 59 overs left in the day, so bags of cricket to go today. Tea will be at four o'clock. A lot of cricket to go between now and the close of play, and Essex wanting to make the very most of their chance here with the bat first time round as they try and push further forward. 
Speaking of forward, here's Wesley onto the front foot. Well, that's come off the inner half of the bat. He'll get a single for it. Quite exactly where he intended it. Ball picked up by Bolson at backward square leg. Wesley moves on to 20. 210 for three, so it ends that sequence of dot balls. Yes, just coming forward and ball just coming off the inner half of the bat. And all along the ground, but just rotating the strike. 210 for three. Mm. 64 in front. Bringing Cox back on strike. Three slips in place. And here comes Williams over the wicket. And just dabbed away into the offside. And there is uh, no run. Scooped up by Luke Wells at extra cover. Tom Hartley's on the field as a 12th man for Lancashire. Let's see if we can work out who's off the field. We've got Jennings at first slip, Bruce at second, Bell at third, Bathwick at backward point, Wells at cover, Bohannon's at mid off, Hartley mid on. It's right. Nathan Lyon who's uh, currently off the field. Here's uh, Williams to uh, Cox. That's turned away to the onside, picked up by the left hander. Tom Hartley fizzes one in towards the gloves of uh, Matty Hurst. Cox denied a run. Score remains on 210 for three. The lead is 64. Williams back to his mark. The two on the leg side boundary at deep square leg and at fine leg. Keeper comes to stand up now. Hurst up behind the stumps. Williams sets off again. To, uh, it's a strongish breeze here at Chelmsford. Bowls left by Cox and taken by Hurst. And again, there's no rum. Mm, yep, just pushing that ball wide of the off stump, Williams. Tempting Cox to go for the drive, but Cox being very patient at the moment. Final ball of the over. This is six on the spin for Williams since lunch, and Bollison's ball six overs, one for 25 since lunch. Here's Williams in. Again, left by Cox and taken by the keeper, Hurst. That's the end of the over. So 210 for three. Wesley on 20, Cox on three. The lead is 64. That's another tight over there by Williams. He's now got one for 46. He's completed 17 overs, so he's had quite a bit of work to do. Keeper decides he's going to stand up. And Bolson will continue. He's got currently the two slips, but he'll probably bring the third one in as well, who's now placing the helmet behind the wicket keeper. Goes to first slip. Wesley's on 20 as he appears to face Balderson and now Bowles and that's flicked away past square leg should go to the boundary it does now and uh, a nice neat shot there off the legs by Wesley ball just going down and clip behind square there is a long leg but had no chance of getting it wrong he gets the boundary and the score very fast outfield once the ball gets into that outfield he goes to 24 with that shot the score goes to 214 for three See how Bolson reacts to that delivery. It's misdirected. He's in now, in and bowls, and that's a better delivery, and it comes off the edge, but doesn't carry the slip. It just bounces before it reached the slip. Kept a little bit low. That was the delivery that he would have wanted Bolson to bounce so it can carry easily to the first slip, but in the end, no chance of taking the wicket. 2.14 as Balderson runs in once more in 
bowls and that's short of a length and Wesley on this occasion just comes into line and defends the ball back to the bowler can't score he stays on 24 so Cox is on three so a few edges drop short haven't we in this match yeah the odd delivery when it's flung the edge it stayed down mm. go through Bolson has to abort his run up because Jennings was had wandered away from his position at slit. Alderson realizing that he was not in place, aborted his run up and goes back to his mark. He's ready now and he's in and bowls and that's slipped away through the onside for four. That's a much better shot. He's been very strong in this area, Wesley, since he's come on out to bat. He's got a few balls in that area, which he's done well. And this one, again, badly lined, probably about leg stump. And this time, hit in front of square through mid-wicket, there is a square leg all along the ground and into the boundary for four. Yeah, good-looking shot, wasn't it? Just leaning into it and guiding the ball away off his pads out through mid-wicket. Yeah, beautifully timed as Bolderson is in and bowls and goes this forward and this ball is played out to mid wicket square leg comes to his left does the fielding Mentioned and that there's no run sorry but you mentioned that uh, Nathan Lyon was off the, the, the field a few moments ago he's back on the pitch maybe just putting his bowling boots on potentially because he's twirling his arms around a little bit there at uh, mid on so might well see Nathan Lyon into the attack for the first time this afternoon 218 for three. And this one ball left in the over. Balls. And driven firmly up to mid off. But he won't score. That's going straight to the fielder. Over completed. And Bolderson now has figures of two for 61 in his 15 overs. And at the end of the over, Essex are 218 for three. Wesley is on 28. It's Cox on three. Yep. Going to be Nathan Lyon replacing Will Williams. Good spell this from Williams since lunch he's bowled six overs three maidens one for three super effort from the uh, yeah, Alistair Cook end yes he bowled bowled much better from this end Williams then got his radar right particularly to the right handers he was just going to tease them outside the off stump picked up the all important wicket of Dean Elgar and now he has to take a breather as Nathan Lyon as you said is going to bowl from the Alistair Cook end just having a little sweep around what's happening elsewhere. There's a half century for Tom Bantam playing first class cricket for uh, for Somerset this week against Nottinghamshire. He's bringing up his, uh, his half century with Somerset 250 for seven in their first innings, replying to Nottinghamshire's 193 all out. So building a nice looking lead against Notts of Somerset at Taunton. There's uh, Nathan Lyon bowling. And uh, Cox is able to work the ball away towards the leg side, and there is uh, no run. He's on three, 218 for three, lead of 72. So Lyon then for the first time after lunch. He's got a slip and a forward short leg. There's short mid wicket. There's a deep backward square leg. There's a deep mid wicket. And he's lying in and balls. That's off the back foot and worked away into the onside. And uh, there's no run. Short extra cover, and there's a deep backward point and mid off as well. Bailey on the long on boundary below us. Here's Nathan Lyon for Lancashire. He's bowling his off spin from over the wicket. Reverse sweep by uh, Jordan Cox brings him a single. And that takes the score on to 219 for three. Cox moves on to four. Yes, and the man specifically set out on the point boundary for the either the cut or the reverse sweep on that occasion the reverse sweep was played so the line comes in from the boundary there that's Jack Blatherwick with Wesley back on strikes there's a backward point extra cover it's a mid off long on mid wicket short leg and a slip and a backward square leg and a deep square leg it's off the front foot by Wesley the ball that steered down into the ground picked up by Jack Blatherwick and there's no run Lion with his collar turned up and sunglasses on. Bowling with a pretty strong breeze behind him. 
Thurston a little flatter and quicker to Wesley, gets on the front foot and defends again. Once more, no run. So he's probing away, he's Nathan Lyon. A little like last week against Hampshire, didn't have much assistance from the pitch, but he used all his skill and variations, subtle little variations, to try and create some some chances. This is quicker. Nice ball was a little slower. That one's fizzing a little bit quicker. And uh, Wesley off the back foot defends away safely enough to mid-wicket. It's the end of the over then. So it's 219 for three. Just a single off it. Tom Wesley is on 28. Jordan Cox on four. I shall be back in a minute, but I've got an update to do. A little tight over there by Nathan Lyle. Just conceding the single. He has none for 20 now line. Uh, he has completed nine overs. He's got none for 20 as the batters come fur in the middle there, just having a little chat and obviously just encouraging one another. It's 219 for three as just look at those figures, Williams. He's got one for 46, by the way, five overs, none for 33. As Bailey looks like Bailey's coming into the attack. He's going to be bowling from the Graham Guchin. And he'll be bowling to Cox. So Jordan Cox will face. He's got two slips and a gully as Bailey over the wicket and bowls. And that's good movement, the ball moves away from the right-handed Cox who allows it to go harmlessly through to wicket keeper Hurst. So Essex just moving along quietly and having dismissed Lancashire for 146. They're now patiently building the lead here at Chelmsford as the Sun again makes an appearance. So upside conditions a little bit better than earlier as this delivery is met on the front foot Cox as he walked along the pitch a couple of yards and then stands up straight and defends the ball out on the offside. He will remain on four. Wesley's on 28. He's batted pretty well. Wesley, he's played some lovely shots, particularly off his legs. Um, he's probably hit three or four fours on the onside that was fed to him, but they were nicely put away as Bailey in bowls and it's driven hard up to mid off but straight to mid off so he won't score that ball just offered up for the drive and bailey's at the moment bowling within himself he doesn't look as if he's obviously up to to full pace it's a new spell for him bailey's currently got none none for 55 so he's he's bowling from the grand boot chain Bowls and this is short of a length and onto the back foot goes Cox who defends into the offside and there is no run. Sun so now certainly now out in all its glory and um, long may it continue. Bailey has got quite a longish run up. Gets there, turns, and comes running in to Cox in. Bowls, and Cox drives. Fluent shot, but once again, it goes straight to mid-off. And feel it at mid-off. The score remains on 219 for the loss of three. <coughs> Good afternoon to you, Kevin. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> they, they, they've been just like you. They've been working so hard that they they decided to give me give me a bit of a run. Just a few overs. Oh, well. You know what it's like. I can't put in more more than a little spell these days. But it could and be decisive. Could be a decisive spell. It can be Billy Bowles, and that's a good delivery. Brings Cox onto the front foot. He defends. Oh, on the offside. So. Uh, Maiden over there by Bailey. The score remains on 219 for three. Um, Wesley, he will face the next ball from Netherlands. He is on 28. Cox, 
Kopsky is on four. He's finding it a lot harder, Cox, to get the ball away. He's no fear. Some 26 deliveries for his four. And um, Lancashire doing their best to not just keep the score at a manageable rate, but trying to pick some wickets up. Nathan's done, Nathan Lyon's done the old Stuart Broad thing. He did it last week as well at Southampton of moving the bales, swapping the bales <laughs> over. He's just done it now. Well, he's just hoping for a change of luck. Yeah, uh, nine overs, one made no wicket for 20 so far for, for Lyon. And he's coming into bowl to Wesley. Now, Wesley's on 28, and that's worked away nicely, too. neatly. On the uh, on side, just gets the, the one. The weather, I tell you, you know, we... It, it's absolutely stupidly cold this morning, wasn't it? Stupidly cold this morning. However, I think if you're out there now and you just find a little spot that's not in the breeze, which is not that easy to do, and a little bit of sunshine, it's actually OK. It's sort of got OK out there in certain spots. But if you're forced to be out there for several hours, I guess that's not the case. Goes back and just works it, I say, through the legs, maybe to the right-hand side of the man at forward short leg. We'll pick up a couple this time. I have to be quick coming back. Skips out of the way of it. But uh, it wasn't, I imagine the batter was confident I was not going to hit side on on the, the stumps and therefore was able to do a bit of a skip, keep out of the way. So Cox has moved to six. Ever so pleased, um, just from an individual's point of view, for Jordan Cox, because what we're doing a lot, especially at the, it happens all through the season, but especially the start of the season, as we go back to Lyon, into Cox now, I don't want to talk him out, but he works it away, not for a single this time, has to make his way back in. But when players move on, and, and with the system as it is now, sometimes players actually make a loan move towards the end of one season with the eye on moving permanently the next, I know, but, you know, we were talking uh, a little with Jake Ball uh, over, over last weekend, and formerly of Notts, there for 15 years, moved on to Somerset and trying to settle in as Lyon comes around the wicket in bowls and work to the right hand side of Fort Short Leg there's a man down on the boundary so they'll just go through for one but looking for those early performances and an early statement performance to say not only to the supporters but perhaps almost even more importantly to the dressing room to your teammates this is what I'm going to bring to you as a group of players and he got some he, you know he's made a good steady start and got some runs in the, certainly in the in the last game as well so I'm ever so pleased for him he's currently on seven early stage of his uh, innings but Wesley is facing at the moment the captain the person who he's got to try and impress more than anybody else just pushed into the offside for no run but you know no matter what your experience and 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 where you've been what you've achieved it, it every time it's a fresh start isn't it every time yes of course I mean the the different challenges you know, every time you take on a new job. There's Lyon in bowls and forward to that, reaching for it, but keeps it down nicely for a single onto the onside. That is the end of well, that change in the bail didn't seem to make any difference. Uh, the score moves on to 224 for three. Lancashire having made 146. So a 78 runs lead. That is already, and with only three wickets down, looking like a very big challenge lying ahead of Lancashire here. Uh, Lions now got through 10 overs well made and no wicket for 25. But so there you've got players of a certain level and Jordan obviously still relatively early, young in his career. But I just wonder what, what Nathan Lyon makes of the expectation of, of what he's going to produce for Lancashire as well. Well, I mean, obviously he would be hoping that he can get a bag full of wickets um, for Lancashire. I think that would be his motivation for playing this season and obviously to help Lancashire to you know perhaps win a trophy but as you know his stint will not be as long as originally mm. thought because Australia want him to get some rest. I wonder if that does make him an impact obviously you know you take it day by day match by match but when you know you're not going to be there for the whole process. Bailey's in, balls, that's short, it's worked into the onside just off the hip by Wesley, but he can't score. Fielder really comes from mid wicket. There's two slips in the gully for Wesley, and son, I think Nathan Lyon would approve of this weather at the moment. It's we sun. all improve a bit. <laughs> the sun is out. <laughs> I think bit. this morning he would not have enjoyed that too much. His fingers would have been cold and oh, yeah. smooth, not being able to grip the ball properly. Yes. At least with the. Sunshine now, there's a bit of warmth that he can 
get those fingers moving as Bailey is in and balls to Wesley and Wesley is right forward to a foolish delivery and strokes it up to mid on and there's no run. Yeah, very true, very true. See, some people I think leading up to this round of matches were saying this is the week that we should have been started mm -hmm. the season, not not two weeks ago and and almost it's, it's come to bite us in the bottom almost by the fact that it's so cold. We had all, obviously had all the, the rain and and, and you know, the very wet, soggy outfields. But actually, it was relatively warm first two weeks. This now is bitterly cold. It is. Bailey's in now. Balls are mostly forward to a good delivery. And the ball runs off the face of the bat up to backward point, and there's no run. I think. I think Sam Northeast might just agree with you. He'd be he'd be quite pleased. It started two weeks ago. Yeah. To get to get to start off the season with 3:35. That. I, I, I don't feel sorry for, for the batters because I think they have received the credit they probably deserve. But all this talk of the Kookaburra and how much so easy, you know, difficult it's been for the bowlers and, and that sort of thing. Bailey's in and that's good delivery. A little bit wide. When Wesley comes forward, allows that to go through. Wesley's on 30, cop 7. But, you know, from, from your experience, where you are with what you've achieved in the game as, uh, you know, uh, uh, as a batter, to, you know, a century, a double hundred, then a, a triple century for, for, for Sam as well uh, uh, along the way. Just share with us just what that takes. To get to three figures is one thing, but then to go on and keep going, no matter what the ball, no matter what the pitch, the circumstances. We wait for Bailey now in bowls. Why did he off stump? Offers no shot. And the thing is about, about batting is that when you are, when things are going well, you know, you, you've got to try and cash in. So the day that the ball's hitting the middle of the bat and runs are flowing, you know, you've got to keep going because the next day it's a brand new start. You don't, you know, when you go out there, you don't start from a few hundred not out. You don't really start from a hundred. <laughs> that first ball again is, yeah. is so, you know, batting is such that when you get the chance, you've got to make the most of it because the day's going to come where you're going to get the first ball or you're going to get a bad decision or you're going to get run out or something like that and then yeah. you know, a couple of those and, and, and it, the game changes so it's about confidence and confidence comes from scoring runs so mid-wicket goes up to deep square and this delivery is short but Wesley still stands up straight defends it back to Bailey that was the final delivery of the over 224 for 3 and the concentration as well that I, I think must be must be required because the word boring has been used a few times in, in certain circumstances by certain people over the last couple of weeks uh, as a batter when it seems as if the surface is flat and the boulders are struggling and it's coming out of the middle of the bat in all seriousness now I think there might be a one word answer for you here but it, it is, is that also a, a potentially tricky time for the batter as well, if it seems as if, you know, it's just one thing that's, that's happening here and runs are being scored? And sometimes the pitch can be slow, so it's not necessarily that the runs are coming quickly either, but, you know... you Well, it can, because, you, you know, when, when it's perceived, it's never easy, but when it's perceived to be easy, that's when you're, you're most vulnerable, mm. because that's when you're likely to make, you know, the, the most mistakes. Yeah. So... You know, in those conditions, it, it calls for good it calls for good discipline and, and good concentration because, you know, you, you know you don't want to give it away. So Cox is on seven, and Nathan Lyon is in again and bowls, and this one is driven up towards not Nathan Lyon, although he has his Nathan Lyon's jumper on. That's uh, Bailey, I think, with the, the right arm throw. Uh, down to the keeper's end. But it is Lyon who is... Bowling from this Sir Alistair Cook end. Very, very, very um, grateful to our colleague Glenn for just rem helping me remember, because I don't remember many things, <laughs> as to which end is, is which as Lyon comes in and bowls and forward into the offside. No run off the bat of Wesley, who is now on 30. But OK, so even I know as a northerner that, that London's that way. <laughs> so that's Graham Gucci's end <laughs> at that end towards East London. Up there, but um, yeah, lovely bump. In it. Well, I say bumping. I came out to see you two out in the middle at lunchtime. Nice little five minutes that for me. Uh, goes back and worked away 
Square onside for a single for the Essex captain. He moves to 31 and takes his team score to 226 for three now. That's 80 runs in front. I, I didn't want to, to pry. You've been out there for, I think, about five, ten minutes before I got out there. But lovely because uh, Stuart, the groundsman, was here as, uh, with you as well, having, yeah. having a nice little chat. That's, uh, Lion. Bowls a little quicker. Oh, in the air, just out of the reach of the man. I say out of the reach. I mean, he didn't even attempt to dive, but for one moment I thought it might have been an opportunity. Just yeah, worked to his right hand side. If there was a backward short leg, but forward short leg went right away to his to his right. Conversation from Wesley was at the non striker's end with Lion here because it's Cox facing at the moment. I'm not too sure what Lion said, but there's a bit of a chat between the two of them. Cox is on eight. Right-handed Cox, and it comes round the wicket, does Lyon, in the bowls, and again, quite quick, but this time it's uh, more on the ground. Have to be quick with the running, is Wesley this time to the striker's end, with a right arm throw coming in from Williams, but they make it's their been, ground score now, 227 for 381 in front. It's been interesting watching Nathan Lyon operate today, tend to bowl... Well, more leg side in and out, excuse me, just for a second. Defensively, no run. Sorry, go on. He's sent the ball more leg side -ish. His ball straight. Um, a lot of the time to the right hand is his ball around the wicket. So that's interesting. And obviously, he recognised there wasn't much spin. So then do the over, but carry on. Yeah, but um, I thought he would perhaps. I wanted to see him ball over the wicket and threaten the outside edge as well. But his line, I guess he's trying to just. Be as tight as possible, so he's bowling around the wicket and bowling a tight line with a well set feel. Will that be because of the lead that's being built up here? Or well, what, I would what, think what do you probably think would the thinking I think, process be? I think the surface, the lack of the lack of turn, lack of sharp turn, you would you know, you just settle really for bowling lots of overs and you know, keeping it tight and picking up wickets that way. So uh, the end of of that over, so he's bowled 11 overs as Nathan Lyon, one maiden, no wicket for 28, two wickets for Balderson, two for 61, one for Will Williams, is one for 46. Bailey's got 15 overs under his belt for 55, another week, five overs for 33, a little bit expensive there. So that's the bowling as, as we've seen so far. We're going to see a change of bowling here. Um, is it Blatherwick coming on? Who's coming on now? Who's coming on to bowl here? Number four on the old card. Jack Blatherwick. It is Blatherwick. Blatherwick yes. thank, thank you very much, Glenn, for the confirmation. He starts his running now, Blatherwick. <coughs> it and bowls, and that's wide, wide of the off stump. Just pushed up and on this occasion. Cox not having anything to do with it. Owes it to go through to the keeper. And Sun really out now, which is... Oh, look at this. Everybody now this this, good, this is reckless down in front of us. Look, <laughs> yeah, this is reckless. Oh, no, he's putting... Oh, he's keeping he his woolly hat on, but he's taking his jumper off. Yep. <laughs> the feel-good feel factor when the sun comes out. Yeah, he's got his shirt sleeves and his woolly hat on. Uh, what a lovely colour as well, lovely mustard. By the way, he's in his six over an hour bowls, and that's wide upside the off stump, and that just died on the pitch really no real pace there. he looks a little bit stiff at the moment the bath of it cold well I was going to say I think uh, there's not much I can empathize with cricketers out there but feeling just a bit stiff in the cold wind I, I can yeah especially if you're you're a bowler you have a you have a stint get nice and warm and then you have to go into the outfield and yeah cool down and then the bowler the captain calls on you to come and have another spell it it's not an easy thing to do, as Batherick bowls, and that's a good delivery, brings him forward. Cox met with the face of the bat, which is it out on the offside, and Cox, you know, he's finding it quite difficult as well. He's now faced 35 deliveries for his nine. <coughs> Wesley, on the other hand, he got off to a pretty sharp start. Now he's on 31, scored 227. For the loss of three. Still 52 overs remaining in the day's play. Change of field. Mid wicket goes to deep square leg. And he's bowling Blatherick with two slips and a gully. Backward point, extra cover mid off. He's in and bowls, and that's driven firmly 
Wilcox up to mid off. There's a deep mid off, so he can't score. That was a nice looking shot as he stretched out onto the front foot and just punched it up to mid off. 16 overs to a new ball as well available. That both seems relatively short, but also perhaps if you're out there at <laughs> the bowl, that's far too long. But hedging and moving ever closer to that chance where maybe they get a bit more opportunity. Four dot balls to brother in balls. That's driven for four. Mm. Full length delivery and nicely timed by Cox onto the front foot. And driving past the diving fielder at mid-off. Ball races across the outfield and into the boundary for four. And that was a lovely shot. Full length delivery. Is, it, is this is, is this a serious? No, this, uh, th the player's gone down. How serious is this? I think he's hurt his, his right shoulder. I think he's going to be all right. He took a little while to get back up there. So, yeah. so uh, it's Josh. Josh Bohannon. Yeah, he made a huge dive to his right, the ball was travelling a little bit too quickly so Cox goes to 13, the score goes to 231 and the final delivery of this first over after and this one is cut over the slip for four short and wide and Blatherick continues to leak runs here at Chelmsford now his six over has been completed with that delivery, now he's gone for 41 so Things not going well at all for Jack Blatherick. His, his overs, previous delivery, drawn for four, and then that one cut high over the slip region. No third man in place, so another boundary, 235 for three. Am I wide of the mark to say that there's not been any real concentrated, long enough period of pressure put upon? Essex here today so far. So you, you know you've had you've some decent bowling and, and whatever, but never you know not that string of, of bowlers from both ends keeping up that pressure for for any real length of, length of time. Well, there was just a period where I think Bailey and and, <coughs> and Williams were able to do that. Um, unfortunately, every time Blatherick has come into the attack, he's leaked a couple of boundaries, That's which has right, yeah. opened it up again. Um, obviously. At the moment, he's, he looks obviously short of confidence. Mm -hmm. um, just really struggling. Maybe he, the fact he hasn't been given too many overs also is a problem because. Well, Nathan Lyons coming in for his 12th over now, and he's going to ball to Wesley. In and bowls full and driven. Nice flourish of a drive actually out there through extra cover. Keaton Jennings will pump those legs and he'll try and get to it before the rope pulls it. Oh dear, one of the most agonising roads. I, I, I hate that for a poor old feeder. Fielder. You run, you run, you run, you get to it just in time before the rope, but all you do is just help it sort of sway and you push it further onto the rope. It's four runs. Yeah, <laughs> nice shot that. Just a push drive to the right of extra cover. Jennings made a valiant effort to try and haul it back before it crossed the line. It was not end. successful. Yeah, just, just palmed it a bit further on towards the rope, just a bit further round. But Lyon in bowls, goes back and worked on the onside this time by Wesley, who will get one. He'll move to 36, take Essex to 2.41 for three now. That's 95, 94 runs in front of this lead. If you anything to do with Lancashire, you are just not enjoying this because this is, this is more than a platform now, isn't it? This really is rubbing in some dominance here as Lyon again bowls and kept down which was very important because it went straight to the man at forward short leg but mm. turned it to Cox on 17 and keeping it down just a little higher off the bat that could have popped up but no did well so Lyon to his mark again bowling from this near end is the Sir Alistair Cook end the commentary box end as well it comes around the wicket and goes back defensively into the offside. I was interested in at least one, if not two, former Australian internationals. Certainly Michael Clark was involved, piling in a little bit on Cricket Australia's decision to actually reduce the number of games that Nathan Lyon was supposed to be playing. Um, he's not really, I think, needed by Australia until November as he comes in and bowls and looking to sweep this. That's nicely played by Jordan Cox. That's going to be four runs, very fine on the leg side. Not surprised to punch the gloves. There always is, I guess, but I think that really was a deserved punch of the gloves from his captain to Jordan yeah, Cox there. Four yeah. runs. Yeah, 
think this one probably is a little bit straightish as well. So we're taking the chance, but struck it off the middle of the bat. So it's 2.44 for three, 98 in front now, Cox to 21. Nathan Lyon in again and bowls and goes back and defended by Cox and completes another over and still no breakthrough for the GOAT for Nathan Lyon. 12 overs, one maiden, no wicket for 37. And he's, he's been under bigger pressure <laughs> in bigger circumstances in his career. But I'm sure that it is just sort of ticking away somewhere. I need to, uh, need to get some wickets for my team here now. Yeah, I'm sure, but uh, the pitch really is not going to offer him a, a great deal. He's using his experience to try and change the length, change the flight, change the pace. But it's not a lot happening because the surface is not conducive to spin bowling. So 240, 443. The lead is 98. And um, Blathery. <laughs> to Wesley in balls short outside the off stump and Wesley on this occasion decides to leave that one alone he probably could have cut it but being quite cautious he just played no shot ball goes through to the keeper 244 for three Wesley's on 36 and Blatherick Blatherick thought he bowled better from the others to cook in actually did you? he got the ball to come through at a decent pace he yeah. Seems to be having a bit of a problem running down the hill. Let's see how he goes now as he's in bowls, and that's a good delivery. Brings Wesley right forward, takes one step down the pitch, and then, then defends solidly out on the offside. So he stays on 36. You've inadvertently um, just raised a bit of an issue I have over this end and the naming of this end here. As you just said, Alistair Cook, you didn't give him his knighthood. Sorry, sorry. And, sorry, and, sorry, I, sorry. and, I, and I, I'm just wondering whether that, <laughs> that at times, because you can't keep on giving the full thing every time, can you? No, you can't keep giving Sir Alistair Cook all the time. So I think it's either from Sir's end or from Alistair Cook's end, I think. Rather it bowls. That's a good delivery. Just turns him around a bit there, Wesley. And eventually defends it on the offside. We had the sure, same I'm problem sure. down at Taunton, because one of the ends there is Marcus Triscothic. And that for some reason, Triscothic can take a long time to, mm. to get out as well. So all sorts of ideas were thrown forward, such as Banger's End, which is his <laughs> nickname. Um, <laughs> but actually, I think he got quite upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to go back to Marcus Triscothic. <laughs> Don't know why. Blatherick bowls. And that's driven firmly up to Minorf. He was aiming more towards extra cover. But it's a foolish delivery, wide delivery. He got away with that one again, brother. I think perhaps he needs to switch ends and come from this Alistair Cook end. But then you're asking your captain to put Lion on at the other end, aren't you? I'm, I'm guessing. <coughs> well, maybe, or when Lion's finished, bring Bather at this end. Yeah. Change in feel. He's removed the mid wicket and he's gone to deep square leg. Blatherick in now and bowls and short of a length and Wesley stands up straight and just defends back to the bowler. This time Blatherick gets talking to from the umpire who's not happy with sighting that he's running on the pitch so he would have to be careful and just, just come a little bit wider. I wouldn't want to mess with umpire Wolf, he's a big lad isn't he? If he wants you to do something or well, stop doing something, I suggest you do. Yes, he's got one ball left in this over and he's in and bowls. That's a good delivery. And defended into the offside. So a maiden over for Blatherick. He'd be happy with that. That no runs were conceded. So at the end of the over, Essex was 244 for three. Just as he's happy with that, he's getting a talking to from the umpire. Give him a break, ump. Give him a break. He just had a, had a better over. Well, uh, you'll be pleased to know, Roland, that I've, I've put in my Sunday order with Anne's pantry. You have? Yeah. Um, she, she was trying to tempt me with her cakes again today. It was Anne. I said, Anne, it's a Saturday. I can't, I, they, they look beautiful. I said, but I, I, not today, Anne. I said, but tomorrow. Um, and she said, what's your, what's your favourite? I said, uh, she was wanting to do some of that, that bread cake. I said, 
lemon drizzle for me, Anne. <laughs> and and she and I said, if you don't mind, Anne, if you, if you just keep me one of the end slices as well, because it, do you like lemon drizzle? Okay, but <laughs> some people, some people, pe pe people, people will the, the, the like the lemon drizzle. They'll know what I mean by the end slice. You always get somehow it's a crispier end with a bit more sugar <laughs> on it. So Anne was very kind. She said she'd put that aside for me tomorrow. She says Sunday treat, Anne. Sunday treat. So I'm looking forward to that. Anne's pantries tomorrow. She's been here for a few years now. as Anne pantries, hasn't she? Uh, so we've got Nathan, Nathan Lyon in bowls and goes back and oh through the legs at forward short leg off the bat of, of Cox. So he remains on 21. So it's, it's actually one of the delightful things about a new season going around grounds, meeting old friends and also things like seeing Anne and, and the catering department here and everything. It's really good fun. There's Nathan Lyon in a little quicker, goes back and defends does Cox. Up and down the country, we have our favourites. Used to be Carol's Cabin at Derby. Carol's Cabin, that was good. <laughs> I don't know what happened to poor old Carol. Anyway. <laughs> You'll find that I know all about the eating at these grounds. <laughs> Nathan Lyon. Bowls. A little flourish there of a drive as well through uh, the mid-off area. And Jennings, who's fielding very deep, comes round to the right. And it's one run. So Cox to 22, 245 for three, 99 runs in front now this league. Kevin, le lemon drizzle on it, so it's not going to be very filling, is it? No, but the taste, the, the beautiful taste. Well, and you're right, you need three slices, <laughs> perfectly right. <laughs> Lion in, and again, worked away, lovely, beautiful, through the onside, and fairly square for a single, so the, the runs are just ticking along here a little. So what is, it, what is the main course for tomorrow then? The main course? Well, I, I have a man who, who goes there in, uh, these days and gets me a nice salad from one of the local shops. It's, it's the Reedmeister. He's been very kind to me. I'm a bit worried how he's going to do it tomorrow on a Sunday. But anyway, going back now then. Oh, just for a moment. I was a little fuller, quicker. Thought it might have had the undoing of Cox, but no. Yeah, so salad tomorrow. Um, uh, Look, look at this. I've put on so much weight in the first two weeks of the season. It's, it's not good for me at my age, Roland. So I've got to try and make an effort. Back to the cricket. Nathan Lyon. In, around the wicket. In and down the leg side. It's helped on its way just for a single. At the moment, it's not easy. And, and Roland would be the first to tell us that, of course. But at the moment, this looks fairly settled from Essex. They're, 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 they're up... You know, they're putting up a really good resistance to Lyon. Blatherwick still fighting his feet. Lyon's bowled 30, Nova's one maiden, no wickets for 40. The lead is over 100 now, 101 for Essex. And this pair, they're doing OK. They're doing more than OK. And the team that is certainly doing more than OK. They're, we're only in the early stages. It's been a bit disrupted, of course, because of the weather and all sorts. But, gosh, I'm looking at this Essex team and I'm starting to think that Surrey have got some challenges. They have some challenges. They, they, they pushed it fairly close last season. But they seem to have picked up and carried on from there. Well, that would be good. In the healthy competition is is what you want. You don't want to know when the season started who's going to win, who the winner is going to be at that point. You need some you need some other teams to challenge. As Blatherick comes in. Bowls, that's a bunker, and really short, so it goes high over the head of the batsman, and it's a no ball call, and also one for the over. So, 2.49 at the moment for three. And Blatherick just banging that into the Blatherick, banging that ball into the turf. It just really stood up way, way, way over the batsman's head. So, He's operating from the Graham Gooch in. Bowls, and that's turned neatly off the pads all the way up to the deep square leg. He's only going to get a single. And the 250 comes up here for Essex. Generous applause from the supporters who have braved this early start weather to the season and come out and supported their team. They acknowledge that Essex have taken a significant lead now of 104. And at the stairs, they've only lost three wickets. So 
Wesley comes on strike, Cox is on 24, Wesley's on 37, he's facing Bladerick now and bowls and this one is picked through the onside for four. Short and just whipped through mid-wicket, there is a deep square leg and there is a mid-on and that was beautifully played there by Wesley just getting on top of it, clipping it through mid-wicket for four so Bladerick has given up another boundary and things not going well for him at all. Fair to say that was a vacant area out there. Very vacant, very vacant. Lovely um, and open and he, he found it beautifully. But the bowler needs to not bowl there to help uh, help the batter find that space. And is there going to be a change here now? Th there is. Well, he's moving mid on towards mid wicket, but with that feel, he can't pitch the ball up because if he pitches it up anywhere straight, he's going to get driven down the ground. So he's might have been better to maybe remove one of those slips in bowls, and that's worked to the left of the mid-wicket fielder who does the fielding instead he gets a single so Wesley goes on now to 42 with a score out to 255 for three lead 109 I did notice actually that the captain Jettings to your man there at mid-wicket he was sort of motioning um, just as the boat was about to come in like a uh, like a goalkeeper for a penalty he was mm. going a little bit to the right a little mm. bit to the left in other words you've got a lot of areas you might need to cover out there huge area as Cox is on straight now and he bowls and that's turned him around but he's going to get a single as it comes off the other half the bat runs out to a backward point fielder comes in off the boundary who does the fielding so the 50 run partnership is up in some 60 minutes 90 balls and Essex taking full control of this game the score now 256 for three Fox goes for 25 very strong and position here obviously for the home team this afternoon we're only on what the second day and this lead at 110 seven wickets standing and I'm told the forecast is not great, but that's whether that look after itself. But I'm told the forecast is not great for Monday, so they might need to be a bit mindful of that right. later today, tomorrow. But they're in having removed the slip, and this one is struck firmly to mid wicket. That's where the slip fielder was take, was put to feel. He came out a second slip to mid wicket, and I think that's a better feel because you know, he's struggling a bit, so. He, can't just over attack. You want to. You want to be able to bowl a couple of overs, tight overs, which gives him the confidence. After that, you know, he's straining to try and get a wicket and serving up some deliveries to be scored off. Two fifty-six for three. Wesley on strike and bowls, and that's outside the off stump. Plays no shot. It was suited to be keeper over completed. Bather has none. He has figures of none for fifty. And at the end of that over, the lead's 110, and Essex are 256 for three. Bit of a comfort break for the captain. Either that, or he's running off to get a few words of advice from, from Dale Benkenstein. And the coaching team there, I think probably comfort break is, is more the point. But yes, Essex in such a strong, strong position on this second day of round three. They've, they've felt huge frustration that, that the weather beat them. Um, although I was very pleased, if, if you don't mind me saying that, I shouldn't say this because there will be many Kent um, supporters here, but I was, I was very pleased for 18-year-old Jaden Denley, I think, who put up a little bit of resistance towards the end. Got a duck, he was on his debut, he was 18 years of age, he's playing with his uncle Joe in the team. And I think he got a, a, a faced, four, uh, got 41 off quite a few balls, and this one is just drilled down into the ground at forward short leg. So, you know, and he got a duck first things does well whatever the Essex might be thinking they certainly had the better of the match still it required some resistance there so you know a young player just starting out you're always happy when that, that sort of thing happens something to, to build on as Nathan Lyon comes around the wicket and drilled just to the right hand side actually been a few of those where the field have just thrown themselves just at the wrong moment haven't been able to um, put a stop on it and therefore they'll go through for two. Don't want to make too much of, of that particular instant or, or them generally but at 258 for three 112 in front. Actually if you do get some some fielding that maybe a stop there and, and something that sometimes will actually lift a fielding team. Yeah, he really should, um, have, he should have fielded that. He should have done, really. shouldn't he? Yeah. That um, difficult to... 
No, that was Matthew Hurst. Next ball is bowled and pushed there onto the lake side, and there will be no run. It wasn't Matthew Hurst, of course, he's the keeper. It was uh, Josh Bohannon, forgive me. Um, so, Lyon comes around the wicket in the bowls and down the leg side. A little juggle there from Hurst in the end. But cleanly taken, eventually. Half an hour till tea. Tea is set at four o'clock this afternoon. It's a change in the playing hours on the second day following the weather interruptions of yesterday. Quicker from Lyon again to the right hand side. Cox will pick up a single there and he will move to 28. Essex 259 for three. A lead of 113. Seeing some what seems to be simple stuff, but you know, th those. Those shots he's playing it could easily just pop up to the man at Fort Short Lake, but he's managing to control them and keep them away from that danger area. Rollers, uh, line comes in and bowls and driven, and that's found a lovely gap. Square on the offside. Again, plenty of space. Squarely finds that boundary, and that's where you get the applause from the home support. And Nathan Lyon here, after 14 overs, has now gone for 47 runs. We'll take a look at that again on the replay. But a lovely shot. Beautifully timed, and there's nobody out there to cut that off. So that was going to be four all the way. And 263 for three, a lead of 117. Cox, 28. Wesley on, on 46. So for all the fact that line is asking questions, both the experienced Wesley and lesser experienced Cox, they're, they're playing him well and 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 fairly, fairly well controlled really in the, in the way they're going about things. I'm just going to move aside. I'm not too sure who's going to come in, Glenn or Scott, but over to you. <coughs> Yes, full you will get a break eventually. Full, don't and, worry. full and wide and dispatched to the boundary for four. And I think Scott is also going to come in here, so we're going to have a, a double break. I'll do this last over um, as Blatherick will continue to mm. bowl to Cox. Bowls and Cox is out caught at mid wicket, short ball, and he's pulled across the line and just helped it straight to the fielder who had been put at mid-wicket, so he has to go and he will not be too happy with that dismissal because it really was just short of a length, no great pace in it and he's just managed to pull it straight into the fielder's hand there at short mid-wicket who takes the catch. I think the term is, is it clothed it, 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 it. It, for, the, for the amount of effort he put into the shot, you're expecting that to fly away over mid-wicket, yeah. and, in, and in the end, it's gone very slowly to the man at mid-wicket. Just, just didn't get hold of it at all. And Cox goes for 28 from 54 deliveries, and he'll be disappointed with that because these two had formed a good platform to go on. 263 for four. Yeah, he'll be very disappointed. So with that break, I would probably step aside now also, and, and Scott will... I've got you your wicket, Scott, so you can uh, <laughs> you can come in. You can come in now. Yes, you can leave. Uh, <laughs> Roland Roland departs. 263 for four is the Essex score, and we'll bring Scott in. So Lancashire, that's a good comeback, really, from them after lunch. I managed to get rid of Sam Cook, got rid of Dean Elgar, and now they've removed the danger man, Jordan Cox, who if he had got into his stride, Scott. It yeah. could have been really destructive. So it's probably a timely dismissal from Lancashire's perspective. I think it is. And I'm pleased for Jack Blatherwick. He has, uh, he's stuck at it. He's not had uh, the best of days. But uh, I like Jack and I like watching him bowl. He's really kind of wholehearted and he, he, he's fully committed and runs in hard and gives everything he's got. It's not quite worked for him so far in the match but he's got a bit of reward there he's got a wicket hopefully that will just help uh, kind of kick him on a little bit and get his uh, his season started it was nice to see the Lancashire players all go up to him and uh, and and kind of give him a tap on the head and a bit of encouragement and stuff so that's good for for Jack Blatherwick look I, I think uh, Lancashire have um, yeah I think they've, they've plugged away haven't they as best they can it's a uh, it's a pretty tough position to be in um, when you when you're behind as Lancashire are. Essex are in a very still in a very strong position. They've now got Matt Critchley to come out, who's, who's been in, already been in really good form this season for Essex. So there's still a lot of work to do. But yeah, I agree, Glenn. They've since lunch, um, they've kind of stuck at it. I think as best they can. They've bowled pretty tight in spells and they've kept going. 
Here's Blatherwick then, five balls to go in this over. Is in and bowling to the new batter, who is Matt Critchley. And I'm going to say something that sounds stupid now as well. Not for the first time, some would say. But 263 for four, so Essex lead by 117 runs. But Lancashire have, and yes, I know the lead's 117 runs, but Essex haven't got away in, in, terms, of, in terms of smacking it to Walshop and, and it just falling apart for Lancashire. You know, use the term plugging away. They have kept going and runs have come here and there, but, but not, not in a massive cluster. No, they've, 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 they've bowled pretty tightly. I think they've had that little spell with Williams and Balderston combination, which worked well for them. Blatherwick in again to Critchley, who drives up a slightly uppish, just away from the body, but he'll certainly pick up two runs here just behind square on the offside. 265 for four, and Critchley is up and running, fresh from 151 not out against Kent last time out. So I think those two set the tempo a little bit in the, through, through the course of the afternoon. I think they bowled 12 overs on the spin together, and it was a really tight spell. They, 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 nothing really happened. Essex weren't really going anywhere. So they, they, they had that little period, I think, as I've done commentary at the time. It's probably the first time that, that Keaton Jennings has felt like he's got a bit of control here from his bowlers. So that, that was kind of the, the, the main base of it, that Williams bowlers and 12 over spell this afternoon. And the others have kind of backed it up, I think. This next one from Blatherwick to Critchley has the batter just playing defensively from the crease for no run up to mid off 265 for four two balls to go of the 70th over still 46.2 left in the day i suppose that's about the best you can do um from a bowling side is is just try and bowl as tightly as you can try and just try and dry things down try and slow things up a little bit um which is what they've done um yeah i think they've they've, they've plugged away as, as well as they could do today Plugging away is again 152 so far for Blatherwick. Two slips, uh, short, and Critchley just rides the bounce and gently just helps that around the corner to deep backwards square and jogs through for another single. 266 for four, so the lead is 120 runs. And Wesley just does a little bit of gardening. He's got himself to 46. And good time as well from 65. Yeah, he has. He's played with good tempo, hasn't he? Yeah. he, he I mean, he, he had that lovely platform to, to try and come out and bat with when he he um, joined Elgar straight after lunch because Essex were, were already in front in the match and it was a nice way for him to come out and start his innings and he has he has bubbled along at quite a nice little tempo. Blatherwick to round off the 70th over then. He's into Wesley, works that to short mid-wicket and there'll be no run there either so that's the end of the over 266 for four the lead is 120 still to come for Essex Michael Pepper the wicket keeper got himself a 40 odd against Kent he scores quickly Noah Thane Simon Harmer Shane Snater and Jamie Porter all of those with respect to Jamie Porter all of those bar him like to give it a bit of a biff so <laughs> maybe she can get there we might might be in for a few fireworks later on well that's all right isn't it for Essex but they want that that biffing <laughs> to happen a little bit later on one they've still got proper batters here and um, still with some to come so um, there's 46 overs left today so that uh, that that those guys that can come in and give it a bit of a wallop that can happen from an exit point of view a little bit later on they can still just play nice and steady here can't they and just try to keep building this this lead it's already 120 you know like a show already going to have to score a lot more than they did in their first innings you would think to, to just to get level in the match when they come out to bat second time round. Here's Nathan Lyon from around the wicket and it's Matt Critchley he uh, just defends away to mid wicket there's no run with his short sleeves on big strapping lad Critchley twirls his batter and uh, settles back into his crease with a forward short leg, leg slip and a slip and Lions off spin from around the wicket to Critchley and that's turned away into the onside and through he goes for a quick single Critchley moves on to four now it's 268 for four I don't think this is a pitch that Nathan Lyon will want to be rolling up and putting in his back pocket and taking around the country with him to be perfectly honest with you because it's, it's offered so very little for him so far he's gone through all his variations mm. but with no success none for 48 for him no he's not he, the, the last week at Hampshire I don't think was something that he'll <laughs> remember well neither he's uh, laying in it's a little bit flatter and quicker and that's turned out towards the leg side there's no run it's not phoning up the Australian board going actually you know you said you wanted to cut it short <laughs> you couldn't just cut it short or run a couple could you is it? <laughs> 
But yeah, it wasn't, uh, he's not had too much to work with so far. It might be a bit better when he gets back to Manchester in a few weeks. That's uh, Wesley off the front foot trying to work the ball away. Flicked out towards deep backwards square leg. I love watching here, I mean, love watching Simon Harmer as well because, you know, okay, leggies have all their variations. You can sort of pick them, but with the finger spinners, it's a bit, from this distance, it's a bit harder to mm. pick their variations, but they're always doing something different, both Lyon and Harmer, and that's why they're so successful. Forward goes Wesley in defence. There's no run. Whether it's a bit quicker, a bit slower, a bit more flight, just a slightly different grip across the ball, and one that goes on, one that goes the other way. It just, just, it, I think it's just it's such a craft. Well, he's uh, back in and bowling. Forward goes Wesley in defence. And there's no runs. It's the single off the over. Lead of 121 for Essex. It's 267 for four. So Essex continue to build. So just the one run off the over. Just run rate just over three and three quarters at the moment. But credit must go to Lancashire. Three wickets in this afternoon session. I say they're back in the game, but to keep themselves in the game. The weather forecast is OK for the next couple of days as well. Monday might be a bit iffy here and there, but certainly today has been OK. There's a few spots of rain on my windscreen as I made my way down the A12 this morning to the county ground, but the breeze has blown a lot of the cloud through today as well. We've got some lovely blue sky around the county ground right now as well, but not warm enough for the spectators around the ground to take off overcoats and indeed not warm enough for a few of them to take off their woolly hats either. So it's going to be Blatherwick to continue from the Graham Gooch end. Bowling with two slips is in now and Critchley just rides the bounce defensively out to the offside for no run. Surrey batting against Kent now, 18 without loss, replying to Kent's 244 all out. Critchley just goes down, there's a bit of gardening. He's had to wait a long time for his opportunity, coming in at one further down the order than he would normally because of the night watchman. Sam Cuckoo, if you missed it, fell agonisingly short of a maiden first-class half-century. Blatherwick into Critchley once again, and Critchley on the walk, pushes up to mid-on for no run. He'd done so well, Sam Cook, and in the first ball after lunch, edged into the hands of Keaton Jennings at first slip and dragged himself off the pitch. He did, didn't he? It took an age to get off. But nevertheless, his highest first-class score and a, a good job done for Essex as well. More than you would expect from a night watchman. 46 to Wesley, 4 to Critchley. As Blatherwick turns once again, a little shuffle at the start of his run. He's in now, right arm over and bowling to Critchley, who again, with a bit more timing, goes up to the man at mid-on, but gets too much on it. And it races to him, so there's no possibility of a run. I mentioned this morning that there was three batters that were night watchmen last night. They were batting again through the morning session and they were all started really well. But I don't know if any of them got to 50 or not. But we met, obviously, we just mentioned that Sam Cook fell a run short again to 50. There was um, George. Dave, yeah, Davey fell short at some with Somerset, didn't he? I think. Right, OK. I think. I'll have a look. You could have a little skip through there, but they all did very well. It's Blatherwick in and bowling to. Critchley and there'll be no run there. The third delivery of this over, incidentally, I think I was remiss of me to say was a no ball. So we'll have an extra delivery in this <laughs> over, 269 for four. Yeah, they did, the old fell short. So David got to 45 and George Garrett got to 48. Wow. Sam Cook got to 49. So the old just fell short, the night watchman. They all did the job though. Yep, more and, and a little bit more besides as well. And that's all you can ask for. Won't stop them kicking something when they got back to the changing room though. It's Blatherwick's in to Critchley, forces this time to square leg. There's a slight shuffle, a slight pause, a mid-wicket conversation shall we, shan't we? But meantime, square legs misfielded it anyway, Luke Wells, so they can come through for the single. But um, there were high-level talks before they agreed on the single, 270 for four. Yeah, it's just a little uncertain, that wasn't it? But uh, needed a, a, a clean pickup. it would have needed a direct hit and even then it might not have been enough. Fortunately, yes for Essex, they didn't get the yes, no, sorry, as which is the old thing in club cricket, isn't it? Yeah, no, oh, sorry. <laughs> Too late. It's Blatherwick is in. And that's allowed to go outside off stump this time by Wesley, who's four short of his half century as well. We've still got the heater on in 
the uh, commentary box here. She's just about doing enough to keep us from putting the coats on. <laughs> I'm not taking the gilet off today. I went next. I went next door, and then and the, the camera operator was in there having a lunch. More than that in a second. Blatherwick turns in the distance at the end of his run. This is the seventh ball of this over, so it'll be the final one, unless he oversteps again. He's in and bowled in, and Wesley drives and drives nicely, and it's tipped back onto the stumps by Blatherwick on his follow-through, but Critchley is safely in his ground. Good reactions. That's the end of the over. 270 for four yards. Next door, and the camera operator was, was having a lunch in there during the interval. We were just chatting away. I said, oh, it's nice and warm in here. I said, so, do you know, in, I said, you know, in the commentary box, it's almost colder than it is outside. And she gave me such a disdainful <laughs> look when she's just away to our left-hand side and she's standing out there for the entirety of the play. And I went, I've just spouted nonsense. She went, if you want to come and stand outside with me to find out exactly what it's like, then be my guest. I demurred and said, maybe not. 270 for four. Well, we've got 15 minutes before we get to tea on this uh, second day. Tom Banton's out for Somerset. He's gone for 83, but uh, they lead there by 121 runs against Nottinghamshire. Nice to see him playing first-class cricket. I, mean, I, don't, I, I couldn't quite work out what the situation with Tom Banton. The other year I was at Taunton, it didn't seem he was playing too much first-class cricket. Well, he wasn't being picked anywhere in the championship side, but... Well, he was in the England white ball setup, wasn't he? Mm. For, for a, what, what seemed like quite a brief spell, but he, but he was in there, and I think maybe that was where he was thinking about becoming a specialist, but playing a bit of red ball stuff. Doesn't matter what you play these days, it's the same approach, isn't it? <laughs> it seems to be for some players, anyway. Right, lion to Critchley. Mm. And uh, Critchley is edged and taken by Jennings at first slip. And Lyon gets his first wicket of the match. Critchley goes for five, and uh, Lancashire have got Essex five down now. 270 for five, lead of 124, and uh, first success of the day for Nathan Lyon. Yeah, like that. Right arm around to the right-handed batter across Critchley, who just gesticulates with his hand as to what the ball has done, and nicely taken at first slip. So this is a good spell. Good spell here for Lancashire. Still 124 behind, but they're working their way through. 270 for five now with Michael Pepper to come in next. So good comeback from Lancashire. Good professional cricket this is from them. And Critchley wanders off out for five. Luke Wells who took the catch as well at first slip. Or first slip, the only slip. There were 200 for two Essex, now 270 for five. Once the uh, departure of Sam Cook, after the departure of Sam Cook. So, yeah, they've, they've uh, yeah, just a, what we were saying a few moments ago, they've, they've stuck at it really well through the course of the afternoon and just um, getting some reward for their patience and the way well, they've tried to, to bowl, they've tried to bowl and give nothing away really and try and slow things down and see if they can chip away at the, the Essex card and just try and even out the match but it, it still is in a, obviously a strong position here for the home side but perhaps not quite with, with Cox going for 28, Critchley going for 5 well, they're the two. They're the two. Who, who, if you ask an Essex member, from what they've seen so far this season, Cox and Critchley will be the ones who could take the game well and truly away from Lancashire quickly. Well, here is Lyon into to Michael Pepper. He plays off the front foot into the offside to extra cover. And there's no run. Two seventy for five. Yeah, well done to Lancashire for getting themselves back into it in, in a semblance of getting back into it. Lion bowls, Pepper turns it out towards the leg side, there's no run. I mean, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a great morning for Lancashire. So whatever was said at lunch, and I think I said on commentary, lunch couldn't really come quick enough for Lancashire just to get off the field and try and reset. Well, they've um, responded much better since the break. Lion pushing out to uh, Keaton Jennings towards a deep backward point boundary. Pepper drives square of the wicket, bringing Jennings into the game on that uh, 
I saw it barely into the game on that far side. Well, he got himself 49 on 42 balls in the first innings against Kent, did Michael Pepper, which included ramping one bowler over the head of the wicketkeeper. And then in the second innings, 34 not out from 23. So it gives you an idea of the way he likes to go about things. He gets his first run with that. Brings Wesley back on strike. He's lying back over the wicket to the Essex skipper. He's asking for an LBW there is Nathan Lyon. As uh, Wesley went back to Lyon's delivery. The arms outstretched from the Australian. He was backed up by the keeper in the slips, but... I wonder if that was too high, possibly. Just looking at where Wesley's rubbing himself. Let's have a look on the replay, Scott. No, it's outside the line, isn't it? He's got, got a fair way across, hasn't he? Final ball of the over. That's turned away to, to the leg side by Tom Wesley. It's a good stop by George Bell. He's used his shin guards there, I think, to, to, to stop the ball at, at forward short leg. So just the one off the over and the wicket as well. 271 for five. And uh, we've got ten minutes till tea. There'll be a new ball due for Lancashire shortly after tea. The lead is 125 runs. Just looking at that, George Bell, just looking about, it looks like he's got like wicket keeping pads on. Now, they on the, I just can't quite see, I don't think they're under his trousers either, are they? Are they over the top of his trousers? Just can't quite see properly on the slightly blurred screen that we, we have here. Oh, he sort of wear smaller shin guards and that, don't they? But George Bell's got the ones that are just in the, below the knee. Now, they are behind the trousers, aren't they? I can see better now from this end. That's going to be Blatherwick, who continues from the Graham Gooch end. Yeah, this is quite a lengthy spell for Blatherwick. I think this is his lengthiest one so far in the match. This will be over number six. He's bowled five overs, one maiden, one for 23 in this spell. Well, he's pausing at the far end at the moment while he waits for Michael Pepper to ready himself to receive his first ball from Seam in this game. He's in now. Oh, Pepper on the walk almost gets a leading edge to that one as he's turned around. But there's no harm done. Half stop by Blatherwick on his follow through. There's no run. And it remains at 271 for five. The lead 125 runs. A little bit quiet around at the moment. As I say, it's all a bit quiet around. The man at mid off for Lancashire claps his hands vigorously, urging his side on and urging Blatherwick on as he comes in and out and bowls to Pepper, stands in the crease and pushes up to mid on for no run. Still no doors open on those Juliet balconies away to the left-hand side. People are probably out on their Saturday afternoon and well, don't want to freeze or let any warmth that's in there any way out and no one up on the retirement apartment balconies either. Wait till the T20s are on and the <laughs> sultry nights here in chance that all the doors will be oh, thrown they, open. And the balcony's busy for T20 nights. Oh, very much so, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, bird's eye view up there. Not played a T20 game down here for quite some time, like oh, sure. No, I can imagine. Here's Blatherwick in again. A little step back onto his stumps there by Pepper and he works it away on the onside, just through for a single. 272 for five. The lead goes up to 126 runs for Essex. There's a, there's a quarter-final match here between Essex and Lancashire, but blimey, that must be at least 10 years ago. I wonder if that was the last T20 match here between the two sides. Essex have been up to Old Trafford. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Was yeah. it two years ago now? Could have been, yeah. There, yeah. And we played... Uh, the two sides met each other at, at Chester this street in a That's right. quarter-final. That was a Ravi Bapara's night That's to right. Essex to victory that night. Yeah. That's it's been here for a bit. Comes in again. One slip in now. On the drive is Wesley. Blatherwick stops it on his follow-through. For the second time in two overs from Blatherwick, he tips the ball onto the stumps, but this time it's Pepper who's back in his ground. Yes, the one a couple of years ago, I seem to remember that Lancashire had nowhere near a full side, as in their full-strength mm. side, I seem to remember, but came up with a really good victory. It may have been Luke Wells who got runs that night, but I might, I might, I might be wrong. He may have got wickets. Yeah, that, was, yeah, that wasn't last year, the year before, it was wasn't year it? Before, yeah, yeah, a couple of years ago now. Nice. Defeat for Essex that evening. And they're on top in the championship at the moment. Blatherwick is in on Wesley on the drive. They think about the single, but he's got too much on it and it races to mid on and it's cut off. And there's no run. Just the one from this over so far. One ball to come. Remember that quarter final here though, whenever it was, I say it's at least a, it must be at least a decade ago. 
and that was a pretty lively Friday night. I yeah. I was commentating in front, mm -hmm. we're, we're outside, but I think this room was full. So we're in the seats outside amongst some of the Essex fans. It was, uh, it was good fun. But was it? <laughs> or are you just being nice? Here's Blatherwick <laughs> in bowls. Worked exactly square as the umpire lifts a leg out of the way and it rolls under his foot. And they take a single, 273 for five. The lead's 127 runs. That's the end of the 74th over of this Essex innings. Because in the early days here on a Friday night, it got lively up here, but they've they've sorted it out a little bit a little bit since then. And um, you, you, I think you may have been being kind, but uh, but I, <laughs> I I fully understand where you were coming from. But yes, it, it can get a bit raucous. I, I can't even remember who won. To be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the outcome of that tie. I don't know whether I should win or not. I think he, I, I seem to remember it's Stephen Moore dislocating his shoulder in the game. I think Ooh. he's fielding on the far end of the haze close and he, took, he went to go and take a catch and I'm pretty sure he, took, he tumbled and dislocated his shoulder in that match. Peter Moores would have been head coach, I reckon, then for the ship. Anyway, there's Nathan Lyon in and bowling. And that's uh, worked out towards the leg side. Picked up at mid-wicket by Josh Bannon. Five minutes until T, 2.73 for five. Just waiting to update BBC Essex listeners. And Scott is off to update. Let's just look at his board. He's off to update Manchester and Lancashire listeners as well. So he's going to have a busy couple of minutes just while we wait for BBC Essex to come across to us here. Nathan Lyon turning his arm over going through his variations turns at the end of his run right arm over forward short leg and leg slip and a regulation slip in it's worked in front of square on the onside by wesley there'll be no run there 47 not out from 80 deliveries 273 for five is the score as lion ready again in and bowling Wesley eat sleep repeat turns it again into mid wickets hands and Bahannon makes the stop I say the stop picks it up didn't really require stopping that one so Essex have gone from 200 for two to 273 for five this next one is whipped behind square by Wesley but he won't get anything there either as short fine leg does the tidying up on this occasion lovely sunshine here at Chelmsford now still a chill in the air but it's a pleasant enough afternoon to spend your Saturday watching top quality county cricket and watching a top finger spinner in the world going through his variations that is Nathan Lyon outside edge from Wesley along the ground and they come through for a single 274 for five so they lead by 128 runs all change as Lyon finishes that over one for 50 for him now from 17 overs here we go to BBC Essex then yeah still in control Essex here leading by 128 runs but they've gone from 200 for two to 274 for five Sam Cook falling agonizingly short of a maiden first class half century when he was out to the first ball after lunch for 49 after he and Dean Elgar had seen Essex go wicketless in that morning session the captain Tom Wesley's out there unbeaten on 47 at the moment recently joined by Michael Pepper who's made just a couple of runs but uh, Jordan Cox slapped Blatherwick straight to mid-wicket and was out for 28 and Matt Critchley has become Nathan Lyon's first victim of this uh, Essex innings as well caught nicely by Luke Wells at first slip and out for five but Essex still comfortable in this game but will be disappointed the way the wickets have gone 274 for five lead by 128 commentary can so we'll update BBC Essex listeners again around about half past five, I reckon. Possibly at full time in the football as well. And we've got a change of bowling at the Graham Gooch end, and we're going to see Luke Wells for the first time in this innings for Lancashire. A little bit of leg spin, a little bit of leg spin. The uh, age-old sign comes from Scott of leg spin, flicking the hand. That's a full toss, which is smashed away by Tom Wesley for four runs. And that takes Tom Wesley to a half century as well. 52 from 84 deliveries. Essex go to 278 for five and now lead by 132 runs. Luke Wells rubs the palm of his hand uh, in the return crease, rubs his hands together as well, almost as if intimating to everybody who wants to look, that one slipped. 
but uh, well played Tom Wesley taking full toll of that full toss and picking up four runs so here's Wells again was jogging up to his delivery stride in and that's a drive by Wesley this time it did pitch but I think that one will race away for four runs as well although the man out on the cover boundary is racing round has done really well to pick that up just inside the rope and he saved one run and the score goes to 281 for five and the lead up to 135 runs now but seven off Luke Wells's first couple of deliveries here he blows on his fingers rubs the ball on the rear of his thigh And he's ready once again. Michael Pepper down on strike to face the leg spinner. In comes Wells. That one does pitch. And on the drive is Pepper. But a back pedalling extra cover on the second or third bounce manages to make the stop. No problems whatsoever there. No run. The first dot ball for Wells. Run rate just over 3.7 at the moment. Here's Wells again in and bowls. And that is heaved away by Michael Pepper. High over mid on. And it's gone the distance and goes for the maximum and goes for six. 287 for five now. And the lead goes up to 104. 41 runs. He got all of that, Michael Pepper, and probably a little bit more as well as it disappeared over the advertising hoardings for six runs. This is expensive from Luke Wells. It might just be an experiment, possibly, from the Lancashire skipper Keaton Jennings. As Wells is in again, and Pepper this time watchfully steers it up to mid on for no run. And Having made those breakthroughs, Lancashire don't want to let Essex get away from them here. Yes, the lead is building, but they don't want them scoring quick, quick, quick runs. Keep a modicum of discipline about it. As Wells is in again. And Pepper again slaps that this time. And Wesley just has to make sure he keeps out of the way of it as it goes down to the long arm boundary for four more runs. And that will do you for this session of play. And Wesley and Pepper make their way off the field. An expensive Luke Wells over for Lancashire ends with Essex at 291 for five, 55 to Tom Wesley, 12 to Michael Pepper. The Essex lead is up to 145 runs. We'll take a short break here. Opportunity for you to go off and grab a cup of tea as well and rejoin us in around about 20 minutes time.
might be handing to me before 4.15.
down here, Glenn, as the sun beating down on us. It's actually getting warmer in the commentary box. Thank you, Kevin, as we restart play here at Chelmsford. Welcome back to you. Nathan Lyon with the first delivery after the interval, and it's a dot ball as it's worked up to mid on for no run by the unbeaten Essex captain, who's on 55. And Lyon very quickly into his stride once again. A little bit more flight outside off stump there, whipped by Wesley into the onside, but it's Bohannon who does the fielding again, and there is no run so the question Scott is can Lancashire bowl Essex out here before it gets out of control as Lyon with a leg slip in in a lot slower more flight driven by Wesley stopped by Lyon on his follow through no run well they've kind of given themselves a half a chance haven't they of, of, of restricting a lead which could have been you know, way beyond them and it, it could still yet be it's pushing up to 150 with five wickets in hand this next one from Lyon has Wesley propping forward and with a break of the wrists works it just past the man at short mid-wicket who thumps the turf does Bahannon because he feels he should have stopped it. It's only cost the single though, 292, 4-5. The lead up to 146, which is what Lancashire were bowled out for in their innings. So Essex have exactly doubled the visitors' total in the first innings. But And that sentence alone tells you what... Whatever happens from here on in, they're going to have to bat really well second time round. They're going to have to get more than what they did first time round. This next one from Lyon to Pepo drives up to mid-off. No full flow. It's more a forceful push than a full flowing drive, and it's stopped, and there's no run again. Well, that's just to get level, isn't it? So, <laughs> so yeah, a lot, either way, there's a, a, a lot of work ahead for Lancashire, but I thought this afternoon they, um, they did pretty well. Here's Lyon again into Pepe and just cushioned the defensive shot and there is no run end of a very quick first over after the break 292 for five but Hannon had his trousers down again rearranging that's the third time today I reckon that's just for you I reckon they're, they're I, I sincerely it. hope not and he's he's been told about it that you've been mentioning it and he's done it especially for you that's he's either that or there's some kind of sponsorship deal going on that yeah. no, no, that's just your <laughs> personal little treat is that he's done that just for you mm. you say treat yeah oh, it is it's an absolute treat you a lucky man. <laughs> it's just for you, that. I must go home and tell my wife I'm a lucky man. No. <laughs> well, Jack Blatherwitz going to yeah. continue, Scott. He did well, didn't he, after, uh, uh, in the back end of that afternoon session. He's not had uh, the easiest of days. But, um, yeah, he, he's, he's wholehearted. He's full of commitment, Jack Blatherwick, and he... Uh, he kept going. Got, a, got his reward in the end, didn't he, with the... Um, Dismissal, dismissal of uh, Jordan Cox at 28. So he's going to start up after the uh, T interval. Got quite a lot of overs left today, haven't we? Let's see, 44. Is that what I think? I think I saw 44. Um, no, 39. So we started with 40. So 39 overs remaining now in the day's play. So we've got one slip in the gully. And here comes. Blatherwick in and bowls, and that's clipped out through square leg. Nice looking shot for a single to Wesley. So he's got himself a 50 just before T. He's now on to 57. Essex are 293 for five. It's a lead of 147 runs. Brings uh, Pepper back on strike. The wickets to fall today. Well, first one was Sam Cook. It was wicketless in the morning session. And the uh, night watchman taking his total to 49, but falling just after lunch. And Blatherwick's in and balls again. Oh. That uh, bottom edge bounces into the turf and then up and over Keaton Jennings at first slip. And down towards the boundary at third man. Four runs. Pepper moves on to 16. 297 for five now. Yes, it wasn't, if you're watching on the stream, it, it, it wasn't a flash over the top of the stumps. It was into the turf and up and over. So you know, even if it kept it a little bit lower and gone to slip, it would not have been a catch in any way, shape or form. But that's the way Pepper likes to play. He likes to feel bat on ball, likes to play shots. He's blathering. What's his response? Comes powering back in, balls to Pepper. Oh. That goes past him and through to the keeper. And there's no run. So... Cook was first to go today. That, was, that came straight after lunch. And he fell for 49. So that was 
182 for two. Dean Elgar's innings, which got to 79, came to an end in the 53rd over with the score then at 206 for three. Elgar out for 79. Jordan Cox falling in uh, the afternoon session as well. Off the bowling of this man, Blatherwick, who's in again to Pepper. That's left and through to the keeper. It was 263 for four when Cox departed, and then Matt Critchley in the 73rd over with a score at 270 then for five when Critchley was was out. And now it's 297 for, for seven. We're in the 80, 78th over of the Essex first inning. So Lancashire will have a second new ball available to them in two overs time. And that probably will be Bailey and, and Williams' time for Lancashire with a new ball. Here's Blatherwick in balls. And Pepper just pushes it back from where it came from. Nathan Lyon picks up at mid on. Pepper shuffles through for a single. He moves on to 17 then, so it's 298 for five. So Essex eyeing up a second batting bonus point. Lead now over 150 for the home side. 152 in front. Tom Wesley's on strike. Blatherwick from the Graham Gooch end of the ground. Sets off. Running into a bit of a headwind is Blatherwick, but he's in and pouring to, to Wesley. He's off the back foot. That's uh, played into the offside. There's no run, but uh, Bladwick overstepping. So it's, a, it's a no ball signal by umpire Alex Wharf. And that brings up the 300. So that does secure that second batting bonus point. 300 for five with Bladwick just overstepping. So he'll try again to, uh, to complete this 78th over. Holding right arm over the wicket to the Essex captain. Wesley, has he edged it behind to Hurst? Well, to be honest, Hurst fancied it, and Blatherwick didn't massively at first. He kind of went to play, a little flirt with it, Tom Wesley, and then and then brought the bat away. Lancashire's keeper went up, and Jennings at, at slip also went up, and then kind of Blatherwick got involved in it too, so... Maybe there was a bit of an indication there. Yeah, I was looking at Wesley. I mean, I know, OK, there might be some kidology, but he just turned around and was scoring his guard again in the turf. And he turned around and just happened to look at, the, look at the umpire, but no more than that. So somebody's heard something that, that wasn't quite there. Or maybe it was. We won't know because our stream's broken down, so the, the IT guys are, are scrambling. I say scrambling. Switch it off and switch it back on. I've done that and, 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 and in another technical development, I've even pulled the cable out of the back and put it back in. <laughs> Here's Lyon then, starting another over from this Sir Alistair Cook. And on the reverse sweep this time, actually ends up in the hands of George Bell at... Is yeah, so, that silly mid-off? Just he's a couple of strips away, but he's got the helmet on. No harm done, though. It rolled up the pad from Pepper. He's 17 not out from 17 deliveries. Slight pause as they move the man back to deep backward point. As Pepper pushes up to mid on for no run. And just want to cut off any runs from that reverse sweep. Five Live Sports Extra listeners have just left us. So if you want to keep up with this, it's via the BBC Sport website and the app. He's lying in once again. That's slower. Lots more air. Pushed out to the offside for no run. Hurst scuttles out from behind the stumps to pick the ball up. Takes his wicket-keeping glove off to reveal the keeping inner that he has behind, underneath. Chucks the ball to Nathan Lyon. First sirens of the day. As Lyon is in. And he's met with the full face of Michael Pepper's bat. And the Australian can field in his follow through. Might bring Roland in in a couple of moments' time. Sat away to our right hand side. The lion comes in again. And uh, Pepper just steers that one behind square on the offside. And they come through for a comfortable single. The score is up to 301 for five. Wesley 57 and Pepper 18 now. And 
lots of hard work done by these Lancashire bowlers today in taking four wickets so far. Bearing in mind they went wicketless this morning. It was a good comeback in the afternoon session. Here's Lyon. Worked in front of square on the onside. Through mid-wicket, actually, by Wesley. There's only a single there. They've got a man posted out on the mid-wicket fence to cut that ball off and prevent any more than the single accruing. It's Blatherwick who's done the fielding there. End of the over. Quiet start to play after the T interval. Lots of helmets being handed to Keaton Jennings to put behind wicketkeeper Hurst. One, two, three helmets there. One for the wicketkeeper when he's standing up. Two for the close infielders as well. And it's going to be Blatherwick to continue from the Graham Gooch end, Scott. Yes, a little look around how the, the games are shaping up heading into the evening sessions across divisions one and two. This is the final over of the before the new ball becomes available. Blatherwick's into Wesley, forward in defence. And there is no run to Hampshire playing Warwickshire. At the Utilita Bowl, Hampshire are 58 for one. With uh, Fletcher Middleton on 33 and Nick Gubbins on 21. Hampshire trail Warwickshire by 397 runs. The Bears all out for 455. Uh, Surrey have made a strong start, 45 without loss in reply to a Kent total of 244. Rory Burns and beaten on 30. So Jack Blatherwick back into Wesley. It's defended, no run. Somerset 365 for eight. And they lead Nottinghamshire by 172 runs wow. and Craig Overton 69 not out. 69 of 82 for Craig Overton. Could be a long summer for Nottinghamshire on the evidence of the opening couple of weeks. Durham batting second time round at Kidderminster are 133 for two and they lead Worcestershire by 192 runs. Wesley defends. Ball just bouncing down towards backward point where George Bell comes round to his right from gully to field and there's no run. In Division 2, Derbyshire against Leicestershire. Leicestershire still batting. They're piling on the runs up 462 for five. There's been a double hundred in that game as well, I think, for Leicestershire. Possibly. Yeah, Marcus Harris, yeah. 214. Blatherwick to uh, Wesley. That's uh, driven to mid on for no run. Game at Lords is quite a fun looking match. And Yorkshire 67 for four Ooh. in their second innings, and they're still 20 behind. So there's a there's a bit of pressure on Joe Root, who's 24 not out, because Harry Brooks gone first ball Oof. LBW to Higgins for naught. So Yorkshire 67 for four. Still 20 behind Middlesex. It's Blatherwick to Wesley. That's defended and there's no run. Uh, Northamptonshire are 148 for one. With Ricardo Vasconcelos 82 not out. Luke Proctor, their captain, unbeaten on 48. And they've trailed Glamorgan by 115 runs. And Sussex are 150 for two with Alsop on 63 and Pajara on 13 and Sussex Trail Gloucestershire by 267 runs. Blatherwick to Wesley he takes it away off his toes out towards deep back. Oh, oh there's, a, there's a misfield on the boundary by Luke Wells and uh, it, it's gone for four and it should have been a single. That probably compounds the day for Jack Blatherwick. That's the end of the over. That might be the end of uh, Blatherwick for a little while because uh, there will be a, a new ball due uh, now. And I suspect Lancashire will take it straight away. They're going to certainly turn to Tom Bailey. And, uh, yeah, Jack Blatherwick gets his jumper and um, feels a bit sorry for himself. And I don't uh, blame him on that occasion. The umpire, uh, James Middlebrook, signaling to everybody that this is the new ball that Lancashire are taking and Bailey will have it in his hands. 
They're trying to fix the stream next to us on the screen. I find it a bit unnerving when, when, when you can see things happening and you're not the one that's moving the mouse and they're moving it from somewhere else in the ground. But thank you very much because the stream is back up live and running. So thank you guys for sorting that one out. Just in time for the new ball as well. And if anything, the picture looks even better than it did before we lost the coverage. So Tom Bailey is going to have the new ball from this Sir Alistair Cook end with Essex at 306 for five, leading by exactly 160 runs. Bailey is going to bowl to Michael Pepper, who's on 18. He's in now with that new ball. Pepper rides up to mid on for no run. So let's see if the new ball can bring Lancashire another Breakthrough. Most of the crowd have stayed in. They're still here, still enjoying their Saturday county cricket as Bailey turns. Three slips in, in and bowls, and that comes with a real crack off Pepper's bat. But he's set off for the single and is safely through. 307 for five. It's like misfield at mid off anyway. When he tried to pick up and throw, he lost grip on the ball, so Pepper was safely home. Come off with a real crack though, the hard new ball. Minimum of 35.4 overs left in the day. So we are going to be doing some overtime, I think. Because of the fact that we lost some time yesterday, they can make it up over the ensuing three days as Bailey is in and that's met defensively by Wesley, who just makes as though the ball may be kept a little bit lower than he was initially thinking it was going to. But nevertheless, it comes off the bat with his defensive shot and there's no run again 307 for five on the 81st over BBC Essex BBC Radio Lancashire and Manchester with you via the BBC Sport website and app Glenn Speller Scott Reed, Roland Butcher and Kevin Howells with you from a sunny Chelmsford county ground in the city centre of Chelmsford it's the county town of Essex but it's the county city now it's got official city status as Bailey is in and that strikes the pad Rolls up Wesley's front pad and drops out on the onside. There'll be no run there. So games advancing all around the country. And don't forget you can follow it via the live text page on the BBC Sport website. The guys are working hard there to bring you all the latest news from around the grounds. Wickets, incidents, batting landmarks. And if you come off the live reporting page, you'll see the tab there which says watch and listen. And you can listen to any of the commentaries there as well. Got it all covered for you throughout the summer. It's Bailey in again. Wesley lets that one go through to Hurst. Oohs and ahs from behind Wesley, but it was well wide of off stump. Still a slight greenish tinge to the batting strip, which Wesley is now doing a little bit of tidying up work on in front of him. Eyes like hawks, these batters. The slightest little thing out of touch. That needs patting down. That needs dealing with. It's Bailey running away from us right arm over in and Wesley this time works it into the onside they'll pick up a nice single there 308 for five the lead goes to 162 runs for Essex and the end of Tom Bailey's first over with the new ball which didn't really seem to do too much no it didn't pretty uh Steady stuff, wasn't it, really, for the two uh, six batters here? I suppose they'll have to just kind of re reset, won't they, with it? With it? Even though that both have faced a lot of deliveries, but Lancashire going back to their strike ball was here, the, the new ball. I suppose you've got to clear your mind and start again. In such a good position, I think. They don't want to kind of all let this kind of fizzle out. They've got five wickets in hand. Uh, ideally, they want to get through this second new ball and then. Get that lead up to and beyond 200 and still have the power to come out and give it a bit of a wallop and really kind of grind Lancashire into the dirt mm. a little bit. So they, they, they want to, don't want to give this away. They're in a strong position. Lancashire, as we mentioned before, T have done just about what they could do in the afternoon. It wasn't a great morning for Lancashire. It was one to forget, really. And came back pretty well after after lunch. Will Williams to uh, See if he can conjure something up with this, this uh, second new ball. And a ball from the Graham Gooch end. Two slips in the gully. And uh, Tom Wesley, the man on strike. Here's Williams in. 
nicely plays pretty solidly off the front foot and uh, defends up towards mid on and there is no run criticizing will williams parents it's not a criticism it's an observation william williams it's great isn't it isn't it brilliant yeah i love that I like his middle name as well salter austin <laughs> william salter austin williams tremendous sounds like a possibly you know, classic author from years <laughs> gone by wsa williams here he comes in to uh, to wesley that's a defender away into the offside no run Met his dad the other season mm -hmm. at Trent Bridge, and I was saying that, you know, I said when he first signed, his parents must be quite funky, you know, to call the kid William Williams. And uh, <laughs> so I met his dad, and, and uh, he heard me say that comment. And I don't, he found it quite amusing. Mm. I, th I think he took it in uh, the, the nature that it was intended. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's terrific, isn't it? Will Squared, as he's affectionately known. <laughs> he's in and bowling to, uh, to Wesley. Oh, is he, that's going for an LBW, but it felt a little optimistic, that really, but it kind of worth a shout, the first one with the second new ball, but didn't really have the belief in it that you would normally get from a ball that reckons that absolutely stone dead. Just looking at um, his record as well, he's, he's got a few titles under his belt, Plunkett Shield winner with Canterbury out in New Zealand on two occasions, which is their sort of form of the county championship, isn't it? So, yep. So he's got some trophies in the cabinet got some medals there to go with his career yeah he's got a very good first class record in New Zealand uh, West is off the front foot and defends no run and he is he, I mean, he's looked every bit a county bowler since they signed him I mean they gave him a two match contract when he first came to Lancashire and as a bit of a trial really he'll give you a couple of couple of games see how you get on and from his, almost from his first spell really you're thinking this guy is suited perfectly to bowling with uh, a Duke's ball in English conditions and county cricket he's, he's just absolutely ideal and he just runs in like this all the time always on the mark pretty much it's flipped away towards square leg by uh, Wesley for one run just reading up on him as well he's got, he's got his career sorted out for post cricket of, of qualified flying instructor is that right yes. okay all right. Yep. so he's got his career sorted out for beyond <laughs> cricket he's 32 this year but qualifies as a British player? Yeah, he's, player? I yeah. think it, it's his mum who... Uh, he's got a British passport. So his okay. mum's <clears throat> from Kent, I think. Um, so that's how he he, uh, he qualifies as a, as a local player. Means that Lancashire's still got two overseas. With Bruce, who's a, also a New Zealander, and, uh, and obviously Nathan Lyon. Just uh, pushing Jack Blatherwick a little deeper at, at point. He's into Pepper. And that's played safely forward into the offside where Balderson fields and there's no run. That's the end of the first over. Back into the attack for Will Williams. Just a single off it. 309 for five, Essex. And lead by 163 runs. It's a quiet opening to the post-tea session. I think it's fair to say, especially when you saw Pepper plunder 17 off the over previous to T as well when they just tried out Luke Wells to see whether he could get anything going but there's certainly no sign that Essex are going to hurry themselves towards any kind of total here as yet run rate just a sh shade over three and three quarter runs per over 34 still to go in the day and it is going to be Tom Bailey with his second over and the third in total with the new ball in hand here comes Bailey now, right arm over, in bowling to the Essex captain Tom Wesley. And Wesley forces the ball up to mid on where there is no run. 309 for five. We'll bring Roland back in at the close of this over. Get his thoughts. This is a nice long break, but a nice long stint this afternoon. So I thought we'd give him a breather. As the ball is worked on fever, almost feverishly by Nathan Lyon at mid on. Yeah, a good old wipe and a good old shine. And here is Bailey once again. Three slips in. And Wesley just love that little whip that he has into the onside and comes through for a single. Such a wristy player. 310 for five. The score goes up to... And the lead to 164 runs. And no sign of the new ball causing any real threat as yet to these two Essex batters. Rather loud motorbike. 
makes its way up the south way in Chelmsford, just behind us. There's a few kayakers and canoeists going down the River Can just behind us today as well, Scott, this morning. Nice. Getting their early exercise out. As here's Bailey. In now to Pepper. Pepper on the pull, got a top edge to that. It's gone over the head of a wicket keeper Hurst and it's gone all the way. That's Michael Pepper's second maximum. Not exactly where he was aiming, but the same result as what he was hoping for as well. 316 for five. Yeah, there's a man down on that fine leg bound. He's quite wide and that's gone quite fine. Mm. Watch out there if you're uh, <laughs> in the stands. There was a chap down there just fetched the ball. He just stood up from his seat thinking that's coming my way and it bounced nicely in front of him so he could just pick it up, toss it back to the fielder. And Bailey's very quickly back into his delivery stride and this time it's whipped away by Pepper, wide of the man at mid-on. It's uh, mid-wicket who's come scampering around and he can't make the stop, he can't cut the ball off and that's four more to Pepper. Ten off two deliveries and the score to 324 Five now for Essex as they continue to build a sizable lead here. And that's the 50 stand between these two as well. That's come on quickly, isn't it? Mm. Didn't feel like it was happening no, quickly, but I guess the 17 before luck before T and then 10 off that accounts for 27 of them straight away. So eight balls have accounted for mm. 27 of those runs. Here's Bailey now back into Pepper and this time he's solidly forward defensively. And it's Lyon who picks up at mid-on. Yeah, it's 53 off 37 mm. deliveries. So yeah, it's been pretty quick, that half-century partnership. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, no, it's not quite as quick as I thought. <laughs> no. Bailey, ball back in hand eventually after Nathan Lyon's worked, his on him, worked on it. Hopefully he's worked some magic on it, he's thinking as he gives it to his seam bowling teammate. Bailey, oh, it strikes the front pad. Has Nathan Lyon worked some magic with his ball-shining skills? <laughs> no. Uh, the umpire shakes his head. That is the end of the over. Our friend, well, that's not the same bumblebee because this one's about half the size of the one that was in the commentary box uh, this morning. But uh, that's the end of the over. A few words from Scott, and then we'll bring Roland back in. Yeah, that 50 partnership off 65 balls between Wesley and Pepper, but good stuff nonetheless by those two. Yeah, off a shout again by Bailey. Too much has happened since that second new ball's been taken by Lancashire. A lead of 174. <coughs> well, if you're watching on the live stream, you can see Nathan Lyon and Will Williams still bound by Alex Wall from the having a look at the ball. Lyon gives it a bit of a polish and Loops it to uh, to Will Williams. 33 overs to go today. 320 for five. And uh, Williams in and bowls, and that's uh, shivelled away off the hit by Tom Wesley out towards the leg side, picked up by Tom Bailey. Wesley gets a single. He moves on to 66. 3 2 1 for five now. Essex. Roland Butcher's back alongside me. And having lost uh, Jordan Cox and then Matt Critchley relatively quickly, they've got themselves a nice little partnership together, these two again. Yes, they have. And uh, back end of the deer, run starting to flow from the bat. And there's Williams to Pepper. And more runs this time. <coughs> Glance down to fine leg, where uh, Luke Wells fields. Pepper moves on to 30, 322 for five. Yes, and the scoring rate has increased a little. At one point it was down to at least 3.43 per over. I'm currently going at 3.86, so runs coming at the right time. A nice lead of 176. Williams back in to, uh, to, to Wesley nice straight front foot punch good start by Lyon actually he's uh, tumbling away to his left at mid on and there's no run so it remains on 66 322 for five still 32 overs remaining yeah. so yeah. a 
a lot can happen. Either Essex could continue in this vein or make sure you get some wickets, but still a long way to go. Well, Williams sets off again. again. Just a little flick away off the hip. Another single out to square leg for Tom Wesley. So he moves on to 67, not out. 323 for five. And the lead moves on to 177. Three singles off the over so far. You don't need to do much more, I don't think. Is the butchers get through this new ball? Let's keep ticking along. I need to, let me say, the run rate's dropped under four, but I don't think that's be a massive concern for Essex. No, there's a lot of time left in the yeah. game, so really build a sizable first innings lead and should make the job a lot easier in the second innings. Mm. A lot of batting to do, even at this stage, for Lancashire going to start uh, with the work to do in their second innings, whenever that might be. Pepper forward and defends from Williams. And there is uh, no run. I guess you've got uh, Keaton Jennings and, and Tom Bruce, the two slip fielders. Not much really for the slips to be involved with today. A couple of chances were put down this morning off Tom Bailey's bowling. Sam Cook, the night watchman, was dropped twice. But they're waiting to pounce just in case one chance comes. A drop third slip or that kind of gully position down to third man. So they've got a third man and a fine leg. Williams in. Pepper edges behind. He does. Caught by Hurst. Pepper departs for 30. And Will Williams picks up his second wicket of the of the innings. And Essex is six down. 3.23 for six now. Lead by 177. Yeah, just turned him around. Just looking to play the ball on the onside. And um, to get some outside edge and comfortable catch to the keeper. And with Essex 7 down, Lancashire now, we'll be starting just to think a little bit about kind of getting this wrapped up as quickly as they can. It'll be interesting to see how the, the, the next lot set to come in will, will bat because, I mean, likes a Harmer. I've not seen Noah Thane bat, but obviously this is his championship debut. But Harmer certainly and Snater can give it a bit of a wallop when they want to. I think at the moment, with Wesley at the crease, yeah. we've got to offer him some support. Yeah. So. It will be Noah Thane to uh, come out to bat for the first time in county cricket. Yeah, the skipper at that end, isn't it? So he's put a perfectly man, perfect man to kind of judge what they should be doing here. They don't want this innings to fizzle out, even though they're already 170 in front. They want this to be a really strong end to their, their first innings. I just need to dig in and, and start again. 323 for six. Yeah, three, two, three for six. Pepper going for 30. Just reached a half century partnership with his captain. Tom Wesley's still there. And Noah Thane well, watched him pick up his first county championship wicket yesterday. In his uh, championship debut for Essex. And now he's got a chance to try and bat with his captain he's at the non striker's end. As Bailey starts a new over. To Wesley and Bowles, and that's outside the off stump. Good length, and Wesley's on to the front foot. Allows that one to go through to the keeper. Bailey now in his 18th over. He's got none for 68, so he would like to get something in that end column. But Essex in a very good position, not 323 for six. That lead now 177. Still bowling with three slips, a ring of three on the offside as. Bailey runs away from us in and bowls, and this ball is played neatly up to mid on. I'm just wondered why Westy's so keen to get off straight. <laughs> he was, wasn't he? Yeah. After only a couple of a couple of deliveries, um, but he gets a single. 
moves to 68. The score goes to 324 for six. Well, he gets a young lad on strike nice now, doesn't he? I suppose he's not hanging around at the non-strikers end thinking about it. He's got no chance to, to really have a, a thought here and too many nerves for the 19-year-old. His captain comes down to have a little bit of a, a brief word with him, but a chance straight away to have a bat for number thing. Yep, four slips she's greeted with as Billy is in two thing and bowls. And he's off the mark straight away with a nice clip off the pad. Should get two at least down to deep square leg. So he's away and um, gets his first couple of runs there. Neat looking shot off the pads. Thane goes to two. It's 3.26 for six. Just looking at his recent scores. Um, played a second team game for, um, for Essex at the start of April. Got uh, 34 against uh, Kent with the bat in that uh, fixture. Bailey in, bowl, and Thane straightens up to a good, good delivery just short of a length, gets behind it, pushes it into the offside, and he stays on two. They played for England's under 19s over the course of the winter against South Africa, scoring uh, an unbeaten 63, played against the West Indies under 19s. As well at the back end of January, got 40 against uh, their under 19 side. So, some runs over the winter for England's under 19s. Brady Bowles drive in and Ooh. dropped. That went back to Bailey. It was struck quite firmly. But you would think most times you would have held that. It was a pitch that delivery driven by Thin and. Bailey, in his follow through, just couldn't hang on to that. So, seemingly gone a little bit quieter, but still a lot of work for Joe Root and Yorkshire to do there at Lords. A quick mention. Just looking for a, a replay that we couldn't see, but Bailey's coming in once more. Bowls and short of a length, and he gets on top of it, Thane, this time, and plays it out to cover point. A successful over for Bailey. Score at the end of the over, 326 for six. Those scores I mentioned against South Africa and the West Indies were part of the uh, under-19 World Cup. So he's come from uh, playing under-19 World Cup fixtures in a second 11 game to beat in the, uh, the uh, Essex first 11 here. Just a quick some scores for you. That's the bowling card. Williams is going to start over number 20. Two for 50 for him. A couple of wickets for Balderson. One each for Blatherwick and Lyon. Williams to Wesley. Well, he's, he's gone through the first quickly here. Worked the ball away to mid-wicket. Maybe wanted to come back for two, but Bailey's quickly up from the boundary. Just a single for uh, for Wesley, so he moves on to 69, 327 for six now, lead of 181. Yes, and once again, Wesley not afraid to pick up the single early and expose then. Yeah, I quite like that. I mean, the captain to a young batter, you want to show some faith, don't you? And mm. you know, just kind of monopolise the strike and. He's been keen to get him back on strike and he's facing Williams here. Just drops the ball away off his hip into the onside. Trickles away to, to mid wicket. And there is uh, no rum. He's got three slips behind him, Noah Thane. Jennings, Bruce, and Bell, the three slip fielders for, uh, for Lancashire. And this uh, sports extra listeners rejoin us as Williams is running in from the Graham Gooch end of the ground. Balls to Noah Thane, the eight, the 19 year old, who's on championship debut for Essex. He plays forward in defence. And there is no run. So I've got the Essex skipper Tom Wesley at the non strikers end. 69 not out. A lead now for Essex of 181. Sports extra listeners have been. At the game at Lords between uh, Middlesex and Yorkshire, well, here, Lancashire have found a wicket while you were away. Michael Pepper, the man out, 
edging behind to Matty Hurst. Off the bowling of Will Williams with this second new ball. He's into Thane. That's just dropped into the onside. Up towards square leg. And uh, through he goes for a single. Yeah, I thought it probably a bit of bat and pad there. Um, but still 30 overs remaining. It's <coughs> a lot of it's a lot of cricket. 328 for six, lead of 182. Roland Butcher and Scott Ree, Glenn Speller and Kevin Howells here at the County ground, Chelmsford as Wesley's off the front foot and driving down the ground. One bounce back to Williams. Good effort off his own bowling. He yeah, did well, got down well. So it's been a cold day and he's still got an <laughs> opportunity to dive to his right. And... Yeah, and bringing, the, bringing the third man and square leg up yep. and the deep point. Yeah, final ball of the over. Keen to keep uh, Thane on strike at the other end for uh, for Bailey for the next over. In saying that, Wesley's been very happy to to get Thane on strike as much as he can. Plays right forward in defence. <coughs> Wesley, solid front foot defensive shot. And there's no run. It's the end of the over. So 86 gone of the Essex at first innings. It's 328 for six. A lead of 182 runs. They're so just building that up nicely, the home side here. So Ronan Butcher said there's still 30 overs to go today for that lead to go and build and push the game further and further away from uh, from Lancashire. Ronan Butcher's disappeared next door. I think he's He's coming back. Is he's, he coming back? He's had, to, he's had to pop out. Ah, yes. I will say no more other than he's had to pop out. Fair enough. Here's Bailey then from the uh, Alistair Cook end to Noah Thane. Mm, he played that as if that just kept a little low on him. Oh, it did actually watch him back. Kept it out well. The 19-year-old, uh, and instantly, as you see this, the bat has come down the pitch and have a little look. Nicely, Noah Thane getting his first runs in Championship cricket. Not his first runs in first class. He got some against Ireland last year in a tour match. Got his first wicket yesterday with just his third ball. Yeah, he's had quite a bit of the strike since he's, he's been out there as well. Three slips behind him, Bailey balls. Oh, that's half an appeal as you get for right forward and trying to just get outside the line of off stump to defend this. Boom. Deflects away into the offside, there's no run. 3-2-8 for six. 182 ahead, just short of 30 overs left in the day. So, uh, you know, we're at a critical point of the game, really. With Bailey for Lancashire, right arm over the wicket, balls again forward. Goes Thane, defends away into the offside, no run. Yeah, we're, we're making up for a bit of lost time from yesterday, so the, the extended day today, 104 overs, so there's never going to be really any, in, any interruptions today with the weather. The forecast was always pretty clear, so the day where for Essex batting, back themselves into a real position of strength, two days left. Lead of 182. Bailey is in again for Lancashire Bowls, and that's off, off the front foot. Uh, positive front foot defensive shot. Bounces out to Luke Wells. Good stop by Wells. That's at point. And there's no run. So dot balls and dot balls and dot balls. With uh, two left of the over. Which is all that Lancashire have been able to do, really, through the course of this day, is to uh, generate some pressure and to keep it nice and tight. And they've done that. Bailey to Thane, again off the front foot, and defends into the offside. And again, there is no run, so it's 328 for six. 182 the lead for Essex. Elsewhere, Yorkshire. I've lost another wicket. Joe Root, the man out. Josh DeCarries with the catch of the bowling of Toby Rowland Jones. Root's gone for 32. Yorkshire, 83 for five. Bailey to Thane. It's short and it's pulled. It's a top edge. It's down towards fine leg. 
and it's spilt by Balderson coming up from the boundary. Thane lives to fight another day. It's the end of the over. And uh, went for that pull shot, got the, the top edge, it flew down towards fine leg. You had plenty of ground to make up, Balderson. Couldn't keep the catch. 328 for six at the end of the over. So the third one has gone down for Lancashire today, two in the slips, and now one down a long leg. It was in the air a long time, and Balderson got there, but in the end still had to stretch slightly for it and couldn't hold on. So Noah Thane gets a life in his innings. It's going to be... Williams who continuing. No, it's Balderson. Oh, yeah, though. it's Balderson now. Balderson from the Graham Gooch end. So Joe Root has gone. Harry Brook got a first baller as well he in did. that game. Yeah. And Middlesex right on top. It looks like they're possibly going to beat Yorkshire possibly today, the way things are going. Right, here's Balderson in and bowling, and that's worked to square by Thane, and there'll be no run there. We'll bring Roland back in at the close of this over. Yeah, they still trail Yorkshire. 83 for five. Still trail Middlesex by four runs. Mm. Been a busy old game, that, hasn't it, at Lords? It's bounced along quite nice. We're going to get some results this week. We had, we had a whole weekend of, of draws last time out. Mm. Everybody drew in the championship in round two. Balderson in again, running towards us, in on bowling, and Thane. Forward press, so he's almost in position before the ball's delivered. Plays defensively back to the bowler for no run. 329 for six. Kevin's had enough. He's put the heating back on. <laughs> oh, no, it's Butch. Butch has put it back on. As Butch. Kevin was thinking, I might have to put it back on, and Butch, Butch has made the definite decision, we're going to have the heating back on. That's because he's been outside, so he's come back in. <laughs> he's Here's Balderson. He's not cold. Short sleeve shirt on. Running into Thane now. He stands up from the crease to the offside, and there's no run there. The lead is 183 runs. Yeah, a few of the games are bouncing along, aren't they? We're going to get results in several of them, I think. Quite a few, there's a few teams into their second innings in various games up and down the divisions. Somerset going well against Nottinghamshire in Division 1 as well. Yeah, Somerset lead by 222 runs mm. and 415 for eight. Balderson, three slips in. And Thane on the drive won't pick up anything for that as it goes up to mid-off and there's... No run again. A couple of balls to come in this. The 88th over of the Essex innings. The 8th over then of the new ball as well. Craig Overton, 85 not out for Somerset. From 99 balls. Tom Bantam uh, making 83 as well for the home side. Yeah, good comeback of that from Somerset in that game. Cracking game against Surrey. I was listening to the dying embers of that one in the week. Alderson comes in and Thane just plays defensively and quietly up to mid-off for no run. Surrey gave it a right good go right at the top of the innings and Dan Lawrence et al. smashing it all over the shot but in the end lost a handful of wickets and decided to shut up shop and ended in a draw against Somerset. Dan Lawrence, formerly of Essex, doing a little bit of spin bowling in that as well. Pick, picked himself up a few wickets in that match. But Surrey still yet to record a victory after two rounds. Alderson in, bowls to Thane. Thane pulls up one round the corner down to long leg. He'll only get a single straight down to the fielder. End of the over. And Essex are 334 6. Just looking at the time. I'll be back in 20 minutes to update BBC Essex listeners. But Roland's going to come back in, Scott. Well, speaking of Surrey, they've made a solid start with the bat in their first innings. They're at Canterbury this week, <coughs> taking on Kent. R Rory Burns, 49 not out. Don Sibley, 38 not out. So 89 with that loss, Surrey. In reply to that Kent total of 244, so um, still behind by 155 runs, but a pretty solid start with the bat. What's the other game we've not looked at in Division 1? There's two, actually. Hampshire, 87 for one at the Utilita Bowl. They're replying to a Warwickshire score of 455. And at Kidderminster, Durham are 200 for two in, in their second innings. They lead Worcestershire by 260. And it's Bailey. It's a nice shot by... Now a Thane down on one knee, looking to drive away through the offside. Bannon's at mid-off. He runs maybe 10 yards to his left of field, and there is no run. That Durham second innings, who's got some runs here? Scott Borthwick is 68 not out, and David Benningham, he's 90 not out for Durham. So 
202 for two Durham in their second innings and they leave Worcestershire in Kidderminster by 261 runs. Bailey in and bowling. Oh, he's gone for that slower ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of out the back of the hand and a loopy slower ball, but it doesn't deceive Noah Thane who just dabs it away into the offside and there's no run. Yeah. Well, this guy's... I was myself looking on the pitch for the ball. <laughs> Take a look at some of the Division 2 scores at the end of this uh, Bailey over. 330 for six, Essex lead by 184. Bailey to Thane, who just hops back and right inside the line of that and defends. The ball trickles away down the ground. Nathan Lyon, who's bowled a bit for Lancashire today, he's got one wicket as well. He bowled eight overs in the morning. And then uh, in total, 19 in the day so far, one for 53. He found the outside edge of uh, of Matt Critchley's bat. It's caught by Luke Wells at slip for five. Bowling around the wicket to uh, to Critchley and found the edge. This is left alone by uh, Thane. Ran into the uh, gloves of Matty Hurst. And there is no run. Remains at 3.30 for six. Tom Wesley having a little natter to, to Nathan Lyon, who's come up from, from mid on to, to speak to, to Wesley. He's used the old trick as Nathan Lyon once today, where he's, he's swapped the bales over, which he did at Hampshire last week. Uh, but he's in to Thane. Nice looking shot. Punched away through wide mid off for four runs. I think the umpire was single and, and no ball as well in that. We'll clarify that in a moment, but certainly it's four. That's a lovely shot, um, beautifully timed, just moving onto the front foot and just easing it mm. effortlessly past mid off for four. Yeah, well, see why Tom Westy was quite keen early on to get uh, Thane on strike and getting some batting because he settled in quite nicely. It was a no ball that did overstep, so the score's now 3 3 6 for six. Bailey in. Nice down the leg side. Hurst, the keeper, has gone. Leaping away to his left just to try and get a glove or get something on that. Has he given that as a run? I think he has. Yeah, he has. Mm. He's got a little bit of glove maybe on that or something. Mm. Sound like the bat, but yeah, he's, been, he's given that as a, as a run. So he's deflected off something down to the leg side. Maybe it must have been the glove. It wasn't. It didn't feel or sound like it came off the bat. So Thane moves to 10. 3 3 7 for 6. It's driven for 4 by, uh, by Thane. And uh, that's a nice way for him to end the over. Thumped away for 4 through extra cover. I don't think they ran, Scott, you know. That one down there. No. Because Okay. Maybe not. I just looked on the scoreboard. It yeah, I gave mean, it on the uh, on the scoreboard, so I just went off the scoreboard. But remember, the no ball was hit for four. Thin was on strike. And the lead is now 194. It's 340 for six at the end of that over. Yeah, they've changed it now on the scoreboard. So, yeah, I think he gave it as a. I don't think he was playing a shot, was he? So I think he's given it as a as a dead ball. So yeah. it was a no ball four, which was. Um, for Thane and then the next delivery for Norton the final ball of that over punched away for four just changed it on the scoreboard now Bolson and bowls and that's worked into the onside by Wesley out to deep square leg gets an easy single but, uh, turn comes in first bounce to wicket keeper Hurst the score and moves to 341 for six with that Wesley he goes to 17 Bolson is in his 17th over Currently has two for 63. Few changes for Thane. There's an extra slip comes in, so there's three slips. As Balderson in a bowls and Thane is forward to a full length delivery. Just plays it gently up to extra cover, and there's no run. Played well, hasn't he, Thane? He has. He's. I think he's shaped up pretty well, and it's a good reason why Wesley's not trying to shield him because he seems to be able to 
to handle himself quite well and he's on strike right now he currently has 13 to his name as Balderson bowling from the Graham Guchen late in the day bowls the thing and thing cuts that one that might have been so the good stop or a half chance but it was a good looking shot and ball traveling very quickly to point gets a hand on it and but he ends up getting a single difficult to tell whether yeah. that was a chance or not but either way he prevented it from going for four it went quite quickly he gets a single goes to 14 if he changes once more for Wesley 342 for six as Balderson now with two slips in place bowls and Wesley's working this beautifully off his legs he's been very strong in that area today uh, he's only going to get a single it goes out to deep square leg but timing today off his legs has been very good he goes now to 71 score goes to 343 for six and field changes once more and on this occasion third clip goes to gully point goes to deep and balls and balls of bouncer that's doesn't bounce so I'm not sure whether it's an intentional slow bouncer it just really loops through to the keeper batsman decided to have nothing to do with it so the score stays on 346 343 for six and Thane on 14 Wesley 71 and a six now with a lead of 197 as Balderson with the final delivery of his 17th over bowls a bouncer and he's hooked it down to Long Lake safely so he'll get the single he'll retain the straight thing and the over completed so at the end of the over score now is 344 for the loss of six division two scores as they stand Leicestershire still batting and piling on the runs they're 533 for seven Leicestershire <laughs> they're taking on Derbyshire in Derby this week Mentioned that Joe Root's out for Yorkshire, who are in all sorts of bother at Lords against Middlesex, 86 for five. Your old team, Butch, are, are uh, looking good against the Yorkies. Yorkshire still trail by just one run with five wickets remaining. That could be finished tonight, potentially. Mm. Northamptonshire, 202 for one against Glamorgan. They trail Glamorgan by 69 runs. Glamorgan, 271 all out. Sussex are 200 for two in their first innings against Gloucestershire who made 417 so they trail Gloucestershire by 217 runs they're the division two scores as they stand let's see a uh, bowling change here yeah, Bailey's spell has come to an end and Will Williams replaces him and he bowls to Noah Thane who carefully off the back foot just uh, guides the ball away to point and there is no run Yes, and sunshine again. It's just went upside a few minutes ago. Scott, temperature had dropped significantly, even with the sun out. I thought that might was the, might be the case because you walk back in and switch the heater <laughs> on again. There's Williams to uh, to Thane, solid right in behind it and defends high, left elbow as he. Defends to mid on where Nathan Lyon fields and there's no run. Yeah, he looks very well organized. Thane is, hasn't looked nervous at all. He's quite happy to get in behind the deliveries, also to play shots when the ball's there. Yeah, it's 15 from 32. And another partnership developing here for Essex. They've done that well through the innings. Defends from Williams again, Noah Thane. And there's no run. Partnerships in this innings. Dean Elgar. Uh, well, this is yesterday, wasn't it? Elgar and, and Kushi making 62 for the first wicket. Then Elgar and Cook put on 120 between them from last night and through the morning session. The night watchman for Essex. Sam Cook falling a run short of his first 50 for the club. Elgar and Wesley 24. Wesley and Cock put on 57. Wesley and Critchley just 7. Wesley and Pepper. 53 and now 21 between these two. And that's defended by Thane. Back towards uh, Will Williams and there's no run. Contrast that to the uh, Lancashire innings. 
And just the, the one partnership really of, of note, and it was Bla Blatherwick and Williams right at the, the tail end of the innings. But on 53, the Lancashire all out for 146, and it would have looked a little bit more concerning for Lancashire without that partnership, even though 146 felt and is a long way short in that first dig for Lancashire. They looks to try and cut this ball short and wide from Williams. Got to carve the ball away, plays underneath it and through to the keeper, and there's no run. Yes, that ball pitched just short of a length, made good height off the pitch. And that's what probably defeated Thane. He was looking to cut. Final ball of the over. Williams sets off running. Away from our commentary position in the sunshine, right on over the wicket, balls. That's helped its way down towards fine leg by Noah Thain. Pivots onto the back foot. And able to, uh, to pull it down to, to fine leg for a single. Nick the strike as well. He moves on to 16. It's the end of the over, 345 for six. Yes, and he will maintain strike thin. He's now moved to 16, and the lead is 199. So Essex getting themselves in a very commanding position. Having done the work yesterday when Lancashire were dismissed for 146. Since then it's been a long hard graph for Lancashire to get back into this game. Some steady partnerships right throughout the innings. As you ensure that Essex will find themselves now in a good position as Bolson will continue to bowl from the Graham Gooch in. To thin, he's just changing the field slightly, so there's, there's two slips and then a fourth slip as he's in now. Bolson bowls and Thane is forward to full length delivery, plays it back along the pitch to Bolson, who completes the field in. Bolson, a busy looking type of bowler, just keeps running in, lots of energy. He's had two successes so far, he's got two for 66. And he's in once more to Thane Bowles, and Thane's solidly in behind that, <clears throat> showing good defensive technique, and just plays it gently up to mid-on. And there is no run. Shadows from the lights now starting to come across the pitch as Borderson in bowls and has to adjust as that ball moves slightly away from Thane but he just in time to defend it on the offside this takes a little walk towards the square leg area comes back now and preparing to face the next delivery and just just that sing, single needed to bring up the 200 lead. And Balderson now bowls and he beats him outside the off stump. Slightly wider delivery to the offside and he's played at that one. And fortunately he didn't get a touch went through to the keeper. So Borderson, two balls left in his 18th over. He's in now. And bowls the Thane and drives, but Borderson knocks that one down in this follow through. So good over so far by Borderson, not allowing Thane to get away. Just keeping it nice and tight, 345 for six. And he does and that well, Borderson. Yeah, and for this last ball, obviously, seems the king to bowl at Thane. So square leg goes out to deep, square leg. Cover point goes out three quarters of the way to the boundary, and he bowls, and it's met. It's a no ball. So, got to bowl that one again. The square leg umpire, not too sure he wasn't aware of it. But the score goes now, so the lead is 201, as that ball was defended into the offside, but it was a no ball. 
So you'll have to bowl that all over again. So one ball in his 18th as he bowls, and he's going to get a single here thing as he works it out to mid wicket. I feel that has to come off the square leg boundary, so he'll retain the strike as well. And at the end of the over, it's 348 for six. Tidy enough stuff, isn't it, by Balderson? But uh, it's a pretty solid looking batting card, that isn't mm -hmm. it? Contributions from the from the top four. Great chance that Wesley could go on maybe and turn a very a very good start into into three figures. Elgar falling short, 79. Half century for Kushi last night. Cook with that real bonus, 49. As a night watchman. Yeah, the the you know the partnerships have been developed quite nicely. Mm. Um, right away through, as you said. <clears throat> it's uh, Will Williams in and bowling. It's guided gently down in towards the gully region by uh, Thane, and there's no run. Three hundred and forty. Eight for six, so a lead of 202. Williams for Lancashire. Two slips, gully, point, cover, mid-off. There's a mid-on, there's mid-wicket. Fine leg. Williams to Thay, and that's glanced down towards fine leg. Blatherwick is, is, is a really good athlete. He's quick along the ground, as ever so well, to get across to his right hand side to, to field the ball Fain right. takes a single though yeah nice looking shot just clipping it off the pads in the run of a in, within one run of another batting bonus point here on the, the home side taken five bonus points from this match so far Lancashire just two having missed out on their batting bonus points Williams in and balls left by Wesley. Travels into the gloves of the keeper, Matty Hurst, and there's no run. 3.49 for six. Williams has a lot of work to do. He's now in his 22nd over. Yeah, he's had a spell from the far end with the new boys into the attack from oh, Mr. Cook end now with it. And again, that's uh, full and wide of off stump and doesn't really get up. He kind of skids through to the keeper. Yeah, Wesley's not tempted by that delivery. <laughs> Just being. Finished things off, and so they'll be uh, watching with interest on the day, hoping to take it into the final game of. Three, four, nine for six. On BBC Sports. No we'll bring Glenn back in in a second. Here's uh, Williams in and balls. Ford in defence. And there's no run, but I'll leave it to you and Ben's going to come back in. Yes, that pitch, that ball defended. Back along the pitch. Essex going extremely well here, 349 for six at the moment, which means they lead by 203. And the captain, Tom Wesley, is still there, unbeaten on 71. Joined by the man making his Essex Championship debut, Noah Thane, who's got himself to 18, although he has been dropped down at long leg when top edging a pull. But Essex in total control here, 349 for six, leading by 203 runs. Football and in the FA Cup, holders Manchester City face Chelsea. Yes, 349. That's one run short of a, a batting points. Just to say, we can still hear the uh, program in our ears. We'll get that sorted out for you in a couple of seconds, Roland. So it looks like. Donaldson still will continue. 3.49 for six, he's in now. Bowls and short of a length, and playing just stands up straight and defends to Medon. Score stays on 3.49, and just one run for another batting point, so Essex will be keen to, to get that. 
We have five bonus points so far, so a chance to rack another one up. The field set for Thane right now is three sips and there's a backward point. And it's, it's a nice shot as he strokes it off the back foot, but goes straight to extra cover. And there's no run. He stays on 18. He's looking good as the sun continues to shine here at Chelmsford. Crowd still very much in attendance as Balderson gets to the end of his mark. 3.49 for six. Point goes out on the boundary as Balderson is in now. Balls and that's a single. It's worked into the onside. It could come back for a second actually. That was nicely timed. The 350 is up. Thing goes to 20 and the score moves to 351 and the applause is for the 350. So Thing goes to 20, it's 351 for six. Yes, these two have added 26 runs now, and have, or 28 runs now, of which Thane has got 20 of them. So he's taking the senior role at the moment in terms of scoring. Wilson again to Thane. Drive in through the offside, that should go for four. That's as good a shot as we've seen today. And um, that's a lovely shot, actually. over pitch delivery by Balderson. And just broke through extra cover and into the boundary for four. So are we thinking then, with just over 20 overs still to go in the day, are we thinking that Essex will bat this out if they can? Or are we thinking they might want to sneak Lancashire in for five or six overs at the end of the day? Well, there's no need to push there's still two days left to go so even allowing for bad weather Balderson to Thane and he's bowled in <laughs> that one kept very very low he went back and when you look at the replay you will find that that ball just did not bounce at all so the Thane innings comes to an end he's gone for 24 it's been a good one um, but it very well for his 24 and that a wicket for Balderson is third of the innings but just having a look at it there no no bunks whatsoever just skidding on then gets a good good hand from this crowd here as he makes his way back to the pavilion seventh wicket goes down and Essex are 357 355 for seven yeah, as you say, it, it didn't get up as high as he was expecting to, probably midway between ankle and, and knee, so it didn't get up as high as he was expecting to and ended up squared up and one of those where you're sort of crouching down and almost to sort of illustrate the fact that it's, it's kept a lot lower than you were expecting. What that does is it brings Simon Harmer out for Essex with the lead up to 209 runs just on the second evening of this county championship match. Well, it may be that... Lancashire bowl Essex out and then they will get to bat. Yeah, because Harmer, Harmer won't stand on ceremony. Well, he's getting obviously a word in his ear from his captain who, let's not forget, is 71 not out, Tom Wesley. So he's obviously got his eyes on extending Essex's lead and also a small matter of a personal landmark if he can get there as well. But obviously the team will come first. But he would probably dearly like Simon Harmer to, to stick around and not just start putting back the ball straight away. As you say, so much time left in this game, and we're very advanced already. As Harmer just scores his mark, having taken his guard. So Balderson <coughs> looking for his fourth wicket. Harmerson just... Harmer just doing some foot and footwork as Balderson gets to the crease and Balderson has to return to his mark as Harm is not ready. So the first, second slip and a fourth slip. Backward point extra cover, Bolson into Harmer. Bowls and Harmer is right forward and defends solidly up to bid off a successful over for Bolson at the end of it. It's 355 for seven. Yeah, so more success for Balderson. He's the most successful of the Lancashire bowlers. Three for 75 for him at the moment from his 19 overs. So an economy rate of a shade under four. And he is who just got things moving for Lancashire in terms of 
trying to work their way through this Essex lineup. There's still three more wickets to take as yet, and Harmer is very handy with the bat as well. He's got a first class Essex century to his name. Nathan Lyon to bowl from the Sir Alistair Cook end, so it's a change of bowling. It's going to be bowling to the Essex captain Tom Wesley, who just retakes his guard with the change of bowling. Let's see what the field setting is. I think Keaton Jennings was trying to signal to the Lancashire changing room a couple of moments ago that he possibly wanted another helmet. Yes, and that's just been tossed to a member of the coaching staff on the edge of the rope there to come on and bring on an extra helmet for close in field up. So a slight pause in play here. And in fact, that member of the Lancashire coaching staff has sprinted all the way on to hand the helmet. And another one coming on as well. So just a slight pause in play while we get various bits of equipment out there. Helmets being tossed from player to player. Mm. So what we've we got here for Lyon then, short leg. Well, I say he's a short leg. He could be closer if he wanted to be, but he's sort of on the, the edge of the second strip away from the one we're playing on. Leg slip and a regulation slip, which will be Luke Wells, who took a handy catch earlier on off Nathan Lyon. Lyon is in now and bowling to the Essex captain, Wesley. Just plays defensively out for no run. There's a, a long on as well. A very wide long off on the angle. Sweeper out on the mid-wicket boundary. The extra cover and cover boundary is unguarded. His line in once again. And breaking in the wrists again from Wesley as he turns it into the onside for no run. Bright sunshine here at the county ground. A little bit of cloud cover, but plenty of blue sky around as well. But doesn't stop there still being a little bit of a chill in the air. His line. Lots more flight with that one. Slower delivery. It's driven away by Tom Wesley. And he will pick up four runs. The tumbling effort out there in the deep. Can't cut the ball off. Four more to the Essex captain. He goes to 75. And the score to 359 for seven. Yeah, nicely timed. Over pitch delivery there from Lyon. And driven sweetly through extra cover. There's a huge gap on the offside. This next one is also cut away, and away it goes. Just slightly squarer of the previous one, but the result is the same, which is four more to Tom Wesley, and yes. he moves into the 80s. Yeah, and there was a huge, huge gap. There's a backward point, and then the next field that was all that long off. So really, anything outside the off stump, Wesley was able to straight through that enormous gap. Lions in again, successive boundaries in this over. Whipped away, out to the man, three quarters of the way to the mid-wicket boundary and another singular cruise for the Essex kip skipper. He goes to 80 and the score to 364 for seven. And Lions still with one ball to go of this, the 95th over of this Essex innings. Lancashire's bowlers have been made to work very, very hard for the seven wickets that they've got. None more so than the night watchman Sam Cook, who got himself to 49 today for Essex earlier on in the day. Lyon then finishing off this over, and that's just prodded forward by Harmer, and there'll be no run. End of the over. Nine runs from it, 364 for seven. Yes, things moving nicely along. I think they've had a good day. They've had a good couple of days, actually. First of all with a ball and now with a bat. And Wesley's played his part. He's batted very well for his 80. Was in really good form last season, Tom Wesley, with the bat. A bit sketchy at the start of this season, but he's got himself a couple of starts without really going on, so he'll be pleased with this effort as well. Yeah, he's, he's played well. Now it looks like another change in yeah, bowling. Luke Wells is Wells coming back is on. going to come in to the attack. Got a bit of tap just before the tea interval. He went for 17 off, his, off the six balls that he delivered just before tea. So he's going to bowl to Wesley, who is on 80. Let's slip on short mid wicket and then bring the three fielders, save and single on the offside as well as bowls. And that's short of a length. And Wesley tried to punch it off the back foot, plays it into the ground to one of those three fielders in the ring at extra cover and there's no run so this backward point extra cover long off 
sort of halfway to the boundary, mid on halfway to the boundary. Wells in bowls, and that's good delivery outside the off stump. Just slides on with the arm straight to the wicket keeper, Hurst, who takes it cleanly. Relatively quick approach that Wells has as well. Yeah, he's got a quick arm. So there's a point on the boundary. He's got a deep mid wicket on the boundary, and he's got also a fine leg. And this ball is worked through the onside, so he's going to get a single. It's gone past the left hand of mid wicket, but. The long on fielder comes around and does the fielder. I'm just wondering about the I'm just wondering about the long leg fielder. He's got a long leg and he's got a mid wicket, so he's trying to. <coughs> it's difficult to cover both areas. It might be better to bring him up onto the single and bring bring the square leg mid wicket round to square leg. This delivery is short of a length and Armour has to stand up and defend. 365 for 7, Armour yet to get off the mark and Wesley is on 81. Wells in bowls and that stroke to mid wicket again, a shortish delivery and still can't get off the mark Armour. 20 over and one ball to go in the day. So we're on about 20 to six. So we're going to be out there quite a while longer with the light holding. Well, it's in bowls. Down the leg side, there's a for catch behind and the umpire says not out. So over completed at the end of it, 365 or seven. Yeah, it wasn't sort of anything obvious there. It's probably just brushed the thigh pad or possibly the shirt as it went through as he tried to just help it on his way down the leg side, but nothing really too threatening there from Luke Wells. Nathan Lyon is going to continue from this Sir Alistair Cook end. So elsewhere, just looking at some matches that are going on at the moment in Division 1 of the County Championship. Hampshire 116 for 1, replying to Warwickshire's 455 all out. So the Hampshire batters finding it just as comfortable going as Warwickshire did as Nathan Lyon comes in and bowls to Tom Wesley. Whips that one straight to the man at short leg and there's no run. Kent 244 all out and Surrey are galloping along. 123 without loss in reply. This Lyon is in once again. They've taken the leg slip out here, Lancashire. That's just worked up to mid on and there'll be no run. The Nottinghamshire just starting their second innings and trailing Somerset by 261 runs in that game. Lyon. Oh, that invites the drive from Wesley. Gets nothing on it. Taken by Hurst behind the stumps. Uh, Durham are 249 for three in their second innings against Worcestershire. Lead by a mammoth 309 runs already in that game. That's Division 1 for you as Lyon is in again. Pushing that one right up. And Wesley with a huge stride out. Defensively pushes it back to the bowler. Division 2. Leicestershire have declared 574 for seven against Derbyshire. Double century there for Marcus Harris for Leicestershire. Here's line in. And, uh, oh, Wesley trying to work that on the onside. It's a leading edge, but along the ground out to the offside. And there's no run. Yorkshire 109 for five. Lead Middlesex in their second innings by just 22 runs in that game. Harry Brook out for a first ball duck as well. Here's Lyon. Oh, and that's a big shout for LBW, and he's got to go. Tom Wesley will not be reaching three figures, playing across the line as he planted that front foot and caught palpably in front. Wesley goes 365 for eight. Yes, and Lyon gets another one. And Wesley just looking to turn that ball on the onside and probably going straight on. Yes, he really moved right across <laughs> and exposing his stumps behind him. Umpire decided he's got to go, but end of a very good innings by Wesley. He's really assisted this Essex effort to get to this total of 365, and he goes for 81. And as you said, with so many overs remaining, I think Lancashire may have a very difficult little session at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, Wesley virtually gave himself out, didn't he? He was on the walk before the, before the finger went up because he knew that that front foot and that front leg were right in front of the stumps. And the moment he played across it and didn't get anything on it, he knew that the finger was going to come up. So success for Nathan Lyon.
and that does bring Shane Snater to the wicket. Now, Snater played a couple of really important innings last year down the order, and um, if he gets himself in, he can give it a bit of a bash, so I might see a little few late fireworks here. Just to run, finish off the scores for you in Division 2, Glamorgan 271 all out and Northamptonshire 221 for two. So trail by 50 still with eight first innings wickets intact. And Sussex replying to Gloucestershire's 417 all out are 215 for three. Rolls into Hammer, bowls. Hammer cuts. It's going to get runs here. The ball is running out towards the third man boundary, but he's only going to get two as the fielder from backward point on the boundary comes around. To his left does the fielding, returns to the keeper, so he gets off the mark hammer with two. Score goes to 367 for the loss of eight. <coughs> Langer should be hoping to wrap this in his up as soon as possible. As well as to Hammer and he's forward, just brings him right forward, pushes it out to extra cover, and there's no run. Catch six, six catch. 22 situation here for Lancashire. Do they want to stay in the field or do they want to bat? That's um, well bowls and Harm is forward. Ball defended out on the on side. I know that. I know they're all professionals, but the opening batters might be out <laughs> there going, well, oh, I'll take another two. I'm trying to work out how many overs I might have to yeah. see out this evening. Yeah, if, they have, if they have to bat for 10 overs, that's, that's significant. Harm goes for the pull. Misses the ball, he loses the keeper, goes 20 meters behind the keeper, but no run. Score stays in 367 for eight as Wells in his third over into Hammer bowls. Hammer cuts hard up to backward point, fielder on the boundary. Turn comes in, he gets a single Hammer, goes to three. Bring Snater on strike to face his first delivery. And just looking around, no significant change in the field, so stays exactly the same. Well, bowls and Snater Ooh. defends. Not the way we would like the ball goes into the ground, bounces up and into the keeper's gloves. So the over is completed at the end of that over. Essex are 368 for the loss of eight, with a lead of 222. Yeah, so two more wickets for Lancashire to get through, and there's credit to them. They're getting their way through it. They've stuck to their guns throughout the day. Essex have never sort of really been scoring huge runs in, in short spaces of time. You know, Lancashire have been very disciplined, but they have put three catches down today. As Nathan Lyon prepares to continue from the Salasta Cook end. He's just darkening a little bit as a bit of cloud comes to cover the sun. Here's Lyon into Harmer, turns that one down to the man at short fine leg, and there'll be no run there. 368 for eight in the 99th over of this innings. The lead is 2 2 2. One of the favourite things we used to hear Richie Benno say. Here's Lyon, still with the regulation slip in, tosses that one up, but Harmer will not be tempted. Just plays defensively and Hurst again scuttles out from behind the stumps to do the fielding. Tosses the ball back to Nathan Lyon. Two for 62 for him so far in this innings. He's been wheeling away. He's had a go from both ends as well. Here he is. Oh, that's a full up. But Harmer again isn't going to pull out the big booming drive down the ground. And Lyon fields again on his follow through. Gives the ball a bit of a row on the back of the thigh, tosses it up into his left hand, examines it. And he's very quickly into his delivery stride once again. That has Harmer squared up on the crease, but plays defensively for no run again. No one out on the cover boundary for Lyon here, but he has got a deep mid-wicket the other side. As this next one has Harmer pushing... A long way forward, there's a half-hearted shout for LBW, but it's a long way forward there is Harmer. Long stride, he's got three to his name. And he is ready now to receive this final ball of this over from Nathan Lyon. 
and he squeezes that one out just wide of the man, short mid wicket, and he'll come through for a single. So he nicks the strike, 369 for eight, and the lead goes up to 223 runs for Essex. <clears throat> Pretty tight over there by Nathan Wyan, who now has figures of two for 63. He's got two, 22 overs, even. On a pretty cold day, the off-spin off is still able to make a significant contribution. <clears throat> but they're still interesting wells. So maybe Lancashire trying to get through these overs as quickly as possible. Wells will continue, and Harm is on four. It's 369 for eight. Wells bowls, and Harmer comes back to a short delivery and just defends back to the bowler. Snater yet to get off the mark. Um, the lead is 223. We're in the hundredth over. As Wells to Harmer. Cuts, doesn't, plays it into the ground. It goes straight to feel that short third man and there's no run. There's a slippery place as Wells he now has none for 21, and this is his fourth over. Bowls, and Hammer's working this on the onside, he's going to look for two. He's gone for one, he should get the second one, and he's on his way back. The return comes in, but Hammer completes two, just turning that ball behind square. Feel this converge from deep square leg and long leg. Result. Two runs, 371 for eight. Wells in, bowls. And Harmer forces a quicker, shorter delivery to mid wicket. Can't score. Stays on six. Good comeback from Wells because his first one went for 17 just before T, so he's only conceded six runs from the 2.4 overs he's bowled since. As the son makes another appearance, and this delivery is worked into the onside. Up to deep square legs, he's going to get a single. Power on this occasion. Snater comes on strike and field stays exactly the same. Wells bowls to Snater. Snater's driving hard out to mid off, but field is halfway back to the boundary, does the field in. He can't score, so he stays on naught at the end of the over. It's 372 for eight. Yeah, Wells putting it right up there and right outside off stump, and Snater got all of it, but hit it straight to the man at mid-off, so he doesn't get anything for what was a very good cricket shot. So that's 100 overs gone now in this Essex innings. The lead is 226 after they bowled out Lancashire for 146 yesterday. And that seems an awfully long time ago, and then we had that frenetic late dip by Essex last night where Feroz Kushi hit a, a 30 ball 50. Nathan Lyon to resume from the Sir Alistair Cook end. He's in and he bowls to Harmer who whips that one away into the onside and jogs through for the single. 373 for eight. Brings Snater down onto strike to face Nathan Lyon for the first time. And as a result, Snater retakes, I say retakes, takes his guard for the first time at that end, the far end. A lot of people still stayed inside the ground to see the full day's play. And most of their cricket fix right at the start of what's going to be a long old summer. As Lyon is ready once again. Quicker, flatter, but Snater gets his first run here. Just plays it to the man at short mid-wicket, but Bahannon just has to run around to his right-hand side. And that's why they can come through for the run. 374 for eight. So rotating it nicely here, Essex, but certainly showing no signs that they're going to give it a real dart and get Lancashire in at the moment. They're playing very circumspectly. This next one from Lyon has Harmer propping forward defensively for no run and Hurst it is who comes out from behind the stumps to do the fielding with his Lancashire cap folded up and tucked into the rear of his waistband with a helmet on while he stands up to Australia's key finger spinner. And Harmer this time works that into the onside for no run. Two more balls to come in this over. And after that, we'll have 15 overs still in the day. 
We're at five to six now on a Saturday evening from BBC Essex, BBC Lancashire and Manchester. Five Live Sports Extra. Here's Lyon. Quicker. And Harmer just goes back and plays defensively again for no run. Very quickly back to Nathan Lyon. Lancashire getting through the overs quickly with these two spinners working in tandem. Still a stiffish breeze blowing those flags around the ground. Lion. Oh, now that's rolled up the front pad of Simon Harmer, and Lion joins in the appeal, which comes from Hurst behind the stumps. It's met with just a very gentle shake of the head. There's no run. End of the over. 374 for eight is the Essex score. Yes, in the off spinner, just tossing that one up, probably pitching outside the off stump. So he survives, and the lead now is 228. 374 for eight. And Lee's still entrusted with the ball. He'll continue now and he's going to ball to Snaith. Snaith is on one. Bit on has gone back to long on now as this short of a length and it's probably a bit high. That looked, looked high from our vantage point. We'll have to wait and see, but the finger goes up and he's out LBW. Um, hmm. Just trying to whip a shortish delivery. It did look high, didn't it? But we're looking let's, from behind. Let's see from in front now. Hmm. I thought about it, but he's got to go. Lee's gets a wicket. So Wells gets a wicket in his fifth over. So. Lancashire may very well have to bat tonight. And mm. Just looking at that for me, I mean, it's not, there was no there was no act of, of uh, descent from Snater at all. He, he he just had a little look, but to me that looks, that did look like that was sneaking down leg side, and it looked very high as well. High, high. But he's out and brings the last man to the wicket, and it is Porter. Jamie Porter. Yep, and um, I think Porter will be thinking, well, I better stay out here, otherwise I'm going to have to bowl. <clears throat> and he joins Simon Harmer in the middle. Harmer just has a little wander out to him, a little punch of gloves. Still 14.5 overs to go in the day, so you know, if you think it happens in the next couple of overs, there'll still be 10 overs left yeah. for Lancashire to see out. And it is a long way back for them at 228 runs behind. Especially if they lose wickets tonight. Mm. That will... <laughs> right, so Wells, he's now got one for 24. It's 374 for nine. Bowls, that's short of a length, and Porter defends back along the pitch. Bowler does the field in. It's Still maintaining that deep mid wicket and the long leg as well as bowls and short of length. And once again, Porter defence. This time it goes out to mid wicket. Yet to get off the mark. Harm is on eight. 374 for nine. Well, it's bowls. And again, this is short of length and defended. Two extra cover and there's no run. No movement to bring the field in. This main trying to keep uh, this one stroked off the bat. Foot is gonna get a single and get off the mark border. It goes up to point and the over is no I thought for a minute the over is completed, but well it gets another ball at Harmer. So one, one ball remaining in this fifth over. Rolls to Harmer, and that's helped down to long leg. He's going to get a single, so he'll retain the strike as well. Turn comes in, taken by Harris on the first bounce. So at the end of the over, it's 376 for the loss of nine. That brings the lead now to 230.
Big wickets gone down in Division 2 at Lord. Johnny Tattersall is out for Yorkshire, and they're 124 for six in their second innings. They lead Middlesex by just 38 runs. Harry Brooker first ball duck earlier today, and Joe Root out for 32. So Yorkshire is staring down the barrel at HQ. And uh, the Durham Centurion, David Beddingham, is out at Kidderminster. Uh, Durham 260. Six for five, but they still lead Worcestershire by a huge 326 runs. Here's Nathan Lyon then with Lancashire in search of the final Essex wicket. Full delivery, which Harmer tries to get something on but doesn't get enough on it. And it's fielded by Bahannon just on the edge of the square at mid-on. There's no run. The lead is 230 runs as Lyon still with a man down at long on. Bowls. Palmer is not interested, though, in hitting out at this stage. Plays defensively out, and there's no run once again. A few people just begin to pack up a few bags in front of us, thinking, well, I won't have anything more to eat or drink for the rest of the day. Just watch the remaining cricket that there is. As Lyon comes in, and Harmer with a forward press. Works it behind square on the offside, but won't pick up anything there either. 376 for nine. Harmer on nine. Porter... A single so far, the run rate a shade over 3.6. It's been hovering around about the four mark, which is below all day for Essex. As Lyon is in once again, that's quicker. And played straight into the arms on the bounce of short leg by Harmer. Been no run there. Porter probably just beginning to think about having ball in hand at some stage this evening. But like any lower order batter, does enjoy his batting. Lyon comes in and uh, from well outside off stump, Harmer fetches that somehow <laughs> to the man at mid on. Yes, the shovel. No run. <laughs> There's miles outside off stump. He says that's where the run is because they've got a ring of field on the offside preventing the single here as Harmer pushes back to Lyon on his follow through and there is no run. Very quickly through that over, which is a maiden for Nathan Lyon who has two from 65 from his 24 over. He's bowled very tidily, very nicely today on a pitch which isn't really helping the spinners. And Essex lead by 230 runs on the second evening of this four-day county championship game. Yes, the maiden over there by Nathan Lyon. He's now completed 24 overs, three maidens. He's got two for 65. And Nottinghamshire in trouble already in their second innings. They trail Somerset by 249 runs and they're 12 for one. Then Slate has gone for eight. Bowling a Davy. Davy, who was another successful night watchman today, made a 40 odd for Somerset. Forward short leg in place now, as well as bowls, and that's driven nicely out to cover point on the boundary, so he gets a single. Brings Harmer back on strike. Score now 377 for nine. Lead three, 231. Sorry, Short 136 legs. without loss against Kent. Sorry, Roland. Rory Burns 60 and Dom Sibley 70 not out. They're racing along. Well, it's to Harmer, bowls. And Harmer's struck on the pads. He's given out LVW. And um, I'm not happy about that, but Wells gets another one. And lead is now 231. It means that Lancashire have got to come out and bat tonight in this little 10 over period. It's going to be pretty tricky. And they will hope that they don't lose any wickets in that period, but he's trapped in front. Um, yeah. I don't think he can complain about that one. We'll just get it on, try to work it into the onside. So over, that's the end of the innings. The innings has closed at 377. And that's come off 103.2 overs. Last man out, Harmer, LBW to Lees. And lead now 231. There we are, 231 runs then, so we'll take a, a break for five or ten minutes. Do rejoin us for the Lancashire second innings. A tricky spell for the Lancashire batters to negotiate this evening. Essex are in the box seat. Do rejoin us.
Back on at Chelmsford then, the Lancashire fielders and bowlers are out first. And just as I say that, Surrey have just lost their first wicket. Rory Burns is out for 69, but they're 144 for one, so they're only 100 behind Kent down there at Canterbury. Here, Lancashire, second innings are 231 runs behind Essex. And the openers are back out there, Luke Wells and Keaton Jennings. And it will be Sam Cook who is going to open the bowling for Essex from the Graham Gooch end. So that's up there in the distance, and it's Wells who is on strike. Right arm around the wicket, in comes Cook. Three slips are in there, and Wells immediately works that to short mid-wicket. Diving stop is made by Jordan Cox, and there is no run. So 9.5 overs left in the day, Scott. Yes. And some work for Lancashire to do. Yeah, what a horrible little nine overs it is for uh, the Lancashire... Uh Openers, but this time yesterday we saw um, Kuchi come out and give it a right bashing, didn't we? But I'm not so sure that Luke Wells and Keaton Jennings are going to do this, something similar. They might be a, maybe a little bit more uh, conservative in their approach. This next one from Cook uh, has uh, Wells playing across his front pad, but he gets the inner face of the bat to it, and Lancashire are off and running with a single down to long leg. And Jamie Porter appears from under the lip of the Tom Pierce stand and throws the ball in, and it's one without loss and Porter just practices a little bit of bowling and some stretching which gives us an idea that he's going to open from this end don't forget you can keep following it on the text feed on the BBC Sport website all the games are still in motion at the moment lots of news coming in from around the grounds as Jennings just surveys the field examines his bat very carefully places himself ready to receive his first delivery from Cook and has met with the full face of Keaton Jennings back and a bat and a real thud as it hits the middle of his forward defensive shot and there's no run again. 147 for one Surrey then, so the lead is under 100, or the deficit I should say I guess is under 100. Lots of cricket still to be played up and down the country, although at Lords it does look as though they're heading to possibly the quickest finish of the weekend at the moment. Might go into day three. Here's Cook into Jennings, just tentatively. Plays from the crease, defensively for no run. So Yorkshire in their second innings are 140 for six. That's still only 53 ahead of Middlesex. So I think that will go into a third day. Lords. Derbyshire are 12 for three, replying to Leicestershire's huge 574 for seven declared trouble at Derby as Cook disappears off into the distance into a bit of a shady area she's being cast by one of the floodlights and then he appears into the bright sunshine and Jennings on the walk trying to cover any movement manoeuvres that to short mid wicket where Cox does the tidying up and there's no run again one more ball to come of this opening over and then Lancashire can count it down and tick it off and say nine more to go lots of chat in the Essex outfield, lots of players with hands in pockets as well because they're discovering exactly how cold it out is out there when you're in the field too. Elgar at first slip, Harmer at second and Critchley at third. As Cook with the red soles to his bowling boots, turns at the end of his run and comes in to complete the first over. Uh, Jennings on the walk again, turns that straight along the ground to square leg. And there will be no run there. Noah Thane with his first touch of the ball. And Lancashire are one without loss. Yeah, they. Um, I thought they, they did all right, didn't they, in the end, Lancashire? They didn't enjoy a morning. It was a morning to forget, really. But they've kept going. They've, and they've, they've bowled Essex out in two sessions. I suppose that's the way they've got to look at that. Um, they've fought back pretty well, I think. Three wickets for George Balderson, a couple for Nathan Lyon, two for Luke Wells. Lancashire ending with a bit of spin there. They were, they were behind on the over right. And they managed to get that uh, bat level again. One for Jack Blatherwick and two for Will Williams. But uh, a very commanding position for Essex. 377 all out, so a lead of 230. And a lot of batting to do over the course of the next uh, couple of days for Lancashire. If they're um, going to leave here with something to show for it. Essex in a strong position. Well set to uh, throw everything they can at, uh, at Lancashire and see if they can force a win. It's a long way behind in the game. 
But two experienced opening batters, Luke Wells and Keaton Jennings. It's Jamie Porter around the wicket to uh, to Wells. Again, just a little advanced forward and then plays it with a straight bat. The ball is up towards mid on. And there's a ferocious polishing job being done there by the Essex captain, Tom Wesley. Oh, yes, he's he's chief ball shiner. I can only think he's got a sponsorship deal with a dry cleaner somewhere because <laughs> by the end of a four-day game... His whites are no longer white. It's Porter into uh, to Wells. Dabbed away to mid-wicket this time. There's a short mid-wicket in place. That's Jordan Cox. And there's a square leg and a mid-on. And then fine leg, mid-off uh, point. And three slips. Well, actually, probably two and then a little gap to a third slip. It's uh, Luke Wells who's uh, on one. That's indeed our Lancashire Porter balls to Wells. Just covering up and defending. Guides the ball away into the offside and there's no run. Bowling very, very full, Jamie Porter, giving the ball every opportunity to do something. And as a result, yeah, the Lancashire batters. Just a little bit of a chat from, from Jennings at one end, something down to his batting partner, Wells. He's on the walk trying to cover any movement. So he did in the first innings as well. Porter scampering back in for, for Essex. Balls, full of ball to Luke Wells, who defends solidly enough, leaning forward again. Slightly angled bat and defends into the ground. The ball bounces its way to Noah Thane, who's at cover point. And there is, uh, again, no run. Porter in the first innings for Essex. Um, didn't last too long with his first spell. Luke Wells, I think, hit him for 17, I mm. think, off one over. And he, he was replaced by Snater, who then got right into the wickets. But he's back into Wells. And that's a nice ball that beats Luke Wells. Uh, to the gloves of the keeper. And there's no run. He's bowling around the wicket to the left-hander. It's a little bit of movement there for Porter, just away from uh, Luke Wells. Both batters come down the pitch and do a little bit of... Inspection work. They're not overstriving Essex. They're not men around the bat and that sort of thing. Even even this late in the day, three slips, but but nothing else around the bat whatsoever in catching positions. Final ball of Porter's first over. And again, beating Wells, who plays forward. The ball slides past the edge of the bat <coughs> and uh, into the gloves of uh, Michael Pepper. Solid start by Jamie Porter. Starts with a maiden. Eight overs remaining in the day. Lancashire batting second time round. One without loss and trail by 230 runs. It's a long way back from here for Lancashire. They're professionals. They're used to being in positions like this, but they've been in positions like this during their careers, I'm sure. And they'll go about it in their, their own particular way. They'll have their own mental processes to get themselves through overs and sessions and work their way back into this game. The Sam Cook continues from the Graham Gooch end. He's in now and bowling to Jennings. And Jennings wanders almost down the wicket and places that one away in front of square on the onside. I don't think it's quite got the legs to get to the boundary and it hasn't. It's hauled in, but they'll jog through for a comfortable three. All the runs off the bat there for Jennings. He comes to three and a single to Wells, which means they're four without loss, our Lancashire. So the deficit down to 200 and 27. FA, FA Cup semi-final being played today as well. The first one, currently Manchester City nil, Chelsea nil. Sorry, Scott. Look at that result. Look at that. Are you on about South Burnley earlier on? From South Yorkshire today. Look mm. what a result that is. Here's Cook in. And uh, well, Wells wanders down. Well, some wanders, takes a stride down, then shoulders, arms, and it goes through. Yeah, Sheffield United won, Burnley four. They're still alive. Oh, my word. Still alive. They're dancing in the streets of Burnley tonight. Uh, Luton got smacked 5 1 at home by Happy Brentford, days. which helps. Yeah, that's <laughs> ideal. <laughs> so, a good day. A good day. I suppose if you're a Burnley fan, yeah. <laughs> Sam Cook is ready. Uh, Luke Wells has spotted something that he doesn't like lying on the pitch. So he just goes up and does a little bit of tidying up. Throws something to the side, a little bit of detritus. 
as Cook comes in round the wicket to the left-hander. Oh, and he's shoulders arms to that. He's got something on it, mm. and it goes along the ground. It's well stopped in the end by Critchley. There's no run, and more importantly for Lancashire, no harm done, four without loss. Yeah, I think it's one of those where he's actually tried to leave it. We'll look back on the replay here. I think he's just tried to last minute mm. pull the bat away, and he's deflected off the face of the bat. That was a good start, wasn't it, by Critchley down to his left? He took an absolute stunning catch, didn't he, Critchley? And as did... Um, Dean Elgar in the first innings. Some good slip catching by Essex first time round. They'll hope to get something now as Cook is into Wells very defiantly. Plays defensively up to mid off where Shane Snater picks up and there's no run again. Yeah, two went down for Lancashire in the slips today and, and one in the deep. Other than that, their, their fielding was, I was about to say, tidy enough, but then it was Luke Wells let one go on the boundary, didn't he? spun one way, he went the other way and it went for four. But those sorts of things happen. As Cook turns now. Comes in to bowl to oh, Wells. Oh, tentatively playing at that one and the bat was a long way in front of the front pad and it squirts away off the face of the bat. And they'll come through for a couple of runs. Six without loss. One more ball to go in this over and I think we'll bring Butch in just to, just to round off the day for the closing seven overs. We may as well give him a little bit of work, keep him warm. <laughs> I hate to think he was underemployed. I hate to see I hate to think we're not using his particular skills to their to their full throughout the two days that I'm with you. Dick Davis is with you tomorrow, Scott, for Sunday and Monday. He was here today, I saw him. Yep. Only because they got curry on. Oh. Now, here's Cook in. <laughs> That's just played back down the pitch by Wells, and there's no run. Yeah, he'd heard the curry was back on the menu, so he popped in. I'm sure he popped in to see us as well. End of the over. It's six without loss, so I'll leave you in the capable hands of Scott Reed and Roland Butcher. Yeah, seven overs left for Lancashire to try and negotiate through this evening. Try and get themselves uh, back tomorrow with all <laughs> ten wickets in hand and see how the third day shapes up. I suppose with it, be just going to try and bat better second time round, haven't they? Try just show some uh, this in the second innings things that they that they were unable to do in the first innings. It just didn't. It just kind of all ra unravelled pretty quickly first time round for Lancashire. So they've got a chance to try and set the record straight in the second innings. You you crack on, Butch. Yes, and no. Porter will continue. He's going to ball to Jennings, who's on three. The score is six without loss. He's got two slips in the gully. He's born in the wicket. In and bowls, and Jennings comes forward to a shortest length delivery and just defends it solidly on the onside. Just to look at the rest of the field, there's just two other fielders on the offside. There's a cover point and a wideish mid off, and four fielders on the leg side. Obviously, me thinking there's a weakness on the on side for Jennings. He's got a short mid wicket catch in square leg, mid on and man on the long leg boundary. Porter on the Alistair Cook in bows and Jennings is struck on the pads is allowed to peel for every and he's out. Yes, the breakthrough comes and it's always gonna be a little tricky period this for Lancashire. Jennings given out LBW to Porter, squared him up a bit, and um, uh, we're looking at a replay here that we can't see very well, so it doesn't really help us. So the umpire has he's given that one out, and Jennings has to go. Lancashire have lost their first wicket, and Jennings goes LBW to Porter for three. And score at six for one. In the first innings, uh, Luke Wells was, was given out LBW off the bowling of Shane Snater, and he was bowling right arm around the wicket to the left hand. He bowled quite wide of the crease and angled it in. And I thought, watching it back a few times in the first innings, that Luke Wells may have been a little bit harsh to, harsh to dealt with there, and perhaps that wasn't uh, going to go on and hit the stumps. Maybe just slide down the leg, the leg side. That one, I, I'm, I'm not so sure. That looked. Well, if, any, if, there, if there's any doubt, if there was any doubt, it would probably be missing, probably missing off stump if there was any doubt. 
guess we'll have to see a much better replay than yeah, this it's one. Yeah, difficult one that the, the, the one that we've seen. Well, I don't know, the guy with the best view in the house has given it out, hasn't he? Alex Wharf. So the night watchman, Will Williams, inspired by what Sam Cook did last night, says, "Leave it to me. I'm going to get 50 instead. I won't fall one run short." Yes, and obviously Lancashire would, <coughs> would hope that. Williams can do a similar job to, to Cook, but... Oh, heck, oh, bless you, oh, oh, well, oh, blind me, oh, dearie me. It's a very healthy commentary box, is this? But before he can him do with that, no germs. he's got to look after Porter, Bowles, and he's edging and dropped that slip. And he's going to get... F no, it's not gone for four, but it's obviously decided not to run because he's the night watchman and... His job is to protect, protect the batters, but he could have gone first ball there. Good delivery by Porter, finding the edge, flying hard to the second slip fielder. Surprised him, the pace of that one, and he's dropped it. So, he survived, Williams, and Porter in once more to Williams and bowls, and Williams gets a delivery that keeps a little bit low. He stays right in line and defends it on the offside. Now having the chat with Wells in the middle. That first delivery was thick outside edge. It went quick to the second slip fielder who seemed a little bit surprised. And just parried it away. So the score still says six for one. Jennings the man out as Porter bows. And he's forward, Williams, right forward, and just defends it to short mid wicket. And there's no run. Wells is on three. Williams yet to get off the mark. Gonna have six overs after this. Over from Porter. He's got one ball left in this over. And Wells will be hoping that Williams can get a single and get up. <laughs> and get up that end. Porter with the final delivery and he's working it into the onside but he won't get a single because it's gone straight to square leg successful over for Porter yeah, wicked knowledge maiden. by supporters here at Chelmsford it's a wicket maiden and at the end of that over Lancashire in their second innings still trailed by 225 they're 6 for 1 it was Harmer with the uh, drop catch Almost two in two for Porter. Started well here, hasn't he, Porter? Might feel he just kind of uh, playing a bit of catch up from from the first innings. He um, quite get going first time round with the new ball yesterday. Uh, Jamie Porter, Shane Snater came in and did the damage for uh, for Essex, but he's right on the money first time round with that wicket made. And Sam Cook then from the Gooch end with uh, Wells on strike, and that's left. And taken by Pepper, and there is uh, no runs. A six for one should really be six for two with that chance put down by Harmer. Keaton Jennings having uh, scored a century at Hampshire last week 172 this week out for five first time round. And uh, unable to uh, to contribute second time round for Lancashire. Here's Cook back in to Wells. It'll nudge away through the leg side for a single. And Wells moves on to four. And the score moves on to seven for one. Yeah, that's the beauty of this game. That one day, one week, you could be in great form. And the next week, next innings... Nothing happens. That's the game. It's a cruel game, have. Butch. It cruel be, game. It can be. He'll put his feet up next weekend, Keaton Jennings, like you don't have a game. Weekend off. <coughs> right, Will Williams is... Uh, he's back on strike. Sam Cook, who performed beautifully as a night watchman for Essex last night and this morning, is in and bowling to Williams as short ball. Williams gets underneath it and through to Pepper. And there's no rum. 
224 behind and already a wicket down in the second innings Lancashire, 7 for 1. Yes, and at the end of the day, Essex, this is the session, they've got everything to gain, really, Lancashire. Not a great deal to gain from this session. No, it's, yeah, it's one of those awkward little sessions where you can probably, where well, you are going to potentially lose more than what you can, well, what you can gain. It's uh, defended away by Williams, cut balls. Again, there's no run. They've got the three slips in place, Elgar, Harmer and Critchley. And then Jamie Porter just at uh, backward point. Noah Thane is at uh, mid-off. The captain's at mid-on. Jordan Cox at short mid-wicket. Shane Snater is at square leg. And there's Cook. Sets off again. Williams waits. Trying to ball, work the ball away to, to mid-wicket. Just comes off his thigh pad and drops back down the pitch. It's very carefully picked it up, picked up by Matt Critchley, who hands it to Noah Thane, and he'll throw it up to the skipper, and he'll give it a polish as Cook wanders back to his mark. Final ball coming up of the fifth over. And then five left tonight. Seven for one. The night watchman Will Williams yet to score. He's faced seven deliveries so far. Doing his best to keep Bohannon back until later in the in the, the day tomorrow. There's Cook to Williams, forward and defence. And carefully steers it away into the offside for no run. End of the over, seven for one. This can't get the single, Williams. So it's now back to Wells, who must try to get off strike as quickly as possible. So that if anyone has to face, it's Williams. Porter will continue. Ed. Just five overs remaining in the day's play. And looks as if we have managed to get through another full day of play, albeit being a chilly one, it's still. So, well settles down and Porter's balling around the wicket. Two slips in the gully in place and bowls and Wells is on the front foot steers this one out to a backward point and there is no run fielder goes from point to do the field in just to continue with this field a bit surprised that perhaps haven't gone a little bit more tacking with Wells another slip in there you can get you can get him out that would be a fillet tonight as Porter, he's got one wicket so far, the wicket of Jennings, he's in now. And Bowles, Bowles is forward, that ball's come, coming into the left-handed batter, ends up at backward square, and there's no run. Seven for one, two twenty-four. That was a long way to go, and Lancashire's first thing this evening is to just try and survive, get to close the play as Porter is in and bowls, and Wells is beaten by a ball that gathers pace off the wicket, surprised the keeper as well. Almost took it behind him. And um, had he got a touch on that, it would have taken some catching. That ball did fly off the pitch quite nicely. <laughs> didn't it? Yeah, you can see it back on the replay. Mm. But, uh, had uh, Pepper hopping behind him, didn't he? As he took took the catch, you say his <coughs> gloves ended up being almost behind his yeah. body. Yeah. yeah. Border once more in balls and beats him with a good one. Just going across the left hander. He's, he's on the front foot, and that one goes through to the keeper. He's quite slippery, isn't he, Porter? He's quicker. He's, Porter would be quicker than Cook. Is he? He, look, he looks well, like the is quicker than Cook. He looks it to there for sure. Yeah. He's, um looks to be in very good rhythm. And ball's coming out nicely at the moment. And you'll see the confidence from picking that wicket up as well. He's in now again and bowls. And this time Wells is solidly forward and strokes it to extra cover. Still can't score. He looks like he just pushed that ball through, doesn't he? He just get nice kind of kiss off the surface, it really does skid on. Yeah, when he gets it right, I mean, that one that the keeper took, 
and that was that was travelling. Well, oh, that's quite nice. They put on the uh, the bowling speeds of Porter there, so he's just, he's he's pushing up kind of some news. Kind of late seventies. He's in now and bowls, and that's well covered by Wells as he gets in line and defends. Uh, another good over there by Porter. It's a maiden over, and he now has figures of one for none after three overs he's got three with <laughs> yeah. three maidens and score seven for one ah oh, it's a great start for uh, for porter i mean it, it probably highlights just how consistent he's been for so long that we were surprised yesterday on the first day they didn't quite get it right and he you know, was, was pulled out the attack pretty quickly and snater came in and did the damage but blimey right on the money there isn't he hmm. the fastest ball we sent down there was 76 miles an hour According to the, 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 the speed gun that we're using uh, here this week, be interested to see how that compares now to Cook from uh, the uh, the Gooch end, who's going to continue in the bowling to uh, to Williams, who uh, plays forward and defends and works it out towards mid wicket, and there's no run. But seven for one. So Williams on naught, Wells on four. Two twenty four behind. Goodness, there's some work to do here for Lancashire. Essex have enjoyed two very good days. Um, I guess they're going to get a helmet and perhaps put a short leg in for for Williams. Yeah, it looks that way, doesn't it? Yeah. I think it's Cushy that's uh, making his way across. He <laughs> just saw him across the screen there, running across the three slip fielders to uh, <coughs> go and uh, get this, yeah, the helmets and the pads. Yeah, maybe a short leg in place. Captain and bowler in conversation. Cook and Porter with this new ball with runs to play with at the back end of the, of the second day. An awkward time to come out and try and bat for Lancashire. I've, uh, I've made the, the very most of it so far. Seven for one. 377 all out Essex their first innings score with uh, captain top scoring on uh, 81 Dean Elgar making 79 Sam Cook making 49 falling one short of his first 50 for Essex dismissed straight after lunch frustratingly for Cook like I should well it was a morning session to forget really and uh, we're able to take uh, the wickets in the afternoon and evening session to wrap Essex's first innings up, but not without starting 231 runs behind second time round. There's the full short leg in place. Cook in bowls. Prodding at that one is Will Williams. Through towards the keeper, no run. Yeah, Williams just searching outside the off stump there. Double bluff. Short leg in place and then bowl a length delivery. Fortunate not to get a touch. Cook back to his uh, his mark. Back in over the wicket to to Williams. Again playing missing. That's a good one. Nice delivery there, just seaming away. Tom Williams. Well, he's got that. He's, he's, that seam movement, whether it's to the right hand or to the left hand, has worked beautifully. Hasn't he? He's got the ball to just to, to just to, to leave the batter. He's, he was he was excellent around the wicket to Jennings a little bit uh, today, but especially yesterday, and now over the wicket to Wells. Spun him round and beat the outside edge. Ooh, Cook to, to Williams <laughs> comes back in to, to Will Williams and <laughs> catches him somewhere in the fleshy part of the body. Yeah, not an easy time to bat this. Two bowlers running in, knowing that they've got a very short session and a new ball that's likely to give them some assistance. I don't know whether we might be able to have a look at the, the speed that, of Cook. Maybe. In a moment or two, see what how that compares to Porter. Here comes uh, Cook in and balls to Williams. That's a good ball again that beats him. 
<clears throat> and uh, through it goes to the keeper, kind of cook turns around and then Williams walks away to square leg. And as Roland Butcher says, this is a tough time to bat with these two bowling. They're right on the money at the moment. One ball left of the over. There's another maiden from Porter, the previous over. He's yet to concede a run. Cook on the brink of backing it up with another maiden from the far end. Balls to Wells, that's it to Williams rather. He does just get bat on ball, able to clip it away off his pads down towards uh, deep backwards square leg for a single. And Williams does his job there. He's on strike, he needs to be facing as many deliveries as he can, I suppose, as night watchman. It's the end of the over. Eight for one, seven overs gone. Wells on four, Williams on one. And uh, Lancashire trail by 223 runs with three overs left tonight. Yes, I think that 223 wouldn't be figuring too much in their minds right now. What's more important now is that Yes, Cook's showing his speed to be above as Porter now will get a chance to bowl at Williams. He's in now and bowls and Williams edges, does he? No, that ball's gone past the, the outside edge. It looked as if it was an edge because the keeper had to dive away to his right. But again going past the edge and Williams living dangerously. You must have experienced this. Uh, Roland, because I mean, we're just seeing Cook's speeds there, and he is quicker than Porter on that last over compared to Porter's last over. But he, the, it's interesting when you when you're facing bowlers that perhaps are not as quick as the opponent, but are quite slippery. I think. But, Porter, is, but Porter's balls look quicker. They do, yeah. The way they're they're, they're going past the bat, they look, certainly look quicker. But slip cordon reinforced as Williams is now. Defending the ball in the air. Carried about 15 metres before it bunks up to mid on. So we've now got four slips in place. How big a challenge is that then to face that when you've got Cook is quicker than Porter on the last when you compare those two last overs, but Porter feels like he's a bit slippier and, and quicker as a batter. Well, the ball's going past the bat a little bit quicker with um, the Porter for sure. As he's in now and bowls. And Williams this time gets nicely into position and defends nicely back along the pitch. Bowler does the field in and there's no run. It's so now eight for one and Lancashire just trying to survive the rest of the day. That's all they can do right now. Another two overs after this to get through, and then you can think about tomorrow as Porter in and stops because I think this is going to be a, a short leg. Got halfway through his run up, and yes, Kushi gets that helmet and he's going to go in that short leg. So there's four slips a short leg, a short mid wicket. Trying to make life difficult and uncomfortable for Williams. He's ready now and Porter bowls and he's forward and just defends a foolish length delivery to extra cover. There's no run. He's just got to get through another two balls now, Williams. As Porter yet to Yet to concede a run, he's got. Could this be his fourth maiden as William settles in? Four slips go down as Porter is in and bowls, and Williams gets nicely into position and just defends on the onside. I think Porter should. Porter needs to bowl a little bit fuller to Williams. Get him on the front foot. It's very comfortable on the back foot. Get him on the front foot. Final delivery of this over and Porter running away from us to Williams in now and bowls and that's a full delivery and Williams is going to get a run and gets the strike again. So Porter finally concedes a run 
the over comes to an end, it's nine for one. Yeah, it ends that sequence of maidens, isn't it, from Porter? Good stuff, this. Porter and Cook right on the money, making it as difficult as they can for, for Lancashire. Elsewhere, then, should we have a little look around what's happening in the grounds elsewhere as we come towards the close of play here? At Division 1 scores. Um, in fact, me, this game and the match between Kent and Surrey that are still going. Close of play at Hampshire Warwickshire with uh, Hampshire 140 for 1. We're applying to Warwickshire's 455 all out. Uh, Fletcher Middleton and Nick Gubbins will continue tomorrow. Here's Cook to, uh, to Williams who defends and there's no run. So Hampshire Trail Warwickshire by 315. At Nottinghamshire, a 38 for one in their second innings. And they trail Somerset by 233. Somerset all out for 454. Did Craig Overton get a century? 95 not out. Here's what uh, Craig Overton finished on. So Knots have already lost uh, Ben Slater. And they'll continue tomorrow. 38 for one trailing by 223. It's left by Williams and taken by Hurst. That's, sorry, by uh, Pepper and there's no run. And the other Division 1 game that's reached the close of play on day two is Durham against Worcestershire at Kidderminster. Durham are 319 for five. Uh, David Benningham making a century, 138. Scott Borthwick making 75. Durham lead Worcestershire by 379 runs heading into day three. Nine for one here. Carnley played away by Williams for no run. Kent against Surrey. Surrey 175 for one. Uh, Rory Burns got to 69. And then was uh, a victim of George Garrett. Caught by Zach Crawley. So Dom Sibley's on 83 and Dan Lawrence on 18. Surrey 176 for one. And are 68 runs behind the Kent first innings score. And the games are still playing in Division 2. Again, Williams is beaten. Through to the keeper and there's no run. Derbyshire, Leicestershire. Derbyshire 47 for four. Mm. Having a rather torrid start against Leicestershire who racked up 574 for seven before declaring. And they've got Derbyshire four down, 47 for four. Yorkshire lead Middlesex by 99 runs at 186 <coughs> for seven. With George Hill 46 not out and Ben Code 16 not out. Two balls left for Cook. And Williams defends. So Yorkshire 99 in front with three wickets remaining. Northamptonshire 289 for two against Glamorgan. And they lead Glamorgan by 18 runs. And Sussex up against Gloucestershire. And Sussex are 285, 265 for five in reply to Gloucestershire's 417. So still trail by 152. Final ball for Cook tonight. Four slips waiting. Night Watchman's on strike. And allows that one to go through to the keeper. End of the over. Six balls left of day two. Lancashire nine for one. Trail by 222. Yes, and Cook's work's done in this shortened spell. And um, it's now up to Porter. Try and prize if we get out in the final over. He's got Wells to start with, and Wells will be hoping to get a single and get Williams on strike. But the score is nine the loss of one, so Wells will take strike. So there is two slips in the gully and Put around the wicket, bowls, and he's going to get off the mark there as he just gently plays it behind square on the offside. So he's achieved what he wanted to do was to get off strike, and now it really should be for Williams to see out the remaining five balls of this over. Field changes for the right handed Williams. Deep square leg comes up now to cover point. 
just at Corden's reinforces four catches in there where he was dropped as Porter bowls and he's beaten outside the off stump and again that ball carrying nicely through to the keeper the good pace and um, I'd like to see the speeds again at the end of this over because that went past Williams at a good rate it's 10 for 1 Williams on 2 Wells on 5 I've just got 4 balls remaining as Porter's in and bowls and Williams turns that one to square legs fielded by Cushy and there's no run He's three balls away from doing his job here, isn't he? <laughs> Will Williams and getting through. Has he faced now 28 deliveries? Yes. Good effort. Could have been back in the pavilion, but that drop catch by Harmer, but he's still there. Just so three balls to survive as Porter is in now. Balls. And he beats him again outside the off stump on the forward stroke. Williams a long way forward. On this occasion, the ball didn't go through at the same height. Goes past the outside edge. So he's got two balls to survive. It's 10 for 1. The lead's still 221. That's Porter from this uh, Alistair Cook end in ball to Williams. And Williams much more comfortable. Shorter delivery gets in behind it, defends into the offside. So, one ball in the day's play left. It's been a good day's for Essex to date. Getting a very good first in his lead and now also picking up the important wicket of Keaton Jennings in this shortened session. As Porter with the final delivery of the day's player now comes in. To Williams, he's in now and bowls and Williams defends into the onside, job done and he will come back tomorrow and hope to do a similar job to Sam Cook as Wells walks over to him notice here, well done and let's come back tomorrow, so at the end of the day Lancashire in the second innings, they've finished 10 for the loss of one still trailing by 221 runs Yes, and plenty of work to do tomorrow for uh, for Lancashire. Good day for for Essex in a strong position heading into the third day. Wells and Williams will resume tomorrow morning, and uh, Cook and Porter still have a pretty new ball in their hands as well. We'll be back tomorrow for day three coverage from just before 11 o'clock via the BBC Sport website and app, and viewers across. Uh, Essex uh, Cricket TV and those was watching via Lancashire's uh, website as well. We'll uh, catch you tomorrow morning. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday evening.